Futures back in positive territory here this morning as we uh, head towards the end of the week, coming off another negative showing on Thursday, where we actually saw the Dow go negative for the year. Both the S&P and uh, NASDAQ still negative on the week, but holding on to yearly gains so far this morning. All about tech shares trying to bounce this morning. Uh, layoffs coming from Google Alphabet this time. Uh, we learned about Microsoft and Amazon earlier in the week. We'll talk a little bit about how this uh, might affect things this morning as far as tech is concerned. Google shares, however, to the upside so far, along with Netflix, obviously, a huge report coming after the close yesterday for NFLX. That will be uh, the one to watch so far this morning, up about 6% pre-market. Uh, more indications, more uh, analysts with notes on the EV sector in North America specifically talking towards how Tesla is ruling the world in that effect and how Rivian and Lucid might be in trouble. We'll uh, touch on that coming up here this morning as well. It's Friday, January 20th, 2023. TraderTV.Live starts now. Here we go, an updated uh, board for you to have a look at this morning. We're off the highs ever so slightly there for the NASDAQ, but still trying to lead. 0.63 for tech right now, basically flat for the Dow. It was relatively weak yesterday, continues to uh, look that way anyways to kick things off on a Friday. 0.22 for the S&P, but uh, there or thereabouts. Otherwise, some more positivity coming back in at uh, the bottom of the board there. Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, back to the upside so far this morning. Can we hold on to these gains? I just noticed that uh, once again today we're uh, in, I know. We in the same start. shirt color land again. We got to start coordinating this, Brendo. <laughs> it's uh, it's yeah, whatever. It's fine. It's Friday. I uh, hope everyone had a good week. Uh, going to be it looks like negative week right across the board for all three uh, U.S. indexes, but uh, it is the Dow that is a little bit weaker than the rest right now, guys. Negative on the year officially. Uh, we don't have really anything as far as economic data. We get some housing data coming up at 10 o'clock this morning. There is, however, a full slate, again, of Fed officials speaking. We saw what happened late in the day yesterday with Brainerd coming through, uh, sending the market back to the downside. But uh, happy Friday to you guys. Yes, sir. Actually, better than happy Friday. We'll say happy birthday to Renata in the chat. It's her birthday today, beautiful, so happy beautiful. birthday to you. And today is going to be a good day. Now, the Lakers can't beat the Supersonics because the Lakers play the Grizzlies, but it's January 20th. And the Supersonics don't exist. Well, they don't exist anymore either. But it's January 20th, and that is Ice Cube's good day. So... Nothing can go wrong today, the way I look at it. And then, like, how come all of a sudden I see Russell Jackson uh, in the chat? So Vegemite makes a return, and now I see Russell Jackson in the chat. What's up, Russell Jackson? You are still a uh, memory in our minds and hearts. Thank you for Vegemite. We'll keep it there. I don't, maybe, I don't know I don't why, know, but... I don't know why. It was the midday guys that were really too scared, and it was really disappointing how scared they were to try it on air. Oh, it's ridiculous. You know, as soon as off-air goes, these guys are all, you know, they, they, they've got it. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll try it off-air. But uh, maybe today we can get them to try it on-air again yeah it's not uh, that bad it we'll just... see as luca and sharif both both had it and i think it was fine uh all said and done but yeah sharif almost lost his job this morning because he said he was really excited that it was friday and looking into the weekend and i said what trader actually looks forward to the weekend not this guy but uh <laughs> it's all good it's all good there's football this weekend there's things happening sunday baby so um yeah my weekend is completely dedicated to my kids so uh, that's the thing. I really love it, but hey, I miss trading every single day uh, of the year. So, um, anyways, all right, sticky notes up, ready to rock and roll. We're, we're, we're getting ready. Uh, yes, it was Miss V. Uh, why, why the Vegemite uh, got thrown around there? It's Friday. It's a good day. Every day is a good day. The market is now open. Google's cutting jobs, not great, but good for the stock. Netflix is bouncing around. GNS, congratulations, because GNS is bouncing around as well, up just a you know, paltry 100% uh, here today. We've got it all, and we're ready to rock and roll. So let's go, man. Yeah, what's up, uh, everybody there? Yeah, you guys feel the same way. That's all good. Uh, who is wearing the big blue gear today? It's Big Blue Friday. Uh, I don't know what that means exactly. I have no idea. What that uh, but uh, is that Big Blue is normally IBM, I thought. That's what I uh, thought that that was. Amazon, people want to talk about. Yeah, we're getting ready to rock and roll. It's 8.35. We got Michael Noss coming on, I believe, today. Who's that? We just got a guest appearance here, uh, apparently. What? Apparently, Lucas already fired from his first 
job, his new job, yeah. and is back he's right now. He's come crawling back. So this is we we they only hire the best back. people yeah, around here. We back. only but we only hire the best people around here, and they come back because once they realize yeah. that they left and it was a problem, they come back. You can't right? So what's up to Lucas? No, it's great to see him again, and probably. He probably already got Friday off. That's probably what happened. He probably went over there. He's probably already running the whole place and just decided to take Friday off. So, all right, let's go, guys. Um, yeah, happy birthday to everybody there. Uh, Renata there as well. Oh, you already said Renata. Uh, happy birthday. It's in our chat. That's right. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. And, yeah, if anybody needs any birthday shout-outs, let us know. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, January 20th. Yeah, my, my kid's uh, in two weeks, uh, so it should be fun. Uh, January, baby, early, early birth. That's you know. good for, they say Great it's good for, for sports. sports. Great yeah. for sports. Then you, you're, you you're, you're, you know, bigger think, than the rest. So I think Big Blue Friday has to do with the Giants. So, oh, that, well, at least that's what Google is telling me, which means, you know, to each their own. Is that every Friday? Or like, why is it just? No, I guess they have, a, they have a pep rally uh, oh, today or something, oh, 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 which is what, what? you do. Is is there, you, are they the first No, game? but if, if your team is, you know, if your team doesn't really have a chance of winning or advancing, then what you want to do is have a big pep rally, enjoy right. the moment while you can, because there's not going to be anything past that. So. No, I think that's going to be a great game, man, Giants-Eagles. Is that, t what, is that, that tomorrow? That's is Saturday. That that's tomorrow's game. Yeah, but is it the early game? I have to, oh, I have I have no to idea. find that out. I, do, I want to see all tomorrow. the games, man. I want to see all. Oh, you're bowling. Nice, <laughs> yeah. nice, nice. I think we should go bowling again. We should do uh, that. I think all the games are going to be great. I'm really looking forward to Jacksonville, Kansas City, to be honest with you. I think that's. That's, I just want to see how exciting that game could be. I love watching Mahomes. And the, so, uh, unfortunately, Mahomes will win MVP, I think. Yeah. Oh, he deserves you know, it. I mean, uh, he deserves it. Uh, jo Josh Allen doesn't deserve the MVP. I, I'm a huge Josh Allen fan. I'm a Bills homer. but Not this year. Yeah. No, he doesn't I deserve I mean, what, this what Mahomes did while losing some of those pieces was pretty, yeah, pretty amazing. awesome. Uh, there. All right, back over to the big board uh, with Brendan and the big desk with Sharif as well. Sharif, tell me you're, 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 you're disappointed that it's Friday. Very shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lucas was just highlighting the fact that uh, our security is still um, a little bit lax here because he just walked right in the front door. We're so. welcoming people. Uh, but it's Lucas, so we're happy to see him back in the building. Apparently, guys, he forgot his headphones, so mm -hmm. had to come and pick up his headphones, but good to see him. Uh, let's talk about the uh, overall market. Speaking of that GNS, coming back to the downside here a little bit right now, back through $4, but yeah, uh, a mere double up. Overnight, if you were long uh, GNS once again, up about 100%, but uh, some D prints possibly coming through there, back through uh, $4. Here's the rest of what we were looking at this morning when we sat down. Uh, it was all about the NASDAQ for a change, and it was all about Netflix obviously boosting uh, not only the NASDAQ, but tech in general. Microsoft and Amazon kicked off the layoff train earlier mm -hmm. in the week. Uh, coming through first today, it's uh, Google's turn. 12,000 uh, announced, uh, or about, I think it was 6% yep. I saw of their workforce. So we'll see what happens with uh, Google L today, up about 3% here. Good earnings from Netflix and more cost cutting from uh, Wall Street. I guess that's the formula uh, going forward. You got um, Christine Lagarde, uh, the EC Bank president, saying uh, over the week, over the week uh, in Davos, basically that she expects more inflationary pressure uh, as a result of China opening up. So. Mixed picture, Brendo. Good yeah. earnings, but where do we go? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're not there yet. I don't yeah. think anyone expects uh, the market to be there yet, uh, but we'll see what happens as far as inflation is concerned. Uh, obviously, February 1st is going to be the next benchmark uh, with the Fed meeting coming through. Uh, on that front, not much in the way of, we get GDP next week, but not much in the way of uh, inflationary data to speak of before then. Uh, tech going to be in focus today, though, guys. Oh, certainly. I mean, 12,000 job cuts, it just that falls in line with what everybody else is doing and then just overshadows um, the job cuts that Intel was making. I think Intel literally cut like a couple of hundred jobs, which is completely meaningless. So I'm going to joke around about that a couple of times today because they need to cut their costs as well. They're trying to do more of that. Look, Alphabet, sometimes, you know, you want a breakout to happen. You're like, oh, yeah, it's in the midst of a breakout on the daily and it's, I'm like, okay, there's gonna, it, it's set up, it's above 93, it's going to go, 94 is going to break, and then we gap up to 96. So this is, this is the reaction, generally speaking, that's been happening sort of time and time again here when you see one of these big tech names um, with the job cuts. It's like accepting the fact that they have to rein in costs so that they can improve the earnings outlook this year, which is expected to be rough. Everyone's concerned about where advertising is going. Some people are concerned about ChatGPT taking over the world. However you want to cut it, 
this is necessary. Now, obviously, this, it's not good for the labor market or for anybody that loses their job, but understanding that this is going to help their bottom lines, it, it's going to be seen as a positive catalyst. Now, if it gets back to 94, it's probably a no-brainer for me if it gets down to that price. I'm not sure that's going to be the case. I know my daily chart has some wicks on it. That's a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, the 50 period, 94 is that 50 period, so you've already made that breakout. That was a level I was really looking forward to because you closed right up on the 50 period yesterday, but you can't do anything about this. Now it's a question of that last little ditch of support before we hit those lows back in back at the beginning of the year, which was right around this 96. So I feel like the trade for me on, on Alphabet is going to be centered right around the open. If it's holding 96 at the open, then it's, then it's actually set up for a break or like a consolidation long off that 96 level with a really tight stop. I don't like the gap that sits between the 50 period and that 96 level. So I'll probably be sitting out. Like if it breaks 96 and doesn't hold it, like I think the next trade is in front of 94, which is going to require a lot of patience. In the big tech space, the one I actually like a little bit better is, oddly enough, Meta. And it, it, guess there's a bit of a segue. Met is the one we're finally long in the afternoon after being you know, short 34s in the open. But you see it got to 137 half here. Oh, baby. So you'll see a bit of a flat top on the daily chart. That's, that's about 137.80 and this 138 level. This gets me excited because you can play like a break like this. You have five days in a row just hanging out that top. You got a weekly top. Almost every single day you've tested that high on meta without quite getting to 138. 138 goes on meta, I'm long. Now obviously it could be a short in front of that number, I get it. I might even consider doing it, but I'm really more excited uh, for the opportunity to go long off 138 on meta. That breakout's been setting up. I would have liked to have a Google 94, but it gapped above that level. Yeah, I just want, Fahad, you have to make sure that uh, those headphones that Lucas is grabbing is not company uh, uh, material there, right? So. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Lucas. We were wondering, like, he, he left, now he came back, and now uh, what's up? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, his, they're yeah, his headphones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so look, um, I, I, I wrote it down here on the sticky note today. It's pretty, pretty clear here for Google. AI talk plus job cuts dip by to 95, or we're going to take the pre-market high break right now of 96.60, or is that 96.70? It's 96.70. I'm going to take... I just put 60s, I gotta fix that. I, just, I don't think it's gonna matter if we get up there, we probably break it. Look, I think this chat GPT talk and all that kind of stuff is great for Google. I don't care if it's Microsoft that has it or what, all it's really doing is highlighting you know, how important technology and AI is gonna be heading forward. I think we already all know that. Uh, I think Google really survives uh, quite well here, especially, we just heard um, Netflix get more subs, right? We talked about their, well, we're, they didn't talk that much about their ad tier. We don't even know how many people are there, but YouTube is absolutely on fire, man. Like, I don't know, my kids are looking at YouTube shorts like it's going out of style. Uh, everybody at their school is all over YouTube shorts. I feel like YouTube is gonna be a huge move uh, forward for these guys. Let's just see, maybe up 3% is a little bit too much today, but I do wanna test the top there, go a little bit long, 96.70, if it fades back down, and we take out 96 and we can always get out of that trade. There's no way I'm going short on Google today unless this market really starts to reverse itself. And right now the NASDAQ is up pretty good. So let's just stay long, strong names. I mean, we sort of identified, and again, my trades aren't showing up from yesterday, but look how strong Google was yesterday, right? Kind of just started inching up. Like we started making uh, new higher lows, so on and so forth as we went here. Started making higher highs as well throughout the afternoon. So for me, I like the relative strength in Google. Let's see if it can hold out today. It's never great to pick a stock that's up 3% and then be like, okay, this is going to go or anything like that. It's kind of already went on that news uh, for the job cuts. It's only 12,000 jobs. It's probably a very small uh, part of, of their total workforce. So I don't think that that's a great headline, but it's what everyone's been doing, and it's rallied other stocks. We've seen it rally Meta, Amazon, um, and, and the likes, all of them. You just mentioned Intel as well. So we'll see. I don't know if that's the news to do it, but I'm pretty happy with Google. Its, it's daily chart looks pretty bad, obviously. Uh, whoopsies, yeah, that's right, we don't, 
uh, yeah. split adjusted there. But you are now above the 50 period, which is always a nice way to, to, to look at stocks. So I think that, yeah, we missed the bottom of 86, 87. There's still earnings to come, right? I don't think I would be into any of these names until you see the earnings plays. You see Netflix up that 7% or whatever it is today, six, six and a bit uh, here. You know, that was a big earnings play. It actually tanked. We'll talk about Netflix in a minute, but Netflix tanked at the, in the afternoon, uh, well, basically in the last 15 minutes, only to put out a huge number. So let's wait to see uh, what happens with Google. But for today, I like the long, but I'm going to wait till 95 uh, to, in order to get long first, and then we'll see what happens at those levels. But this is going to be a trade today where we're not going to panic. Google doesn't actually move that much. So let's wait to see what happens here. I feel like we'll be able to find some key levels. Google, the patience trade today is on this name. All right, Michael Noss with us. Uh, typical Friday, we'll get a uh, discussion going here as far as relative volume is concerned. We were just talking a little bit off camera there in the sense that this is something we use on a daily basis as traders, regardless of what your time frame is, uh, and a, a great indication of where the big money is and where the attention is going. Absolutely. Like uh, I'm sure you guys know as well, volume profiles, you're always looking for uh, volume as the tell. Luca likes to say that on the midday show all the time. It's something that I use. I look always for one to two times our vol, especially for these small caps. All right. Uh, learning time. Everyone grab a pencil and uh, take some notes here. Michael Noss, as I mentioned with us uh, from Trade Ideas, CMT over at Trade Ideas. Good to see you as always for a Friday. Uh, it is, as we were saying there, you know, something that we talk about and use on a daily basis, uh, relative volume in the sense of what does a, a stock typically do? You know, you can look at it in an hour, you can look at it on a morning, you can look at it on a daily time frame, but very, very important regardless of uh, the way you approach the market. Yeah, and I think it's important, and, and, you know, I agree with everything you guys were saying there. I think it's important to differentiate our vol or relative volume from average volume, just quickly for definition's sake. Um, average volume basically just says, you know, a stock normally does, you know, a million shares in a day. And yesterday it did 2 million shares, so it's two times normal volume. But relative volume in the way we calculate it in trade ideas basically cuts the day into five-minute intervals and says, okay, uh, Apple at 9.35 normally does, I don't know, let's say a million shares. And right now at 9.35, it's done 2 million shares. So it's 2 Arval. Um, the benefit of that is that you don't need to wait for the end of the day for the calculation to be done. As Brennan just says, as the day goes on, you can say, okay, this one's doing way more volume than it normally does at this at this time. And it helps you kind of um, make sure that you're in the stuff that's moving. And the reason that our vol is so important before I get into the presentation is that it there's a, a study done that about 80% of stocks will follow the S&P 500 in some way. What we're looking for is the 20% of stocks that won't. They'll either move way further than they normally do in a day, or they'll move independent of the market. And Arval is a great way to look at that, because it basically just means there's more traders, there's more eyes on this name right now than there normally is. Generally means there's going to be news or some big institutional flow or something like that, but it's a great way to quantify it. I agree with, uh, with Sharif who said two hour vol means it's something going on. But today we're going to talk about using our vol from the day before to get some uh, trade ideas for today. So this is a great saying that I love uh, for trading. The early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Kind of morbid, but the, the first mouse had his bad time with the mouse trap, and the second mouse gets the cheese. Basically just saying that, yes, we all like to focus on whatever stocks in the news that day, whatever stocks gapping, whatever stocks moving, but it's often good to not lose sight of that in the next two or three days for both day trading and swing trading. So I have some example here. First one with Neon. And this is day one. On this day, as the chart looks right here, I think it did seven or eight times normal volume. So that was a good little move. It was a you know great little breakout for the stock. Um, and you can see it broke out that $6 area that's super important. But the next chart's what happened the next day, right? And it basically doubled from that initial breakout price. A early sign that that move was going to continue would have been this massive increase in Arval. And then for the short side here on the next chart, you can see MRNA gapped up, had a big, big volume spike, lots of our vol here, and then a topping tail. So it hit against that um, kind of resistance area around, say, 210 or so, and then closed lower. A lot of traders would forget about this, but if you look the next day, 
um, on the next slide here, it just broke down and just continued all day. I actually was in this short for a day trade myself, and it was amazing because it didn't, it just trended all day. It didn't look back at all. And you can see the RVOL on this day was actually really low. So going through and making sure that you're paying attention to what happened the day before is very important. And as always, I built a scan and trade ideas. You can hit me up on Twitter, you can email info at trade-ideas.com. And what I do each night is I go through, and this just is showing me all of the stocks that did incredible Arval the day before. And I'm able to just go through and make a list and add my price alerts and say, hey, if the stock gets to this level or this level, let me know so I can take a look at it. But I always give ideas. So let's get some ideas going on. So um, five times normal volume in Charles Schwab yesterday as we gap down after earnings. Uh, hitting a key support level, right? I like to take a concept like Arval and just like the guys do for their day trading on Trader TV, uh, I always mark my levels. What's the level that's important? So Schwab, right? We have this clean support level that I drew in. So there's two ways that I'm looking at this going into today. If we start to bounce kind of aggressively from that level, that's great. I can take along. I know exactly where to put my stop right below that level. If we break down, we may have a continuation of yesterday's bearishness on this one. Uh, next guy is Discover Financial, DFS. Gap down, hit that support level, and just ripped through with six times normal volume yesterday. So a huge amount of volume for Discover Financial. If this one breaks yesterday's high, I have it on my list to maybe take a long. Maybe we shoot back up to that 110 level over the next couple of days. Uh, next one here is AMRK. Had a breakout and a pullback. And what was interesting on this is it did four times normal volume. But yesterday's candle was really, really small, and that's where it gets interesting to me, when there's a lot of volume that goes through, but not a lot of price action. So uh, consolidating here, again, four times normal volume. I'm playing against this line that I drew in that I think is about like $43 or so a share. And last but not least, this one's very interesting to me. I've been involved in this one a couple times last year, only th three times normal volume, but EDU has this nice uh, breakout. And when a breakout occurs on three times normal volume, that's really interesting to me because now we're above basically everything. I think this is all time highs for this individual stock. So if we get some continuation today, I'm going to grab this one and this might be a longer term play as the thing hopefully breaks out and continues to trend higher. Uh, it's been uh, impressive for those. TAL was another one I saw yesterday, the Chinese online education companies. Uh, impressive across the board. This is, uh, as we were saying, uh, something that is, it's one of the first things I look at when I sit down uh, in the morning is not only what happened yesterday, but what's happening right now in the pre-market. And that gives you, you know, a first indication of where you should be focusing your attention specifically in the pre-market. So uh, great stuff as always. Uh, anyone that wants further information, as Michael was saying, hit them up on Twitter. Uh, what was the uh, email address there, Michael, again? It's info at trade-ideas.com. We got a whole team there, um, and I always prepare them so they, they know what scan they're going to be looking for if you come in and ask for it. Great stuff. Michael Moss, CMT over at Trade Ideas. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Have a good one. So... I just want to say something because Michael Noss, actually, I was talking with my, Michael Noss. He's like, <laughs> with Michael. He's, like, he's the guy that has the two names, you know, Michael Noss. So that's a thing. Um, Mr. Noss uh, yesterday made uh, a little, um, well, he, he didn't, he was been helping me out. He's been helping me out with some uh, different scans, like he was saying there. And I actually just opened up this volume leaders board here, and I put in all the names that I like to look at, Netflix, Google, XPEG. I mean, there's 56 different names in here. And I highlighted right here, relative volume. So it's actually pretty cool. And so I'm going to be uh, sorting that now, looking for relative volume. And then, as Michael said, they will update throughout the day. I was looking at it a little bit yesterday. Of course, yesterday, Netflix and a lot of those names that were really popping off, uh, you know, were, were hitting. And relative volume is pretty cool. It does get a little bit stale because you know, yeah. once one stock is there, it tends to be there pretty much all day. But that's that's the point. Trade names that are moving, trade names that have news on them, um, and that are relatively, you know, higher or lower in the volume spectrum than it was yesterday. Uh, we, you know, Neil, myself, Brennan, Sharif, we all look for news-based stocks, and those will generally be the ones that lead the way. But some great ideas there. That Neon, you saw that shoot up there, Charles Schwab. And it's all about support and resistance level. I know you're into Alibaba now, and that's something. I'm, oh, I'm I have not, Alibaba up. I don't know I had why. a bad trigger in 
Alibaba. I, I was saying in the chat, I had a bad trigger on Alibaba, so I got in and out when I realized it never actually broke. But still, that 118. Oh, oh, that's yeah, that level. But it's just it's just about support and resistance. Yeah, is what I was getting yeah, at. Like 18 is a great level there. So is 120. So you want to play off that. Um, Lucas came back, so uh, he, he, yeah, he, he's back right now. I just said, what's up to the guy? Uh, he's had three or four days at his new place. So, um, But anyways, thanks, Michael that Nash, EDU, for coming through. That EDU, though. Yes, go ahead. That EDU, so it was TAL, the, um, uh, the Chinese education company, that reported the other day, and EDU was up on sympathy. This has been super... I almost want to say it's gone too far, but like the breakout is insane on this, and it had a big, big volume uh, event uh, yesterday, as you can obviously sort of see there, and it's now gapping up again. I do think there is a pullback coming in the stock, but the trend has been tremendous the last few days. That it was TEL reporting, and then this catching sympathy, so it should be on our radars for multiple for multiple reasons here. It's not even you got the volume, you have the sympathy push, you have the Chinese ADRs in play, but I. I'll mention like what happened in Alibaba just now, and this happens when you put in stop stop orders. You know, it never actually broke 118.50. I think it's a great level. Kind of looks a little bit like um, like Facebook or Meta, I should say, uh, with the, with on the 15 minute for a breakout. I love the little cluster it's trying to break away from, but it never actually got through the high. I had a bad trigger, which means get out. I might not put a stop order back in until closer to the open. It's we got five minutes till nine o'clock, so probably sometime after nine o'clock. I still like the long. I like the longs off 118 if it holds. I like the breakout. Not a ton of volume, and you know I'm getting filled when it's not even breaking the high. So I got a bad trigger on my stop, which is one of the risks of using a stop order in the pre-market in the first place. Segment of the show, guys, brought to you by Surge Trader, where traders can get a funded trading account of up to a million dollars and keep 90% of the profits. Trade stocks, indices, forex, crypto. And more. The program has simple rules and no time limits. Go to searchtrader.com forward slash TTV. Use the promo code TTV at checkout. Get yourself 10% off. Shout out to uh, Search Trader once again. Uh, here we go. Let's get some uh, analyst moves for you this morning. There's a ton. Uh, so these are just uh, a few, uh, a few highlights at least. Downgrade is going to be more important, I think, today. Uh, Salesforce, top of the list here. CRM, Cowan with a negative note on that. Uh, Pinterest, I saw I'm not really doing a lot of volume, but uh, notable MKM partners negative. And uh, Squarespace, uh, that's not block, that's Squarespace. Uh, Regeneron on here, there was some news surrounding Eli Lilly. I saw Biogen was up, so negative for LLY, BIIB, higher on that. Ralph Lauren to the upside as well. All right. Yeah, I yeah mean, not too many sexy names nah. on there to trade with. I mean, Ralph Lauren, we talked about. Well, I mean, that's $134. That's the price target. Uh, we, we, I mean, I have Macy's on the board. We have JW. Oh, Pinterest. Used to trade Pinterest a bit. There. I used what, to what is going on with Pinterest? The problem with Pinterest is it's not moving, and a lot of the catalyst for, for the stock has been people speculating that it's going to get popped, but it won't break out. CRM kind of gets interesting on a red day, though. Like, I just pulled this one up because I'm like, oh, I haven't looked at CRM in a couple of days. That's back beneath the 50 period moving average. Uh, that's, I mean, it's not a great look, and it probably, like you can see, like this is a, it's not really a flat bottom break, but this is like 142 and a half. You get through that, and CRM has some room to go. I remember the last time we were trading CRM, it was off that 140 level. That was money. Like, one, like, it, was, like it was 140 down into like 138, like multiple times in the same day, which is basically giving you uh, that retracement. So you get back beneath 143. And I think some of those shorts can start to come in, rejecting the 50-period moving averages. A lot of these companies have been beaten up recently. And some are breaking channels up, and this is under threat of breaking the channel down. So I might add this to my list. It has to get beneath 142.5, which is $2 away. So, I mean, we'd have to go, the market probably has to go red, and then I'll start looking at something like a CRM. Uh, we're getting close to a bit dip buying in a little bit of Google as the market pulls back a little bit here. Apple as well down to 135.50. Google, I was waiting for 95, so we're getting pretty close to that uh, fill rate now as the market's kind of dripping here. Uh, and by kind of, I mean, yeah, it's like a pretty consistent drip. Uh, straight to the downside, they're bouncing off 11,400. Uh, we'll see if that can hold that level right here for the NASDAQ. You're not really, I mean, on a NASDAQ, on a broader chart here, I mean, this is a 30 minute, so, you know, nice move up. We've seen what's happened over the last uh, couple weeks with the NASDAQ really trying to blow up. And then on that lot yesterday and a couple uh, other, you know, it's been not a great week for the NASDAQ as you battle back. But, you know, you're trying to get uh, through this 11,400. That's right here. If we can hold that 
fine, great. Then I think we do bump up, at, you know, up back up to here and maybe even up to 11,600. But if we do come back in, watch out for this level right here, 11,300. So right now we're at 400, easily could make that 100 point move down to the downside. That's going to be a key area for me. So we're going to keep our eye on the NASDAQ today. Normally we don't you know, necessarily, we always watch the NASDAQ, but I don't look at it uh, from that standpoint. But for today, I feel like that 11,300, just because of, you know, where we're, where we're going now, we are starting to drip down. If Google can't hold and Netflix can't hold, oil right now as well, oil up today, uh, almost 1% and starting to go the other way. So oil upside, NASDAQ downside right now. So let's watch out for that relationship, although it hasn't really been a strong one uh, recently. Oil in the markets, the equity markets, eh. Uh, hasn't really been much there, but let's wait to see what's going to happen with Google here. I, we're going to talk about Netflix. I know we haven't done that yet, but it's not doing anything really right now. Although there it is, man. It's it's. I marked down 340. Let's maybe we'll go to the desk because we are going to talk about this name, and I'm going to give my ideas then. But uh, Netflix is coming back down a little bit here. As I said, we were just at 340 about an hour, about 30 minutes ago. And now you're already down five bucks. So I don't know, man. That was a great quarter for them as far as the movement. Not overly great when you look at the numbers as far as I can see, but still, nice. They're making money. They're a streaming name. Let's go over to the desk and talk about it. Yeah, let's uh, get right into things here. We'll bring in uh, Arun, get a check of the overall market. Here's how things over in Europe, first off, are shaping up. Or we can talk to Arun, either way. Uh, <laughs> that's Europe. And then we'll get to uh, Arun, as I mentioned, guys. Positive to start uh, for Friday uh, for European markets. Hey Arun, how are you today? Yeah, a little, a little slacking there with the uh, the audio, but now I'm good. I'm good. Um, you know, yesterday was a quiet day, and we're, we really haven't done a whole lot to change the read that I kind of had with yesterday. So I'm going to stick with the same read. I still like the idea of the long. It's just the, the top is now starting to shorten up a little bit, so we're going to have to get better risk profiles on the trade. So the idea of the trade was against 38.85 potential longs. But given how the top is now starting to move down towards 40, we're going to have to get these long somewhere between 10 and evens to make sense of the risk. So I want to see this market come down, maybe crack the 10s, 39.10, break down, and then find a base somewhere underneath there. Even 3,900 breaking and flushing some stops and coming right back up would actually open the door for a nice long. So that's a direction I'm looking for potential longs. If we can just get the right setup at the right prices against 38.85, if it moves to the upside, I want to see how this market clears 40 and 45. There seems to be something up there. Let's just see how strong that is in terms of the sell side. And uh, for the most part, it's been quiet. Yesterday, we had a lot of action. Obviously, it was quiet, but it was a lot of action in the sense that they were building through the bottom and then they were selling through the top. So let's see if we can't kind of work within those same bands and see if we can't pick up some longs near where some buying happened yesterday. And uh, hopefully it's a much more exciting situation than, um, than you know, yesterday is. But we'll see how this one goes. But I am still looking for the idea of potential long south of 3910. We're going to have a great weekend. Let's uh, jump into everything else you need to know heading towards the open this morning. That's a link to the watch list, guys. Uh, grab that every single day. Free. Why not? It's absolutely free. Hit that link, enter your email address, and then it just uh, shows up in your inbox just like that. Here's the uh, note on Netflix we'll kick things off with this morning. Uh, obviously, it's the uh, biggest story here. 7.66 million subs uh, versus uh, 4.57 expected. That's really all you need to know. <laughs> EPS did miss. Uh, there's a couple other metrics on the financial side that weren't you know, as good as expected, but this is a monster number for it's them. It's funny, Brendo, how the EPS missed and the traditional metrics didn't really meet, but the subs met, because they want you looking at them now as a mature company. They don't want to be judged by subs. They want to be judged by free cash flow, profitability, et cetera. Um, so what, and they're not gonna guide for subs going yeah. into, uh, into the future. So interesting little play for Netflix. You guys, I don't know if uh, you guys saw, but I was pretty enthusiastic about that. <laughs> we, yeah, we heard all about it. It was uh, impressive to say the least. The uh, move not only uh, aftermarket yesterday, but uh, holding on to those gains here to start things off this morning, guys, for NFLX. So, yeah, we everybody sort of heard some yelling and shouting in the background. I know people were excited for that price action. The implied move was like 9%. And when it was that big of a beat, I think in terms of the sub, like you would have expected, like I was sort of thinking if it was above five, it's, you're going to get a 10% move. But it was the rest of the story that I think probably concerned 
uh, some people in there. Now, all that being said, this stock has been in a pretty solid upward trajectory. You know, as long as you're holding above on the daily chart here, like this is 335, the recent high. You've had some barcoding in there. That's where the gap fill happens. So above that number, like above this channel, it's still sort of in breakout territory. You can even call that into 30 to 33. But the reality is it's actually not as strong a reaction as I, as I would anticipate. So it looks like either we hold that dip area into that 30, into those, you know, 33, 35 kind of zone there. And then you can maybe go higher into that 40 number. I thought a 340 could be leading to 50s and 60s was the next level on the daily chart when I was looking at it. There was so much room into the upside. But if this gets beneath 330, I think they've rejected this altogether. Now, overall, I think they're probably fine. The reason, my understanding of the reason why um, people care about the subs and not as much about the EPS and why we're going to be up here is simply that that subscriber growth is going to lead down the line. Uh, to, to the strong results. So I think that's a litmus test. Now, if we go downside on Netflix today, what I'm really looking at is Disney. Because Disney was, Disney's up at this 101 level. It's kind of like so many stocks have a channel like this where they've just been hanging out. It tried to break out the other day at 101. If Netflix is, if Netflix goes red or if Netflix pulls back, Disney's got a tailor-made level to short off of here today. So, you know, if, if Disney gets to 101 and can't go, that's the name I'd want to short. If Netflix is absolutely flying and this breaks out from there, then I like a 101 quarter breakout to the long on Disney. I just don't want to lose sight of this name. When things, when, when stocks get to new price zones that they haven't been in a long time, that can be very exciting. And the other, the other thing about Disney here is it would have to be above that 100 and running away from that 100 level. You know, obviously, on, you know, on a Friday, that can be a psychological level, but also a pretty good fundamental one. So I'll have my eyes on Disney as well. I'll favor the dip buy. But if, this, if you can't hold 330 on Netflix, it's probably going to be an ugly day uh, for Disney. And that just means I'll be finding my way into some shorts if Netflix doesn't hold up today. Yeah, Netflix, the only um, profitable streaming business around. And, uh, yeah, they're not even going to guide anymore on the uh, subs. So that's not going to be a metric moving forward at all that people are really going to have to. People can guess on the subs, but they're not going to guide. I think that's a great move for them. I only wrote down here on the sticky note 340 and just how key that level was. I wanted to see if that was going to be support or resistance. That's really the only issue that I had, you know, on the daily chart. We just talked about it. It's ripping to the upside. So I was thinking just a long into today but you know the action sort of tells me that why did we not hold that 340 and now you're trying to hold 335 so we can see uh, what happens there we got tossed it was the only red stock we had yesterday we were five for six um, and this was the only red name so we'll wait to see what happens uh, here today I still think you can go long on a 340 break but I'm not going to do it initially I just want to see it what what this magnet's all about because you know obviously we we beat and we get up to the upside 345 come back down drop to 325 but we were watching it when this was happening the levels were everywhere so it's pretty inconsistent this move but then straight back up and then we stop we stop at 338 we get back up we stop thank you so much rob we stop at 339 oh there's a message for you thank you so much rob he said you're doing great uh, right here. Thank you uh, so much for that, uh, Rob. I haven't done anything yet, but uh, hopefully we can do some great things uh, here today. And then 340, 339, you know, let's just see what happens. That's that's my whole thing here with Netflix. I don't want to get super excited off the open. I've sat here and said to you guys numerous times that earnings plays can be very, very tricky. We don't know if the street is net long or net short. What, what they're going to do, is this been a huge ramp up? This is what people have been waiting for. If I logged in today and I was long Netflix, like Sharif was mentioning, I know he got out in the aftermarket, but if, if I saw Netflix up 6%, looked over their quarter, saw the market like this, I don't know, I'm debating taking that profit. So I could see a little bit of a drip down, and then if it does go downside, I, I would say you'd look somewhere around here, 328 maybe for a stopping area there, but it looks like it does want to continue to fade out. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of sellers that open here for Netflix. Go ahead. Oh no, I've been, <laughs> I've been watching Netflix obviously because I've been swinging it and I've been noticing that it really trends when it trends it really starts going whether to the high side or the downside. So I'm gonna be looking for that kind of continuation play today. I don't know whether it's gonna to continue to do that uh, post earnings, but that's on watch for me, Brent. Yeah, going to be a big day, I think, for NFLX. This GNS, speaking of big days, 
Uh, yeah, taking out the highs, testing five bucks right now. Unreal. 33 <laughs> million shares traded, almost 34 million shares on GNS already this morning. So just a monster so far. Uh, that was, uh, I don't know if you showed it there, but uh, this is Tesla's chart, 1.7%. Uh, for Tesla, we'll uh, touch on the EV market here a little bit. Back to the upside again this morning. It was a bit of a kind of back and forth day for Tesla yesterday, as it was for the overall market. Here's the chart of the day, potentially. <laughs> so this is comparing Rivian and Lucid sales, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 of last year, versus the red, which wow. is Tesla. So that just, I mean, it's something we all know and are very well aware of, but just putting it in visual form gives you a... Uh, better representation. So it's tough to see, but the little tiny slivers <laughs> of yellow is uh, lucid versus what Tesla did and Rivian in blue. So pretty impressive as far as sales are concerned. Still for Tesla, this article, however, in this note is touching on the simple fact that the price cuts we got going back to last week in North America specifically, we touched on the importance of what happened in China following those price cuts in China, but in North America specifically, has put more pressure now on the likes of Lucid, Rivian, and the smaller players in this group to a point where, as you were saying this morning, you know, Rivian still is losing money. Oh, yeah on every single car they make. Every single car costs them more than they make on it. But don't forget the legacy brands too, Brenda. We saw GM and Ford react to price cuts uh, from Tesla last week. And it seems like the Chinese can't get enough of Tesla. As you sent in the watch list, a lot of uh, enthusiasm there, 70% responding favorably to the price cuts, Brenda. Yeah, so a good look once again, guys. Some of the analysts picking up on the sense that you know, the Rivians and Lucids, even the Faraday's FFIE was another one mentioned in this uh, article. Uh, even more pressure on them coming from Tesla now. Yeah, so just before we get to Tesla, I want to... I want to acknowledge GNS, GNS for a second because I was looking for a double tap of that 460 top and then maybe like a pullback to a higher low to try and get in front of that 420 marker. Yeah, it's that. now through five bucks. So, yeah, I mean, I'm... I should have just taken the top break. I've been favoring not going long on breakouts and trying to find consolidation longs on some of these plays just so that you're not always trying to get the breakout at the highs because the high breaks at $2 were a pain in the butt yesterday. We did have both of them. Like Each time it took two, I did have it. It was a little bit better in the afternoon, but didn't really do much either way. And I said, yeah, watch it go in the aftermarket because it just doesn't seem to want to break two um, in day's trade. There's going to be likely a pullback or at least a significant dip in it. And this is a high risk of halting off the open, as, as parabolic as it's getting now. But I'm not chasing this move up here. It, kind of a miss to have not fallen into it a little bit earlier. But it happens, you know. You, you, you got to make a decision how you want to take the trade and express it. And if you miss it, you miss it. Tesla, look, 130 was that top yesterday. I know we talked about that um, as a resistance level. Well, you got a 130 top in here on Tesla almost a double top right now and that just that just sort of screams to me you have an opportunity for a clean break on tesla at a 130 number on a friday i mean that's just almost low-hanging fruit rivian is the other one to watch well you can look at lucid too but rivian made a 52-week low on huge volume wiped out the bottom and then recovered that low at 150 so 1580 was the previous bottom 1580 is where it closed 1580 looks like it's going to be that line in the sand. Sometimes you get those wick bottoms on huge volume, wipe everybody out, and then if you hold the higher low, there's only one place to go is up. So, you know, Rivian, that 580 is probably the only level I want to trade off of unless I see, like, I don't know, if we get to 1650, that could be an interesting level maybe for a rollover short. But that 1580, it gets beneath there, it's in trouble, starts holding below, you look for shorts. If it bounces off it at the open, I'm probably already long Tesla if that's the case. But, you know, looking for a long off the open, off 1580 makes sense. I just feel like Tesla 130, that's going to happen pretty much. Unless something crazy goes on in the next, like, 15 minutes, I think we're getting Tesla, uh, Tesla 130 break at some point um, between now and 931. Oh, man. Yeah, you want to talk about missed uh, trade opportunities on here. We wrote down GNS 450 long on that break. And I just, you know, we, I just tweeted it out that completely missed that. It was the high rate there. It's about as easy as it goes for GNS. That was, 
Oh, and I just, I, I forgot to put the, I just forgot. And that's what's going to happen. It's so stupid. Like that's, you know, part, part of what, what, when you're trading is you're looking for, you know, that trade, right? That one trade that, that makes everything. And that, that would have been it right there. Unfortunately, you know, it's not unfortunate. I'm glad to be doing the show with everybody. But as we continue to talk about names, like I just, sometimes I forget to put the trade out. So I, I just set up some more trades here to make sure I don't forget it. Uh, but that GNS, yeah, that 450 break, it was on the sticky note. I'm going to say, Awesome if anybody took it and if anybody's long congratulations as it's continuing to go up I'm still upset that I missed that um, yesterday. We absolutely Destroyed Rivian. I mean Rivian, you know to me if it would have been better um, For uh, searchable on YouTube We would have used this as the trade of the day instead of whatever I used there Amazon or whatever it was uh, But yesterday man, we, we absolutely crushed Rivian. I don't know why my trades aren't showing up again uh, But we had the long off 16 early uh, Yesterday hit that to the upside right there. We got this long right here 1603 We actually had the bottom and we actually got out right there at, at, at some of these highs And then when it broke that 1580 that we also had on our sticky note right there That was the past 52 week low right there. We had that short as well uh, all the way down So it was a great day for Rivian yesterday uh, to be able to trade that name and now you're getting bumped up here a little bit on some of that talk problems aren't solved the only thing is yesterday my wife sent me a message she said hey can we just put down 1500 for the r1s and i said no so um we're gonna wait to see here what's going on on uh, their releases of their cars their beautiful trucks and i feel like it's going to work out for rivian and for a lot of these names you just had that study come through there and tesla today is really bouncing upside um even on our study here we did a little small survey yesterday and tesla won easily Easily, uh, when everyone was like, "Hey, what you know? What which one are you going to buy?" and it was Tesla. Everyone wanted to get into. So there are just like um, Sharif mentioned there, the legacy names. Tesla is now the legacy name in EV, right? It's always going to be there. It has that brand recognition. I like it here. Breaking 130. We've been waiting for that break for quite a while now. It's been a couple, not quite a while. It's only been two days. Uh, but that 130 break should come in here, and uh, let's watch it go to the upside uh, off of that. But it hasn't really moved that crazy. Get. We're going to have to watch it. Out. There's 130 yesterday, got right to it on the knot and then fell. So we're going to see if it takes it out again today on relatively good news here. Is the NASDAQ still bouncing? Yes. Bouncing, yes, off 11,400. We talked about that as a key level. So NASDAQ going up, Tesla going up. I do like that 130. Let's see. All right, we got some uh, weak uh, retail sales data for December going back to the be beginning of the week. We had a very similar note from Macy's. Uh, to this one from uh, Nordstrom's out this morning, cutting not only their uh, annual sales uh, outlook, but also uh, profit forecast for the entire year. I just highlighted here at least five brokerages with negative notes cutting their price target on JWN this morning. So uh, we asked the question, but I think we all know the answer. Retail definitely yeah. in trouble. Yeah, you said it. You, uh, you mentioned Macy's. Lulu was also another company that uh, complained about margin squeezing. So they're, they're uh, basically, you know, it's, it's tough for retailers. we got the bad retail number, like you mentioned. Yeah. Not much to say here, except uh, let's see what goes forward. Yeah, is there much follow-through, I guess, may, might be uh, a better approach here, guys, as far as JWN is concerned. Yeah, the JWN's price range is kind of the definition of diddling right now. So you look at the 15 on, on Nordstrom's, and don't, don't get me wrong, like I don't mind looking at the short, like 1680 to 17 is the general level. That was yesterday's bottom, 17. You had some consolidation, 1680. This name is pretty heavily shorted. And like I said, you're in the middle, but you could play inside of that range. You could come up to 1680, 17 and maybe flush back and there's a dollar worth of trade in there. If it breaks these lows at 15, that's so far away that you, you consider that when it even happens. Um, and the short interest is pretty sizable. It's a 22% short interest by most sources or like 17. However, there is another name out there that we've been talking about the last couple of days along with, along with um, uh, Gap. Because remember the other day, Macy's was trying to make that 23 breakout. It made the 23 breakout. Gap was trying to break that 13. Very similar looking charts. And then yesterday you got that like head and shoulders look where the, the breakout turned into resistance. So this is a better short setup because it gives you two ways to play. It gives you the obvious short sort of in front of the, the shoulder, whatever you want to call it, in front of 23. And then it's got a flat bottom breakdown at 22. Like that's, you got to look for the setup, man. The setup is always going to be king. Gap is similar but not as clean. Like Gap had that 13, tried to break. So I think 13 still resistance where it can pop up in there, but you don't have that clean flat bottom break idea either on GPS. So it, 
when looking at the three, I thought there were opportunities in all of them, but one of them has the much cleaner chart to know exactly where I want to get in and out. Um, that's what you get with uh, not Nordstrom's, maybe not GPS, but definitely with Macy's. And that's why you have a few names in the back pocket uh, and you track them for a couple of days around key levels so that when something sets, sets up, you know what to do. All right. Um, yeah, I've already, uh, right here on the sticky note, the second name on here is Macy's. So we're going to watch out for a 22 break short. We just bounced off there. We wrote that down, you know, when we, when we came in today. So the no volume on Macy's, though, only 25,000 shares. I'm going to be shorting in this area, 2250 up to 23, where the high was yesterday. If we break that out, we are absolutely gone uh, there on Macy's. So that's a name. I'm, I'm not even going to look at Nordstrom's. I prefer to trade Macy's. I've done really well on that stock uh, in the past. So we will uh, look at that again. So let's go over to a name that's moving right now, Hellbiz. Um, really, they just announced here. Again, oops, it's on the New York. They just announced uh, HLBZ, isn't it? HLBZ. Sorry yeah, about that, guys. Right. Uh, right there. So here it is right now. They just announced that they are, just like GNS, getting a task force ready here to examine measures on the illegal short selling of their stock. So, okay, come on, Helbus, there it is right now. So they just breaks through 20 cents right there, going to the upside, and there it is, 26 cents. Let's see how far we can go, Helbus, right now, blasting, man, 18 to 26, starting to go. I think you gotta watch out for this 30. I mean, hey, if it's anything like GNS, you gotta watch out for 40 cents as well. Look at it, trying to get chewed up right now, 61 million shares and still starting to go. There goes Helbus on, again, more investment investigation here as to what's happening with illegal short selling and then GNS as well um, we just talked about that we missed that 450 break on GNS but there it goes we wrote that down on the sticky note follow every day at Trader TV Sean that's that 450 long right there to 550 but GNS and HLBZ still going nuts we just talked about it at 27 26 there's 27 there's 28 here goes 29 all we got to do is talk about it baby there goes Hellbiz right up to the upside let's see how far this name wants to go uh, let's talk some tech. Eventually. There we go. Uh, we'll talk about Google here. Uh, 12,000. We were just discussing the package, essentially, that was being offered yeah. uh, to some of these employees. If you missed it this morning, uh, Google coming out, laying off 12,000, joining Microsoft, joining Amazon uh, from earlier in the week. Details around this kind of sketchy, though. Yeah, you know, Sachin Nadella releasing a statement yesterday. It's online if you want to read it. Basically, uh, the severance pay is 16 weeks plus uh, an additional two weeks for every year that they've uh, worked at the company. You know, uh, I was expecting more, to be honest with you. This is the company that gives uh, unlimited vacation time to some of their employees. So uh, part of the bigger cuts, like you were saying, Brendo, I, I think uh, Microsoft and um, Amazon combining for over, I think, 28,000. Yeah, cuts this week. Yeah, six thousand, uh, or I mean, twelve thousand, about six percent of uh, Google's workforce in line. I guess what everyone else is doing. What is the uh, what's the idea here, guys, for Google? Well, it's already starting to pull back a little bit. Maybe just because like, you had a de you had a decent pullback in the overall market, and Google started coming off a little bit. But you pretty much gone right back, and I'll just go to the ES. Like you can see, you pretty much gone all the way right back up towards some of those highs whereas Alphabet is now lagging a little bit. Like, it never got back to that 26 support. So the way I was looking at this was that 26, if it could have held it the open, it was set up for a nice top break with a stop at, like, 96 or longs off that 96 level. Otherwise, I'm looking at 94. I like that level to be out in front for a dip. Um, this is sort of the reason. Like, you had a nice channel break, and, you know, breaking out of that level, I want to kind of give it back to there. I just don't see a reason it should be back underneath 93 where we closed. So I'll just be looking for dips in front of that 94. If it reestablishes 96, then the rest of the plan could come back into fruition. I mentioned I like that meta breaking out through 138. That's kind of the big tech name that I liked for the immediate top break long because it looks a bit stronger there. Uh, but Google's in the news. It's up that 3%. We'll definitely have to have a look at the open. But it, for, the temp, for the time being, it seems like it wants to be a little relatively weak with some profit taking happen. If a little more of that happens at 930, then I think I'll have the opportunity to get some of those 94s. Oh, by the way, um, while we were doing all this, Netflix just popped right back up. It's at 338. It actually got Booyaka. to 39. So it's, uh, Netflix is trying to go there. It got really, really close to that top. Look, guys, again, I'm not going to show uh, Twitter again, but we do have Google as the number one name. If you want to find it, it's at Trader TV, Sean, with all the ideas right there. I was waiting for a 95 dip. We got it, but not low enough for me. I was at 25s. Uh, I actually moved it down closer to 95 flat there. We have the 200 period right there. It doesn't mean that much because of just a huge move uh, up, but, you know, we can try to respect that anyways. 95 bucks. There's 93. There's... 
I don't see any way it dips down to 93 bucks, but it could. And if it does, obviously we'll be buying it. We're going to wait for 95 break, uh, or sorry, for it to come down to 95. If it breaks it, we'll, we'll give it a little bit more room and then just get out because if it breaks 95, then I do think that we make that move back into the 94, 93 area. So that's definitely something to watch out for. And... I'm also looking now to take a 96 break long. So not only do I like, actually now that I'm gonna take that one, I guess I gotta get rid of that 96, 60 break. We did, I did like it up here. I like it even better down here. So yeah, let's see if we can get that long. If not, let's see if it pushes a little bit higher. The thing is Netflix is running right now and we don't even have the imbalances yet. So the imbalances are coming out in 45 seconds. Um, so let's wait to see. It just goes right back up to the pre-market high again there for Netflix, so let's see where that goes. We, I thought we already talked about Rivian and Lucid, but that's gonna be next. Uh, that always there? Coming up on the board, I, it must have always been there. Let's just stick here for a minute uh, because we do have the imbalances coming out. So right now you're gonna see, I'll just sort it, we haven't done this yet. Let's hold it to this side so we can see what happens when Netflix imbalance comes out. Uh, but uh, right now, nothing, nothing on here that's gonna be uh, any interest to me anywhere. We talked a little bit about the banks over the last couple days, uh, but let's just wait to see Pfizer with Moderna news, but again, you know, that's a separate stock by itself. And then there's Alibaba with a bid down there, just uh, wasting some time here as we have three, two, and one. And then the NASDAQ imbalances will show up here in just a second. And there it is right now. We saw. Penny stock. Uh, we have penny stock there. Apple with a bid. Might, woo, what kind of a day are we going to have here today? Every. Hell biz with a sell, but look what's a buy. Everything. Microsoft's a buy. Apple's a buy. Amazon's a buy. Google's a buy. Tesla's a buy. Like all of these names right here, these are all bids today. So maybe this is going to be a strong day. Look at the NASDAQ starting to take it back to the upside. Apple bids, Google, Amazon, Tesla right there with a bid. Starting to send that one up to 130 again. I don't see Netflix on here as an initial uh, look, but NVIDIA also a bid. You got all the big boys coming out to play here on the buy side for the imbalances. Softy as well starting to go upside uh, a little bit there. Look at that bump up to 333 50 right there. So yeah, good movement there. And Netf or, uh, sorry, Netflix. Microsoft just bounced 50 cents uh, on that move up to the upside. So yeah, so far so good here. As the imbalances are telling us, guys, hey, alert, alert, alert. Maybe it's a bid uh, today as the NASDAQ trying to hold flat. We talked about 11,400 being key. For me, 11,300 is even, is even bigger. So let's wait to see if we can do that. But hey, the last time we saw all bids on here was a pretty good rally day. And of course, hell bids still hanging out upside, just bouncing off 30 bucks there, HLBZ. Hey, I'm excited for every day, but today is Friday. So let's get this start. Only four minutes now, guys. Back over to the big desk. Yeah, interesting to see. Uh, coming off $4 billion, remember, to sell at the end of the day yesterday. Yeah. So they're buying it back up, it would appear, anyways, this morning. Uh, quickly, APPH, another one that uh, was popping up, another little one that was popping up this morning, just broke downside back to 155 This thing doesn't really have a lot of room uh, to get back to where it was yesterday. But APPH on watch. What are you looking at? Um, I'm just going to keep my eye on GSN and I'm going to keep my eye on Netflix. Um, also, I'm looking at EDU. Michael Noss mentioned that uh, in his segment there. That one I traded yesterday on the Midday Show. I'll be looking at that today too. Yeah, a ton of strength, guys, uh, right across the board as far as online specific, online uh, education companies out of China yesterday. So TAL EDU, worth a note today as well. Yeah, they, they need to be watched. The, the, the trend has been pretty spectacular for both of them. I do think there's going to be a short coming up on both of those at some point, but they're, they're super strong getting extended. That help is got to 30 pretty much exactly, uh, and it's starting to dip back in here. When you go to the daily, just to give you a bit of a look here, and when you go to the daily, you can kind of see like that 30 to 34 area has been in play. You know there's always going to be dips. Just watch out and be careful for halts because a penny stock doesn't have to really move all that much uh, to go into a halt state. And these things get, penny stocks get really, really tricky when they go from halt to halt. I think there's enough liquidity that you might be able to avoid that. I want to get to Alibaba just very quickly here because I mentioned it and then I got in on a bad trigger and I got out because it didn't break 118.50. It's now 928, so I've got my stop breakout uh, for Alibaba. It's a nice little channel break to the upside. It's gapping above. If it doesn't hold 118 on that breakout, my risk is going to be about 50 cents plus whatever slippage it works out to be. Tesla just got into 130, well, close to 130, and is starting to pull back a little bit, but I still favor that break. <coughs> be careful. It is, it is Friday, it's, so when you get options expiration, 
uh, days, you can get that big pop and you never really want to get too trapped on those highs. So if you get a top break, always have an idea where you want to get up. That's why I'll immediately throw a stop on BABA, pre-market lows, Tesla I'll probably get to like 129.50 on the way back in. I never want to get trapped long at the top right at 930. If it starts working immediately, great, fantastic. Scalps them out and then just hold the rest uh, for whatever move you can get. Netflix is starting to come back to the downside here. Nah, nowhere near. It just pulled back into 337. So Netflix still looking pretty solid above that 330 level where there could be a dip. I'm waiting for Google 94s. GNS is back to $5. I don't think I'm going to be buying any highs on that one. It, Hellbiz might take some of the wind out of that, it, it feels like to me. So I want to see that at the open. If it's still holding above that $4 level, maybe there is a dip buy after all. All right, let's go. Um, yeah, Apple. So some moves coming back into the downside here a little bit. We're going to watch out for Apple. I, I don't... I don't have a 135 bit. I have a little bit lower, 134.50. Uh, Google just tried to take down 96 again right there uh, and missed and then just fell right back to the low. So let's watch out here, man. We do have a bid on Google, a little bit lower, 95.15 here, trying to come in right now with only 30 seconds left. The market just fell. There it is. So there's our first long right now. So we are now long Google as it's falling well, back Tesla in. Watch out, what man. The... Um, yeah, watch out for some of these high takes right now. We do have stop orders set up. We're going to go short on Macy's as well. I still think Google can pop here off the open. So we're long now. Um, let's wait. If we take down 95, we talked about that. Watch out, 94, 94, 50. But we're okay right now as uh, I was two, only three seconds. <laughs> and one, ring it there, Prad. There we go. All right, we're long Google here. The market's open. open. So let's get ready to rock and roll. Yeah, let's rock and roll. Uh, I do want, if we get a pop enough in Macy's, I still like that 23. It's in the middle of the channel. Tesla just absolutely rejected uh, that 130. Now you're all the way down at 128. Got to go over to Rivian. That was the other name. If it does get back beneath that 1580, that was a previous low, it could get very spicy as it reclaims that 52 week bottom. Hellbiz, I know a lot of people are watching this, and GNS. Hellbiz still looking like it wants to take a shot at that 30. It just bounced off 25 even. That could be. A good scalp long off 25. On a penny stock, though, remember, a cent or two, that can be up like 5%, 10%. All right, we just did it again right there with uh, Google, of course. I mean, we, did, we took some out at 50, some out at 60. Let's see where Google runs right now. Um, and we are into another position right now as well. We are into Macy's and starting to bank on that right now, 10 cents. 50 cents in the money, Google, a dime piece here on Macy's uh, as we continue to watch these names go flying through here. So Macy's, we already shorting that. We'll get out if it comes back into 22 a little bit there. Uh, but I like it so far. Uh, let's see what's happening. We're going to watch out for Netflix and Google and all that jazz. Uh, here as the market continues to go. There's Apple just went down to the downside there. So that was a level that we were looking at here for Apple just came into 134 flat 134.50 sorry is where we're long now Macy's really printing yeah buddy that's a good one flush down Macy's yeah Macy's is kind of in the middle for me I'm still waiting for it to get a little bit higher uh, Disney's one that I might get into the short side but Netflix is starting to really churn in I don't want to get too far away from the levels that I want and that 330 is a place I want to see a bit of a bounce I'm now on the bit of hell biz in front of 25 so you might see that one pop in and GNS is just giving it up uh, in a big way here um, off that five level so it's kind of rejecting a lower high I just got Alibaba on the breakout. No meta yet, but Alibaba just came in on the break of 118.50. Let's see if he can get through 119 even. It's already there. Uh, let's see if we can get some out. Guys, we are absolutely huge right now. There goes, I mean, this is a great day to try. I mean, <laughs> I get in trouble when I say that because everyone's like, how could every day be a great day? But it is. Uh, there it is right there. Apple long. We just took some out there. 135s. Are you kidding me? 134.80s as well to the upside there for Apple. So, hey, man, there it is right there. Another win for us uh, here on Apple. Let's wait to see, though, where Google goes. I'm still trying to watch out for that. And then Macy's, we clean that out in the 30s there. We still have a piece of it. Let's see where Macy's goes. The market, though, still be falling, man. Uh, maybe we got to find out some shorts here. I, I don't know if it's going to be long-lived or not. That's why we're cashing out when we see some of these pops. If Apple can get back into the 90s. We'll take another piece out on that one because, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's got to watch out for this market. I didn't expect, I mean, it was a big move. We had some buy and balances come in. I feel like those buy and balances obviously got paired off. So now let's wait to see, is that move because of a pair off or are we really starting to head to the downside? And it looks like, yeah, there it goes downside right now. Let's take another piece out in the 60s, unfortunately, for this name. Um, not a great out there at 67. 
10, but we still have some 80s out here if we can get that. There goes Google right back up to the upside as well, 95.60 for Google. So what's up, Brendo? Uh, we had learned about this earlier in the week, guys. Wayfair, the initial report was 1,000. They come out this morning confirming 1,750 employees getting laid off. So Wayfair on a big move up about 12%. So just to recap there, Alibaba got all the way Microsoft. to 119. I got the scalp trade on 119s. I'm reloaded in front of 118, but this is coming back down in an absolute hurry. I know I want some Disney short, but Disney is not even close to 101. I'm going to short off the 100 level because it seems like that's all I can get. Uh, there's Baba. Just did a wick bottom. Wick bottom. Oh, yeah, you're not. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. You can't wick out and then do that and think that it's going to make going to work. I'm going to get some out in front of this this high here. I did take it out, jump right back into it, and let's see if it's going to make the run now. That is one of my favorite setups, a wick bottom and then a potential breakout. So we'll see if Baba can go. I still not get got to get some Disney short. If Netflix is going to give it up, then Disney hit enter twice is going to be the one I want short. I like 101s, but off this 100 level might be the first slope. With this market falling, I feel like I just want to get a little bit of peace in here uh, early. Hellbiz just pulled back off 30, so it's got a double top at 30. We do want to look at this name. I'm kind of thinking this over GNS for the time being, just given it's got some more strength. I'm still trying to pick up some in front of 25, but it's now setting up for a double top 30 break. I'll cross that bridge when it gets there. It looks like the dip by 25 is coming first. All right, um, you know, we're, we're, we're still waiting, man. The, the one thing here is Apple is pretty weak. So um, out of all of the names here, Apple's red. So now we got to slow down, regroup, make sure that we don't make this Apple trade even more of a mess than oh, it needs to be on, as we've averaged into that trade right now. So I'm going to put it out at 133.50 or 133, a breaking of 134. So 134.89 or so, sorry, 133.89. We're going to get out if that doesn't work. But I, I mean, whatever, it's in the money. We just reloaded it down there at 40 and then we got some more out at 60s and 70 again there uh, but here's Google so we've emptied out the clip here on Google man we have a very small piece left we have 20% left why because Google's just bouncing right here off VWAP off the 50 period and not moving so I you know Google, we got that low take for sure, um, and then we got it out, and it's been a good trade. You can see four outs up here, each 20%. We'll hold one more, and I want the long, too, if we break 75. So if we can break above here, forget about all this nonsense. If we can break above 75, I also want the long there for Google. So um, that's another trade that I'm looking at. Let's just check out Netflix. Neil mentioned that that one was heading to coming the back. south side, I believe. It's coming back now. Coming back, yeah. So, wow, good move there for Netflix. Down to 334, and here it goes, looking like it wants to take out that top again of three. 340. So let's watch out for that. And then Tesla, did it take 130? No, it did not. Nope. Um, so there's the rejection of 130. Key levels always matter, guys. Okay, here we go. Like we're actually starting to get a little bit of a move, a little closer. Oh, we shit. just crossed 2250 on uh, Macy's here. Looks like it could get up to that 75, that 80 mark. And that's where I want to be just loading into that 23. I got Disney, but I just missed a chance to grab some more. It just it's going to be hard to see on, let's say, I'll zoom in here for you guys maybe a little bit. It just got right to 100, did a wick top, I got short, and then just came back into 99.80. So I'd like to be able to pick some more shares up in the 80 range and then just see how far this one can come into the downside. Alibaba did that fake out right there at the open. There's your fake out. There's your, like, reclaim the level. Wick tops and wick bottoms can tend to be some of the greatest like, kind of reversal trades. Now the question is, can it get through that 119? I'll reload if I can catch it off those lows, but that was a dirty little move there uh, over in Alibaba. Hellbiz is ridiculous to try to get into, I'll tell you that right now, because you, you have to shave in front of a key level. Like you can't, if you want to get long, at like 25 or 26, you almost have to get in at like the quarters or the 30s or the 40s. You're really not getting filled on any of the bids I'm trying to catch here, but it is headed up to that high break. I might just take a 30 break on Hellbiz and take the top out. Yeah, we got a pretty nasty break there on Google as well. It broke higher and it didn't go. So we got Google 77s, then it retraced right back into the 60s. So let's see if Google wants to go now. I'm in the 80s. We are long. We just punched a decent so spot long here on Google. So um, yeah, this is going to matter to me here. We need this name to go. So let's see if Google can get going to the upside. We'll take a piece out there at 81. Now let's see if it continues to go upside right now for Google. As uh, yeah, this is the name that means everything to me right now. Chips it's not Apple. Week. It's not anything else. It's only Google. So here we go. Let's see if it can continue to climb. Uh, let's put something out in the mid-90s. You can see where we're long. We're long 77. We'll take a dime there at 87. And then, you know, we're, we're still holding 
75% uh, of this trade. Remember, we did buy it there and we bought it again. So now the only position we have left are these 77 longs. Um, so here we go. Uh, nice upside move, hopefully for Google. Hopefully that can pan out for us. Um, Macy's, we're still waiting for the... Oh, what crap, that went right to the 200 period. We were waiting a little bit higher than that at 22.90, but that was a great reload into the short. We've already mashed up this, this name today. Let's see if we can get a little bit more going here. Come on, Google, you're the one. You are the one right now. So let's go, Google. This is what we're looking at, man. We talked about this, this is what we want. It just takes one trade today. Let's bank, guys, it's Bank City here. The bank is open, Tim Duncan style. He's always, the bank's always open for TD. Um, the player. Meta is still relatively weak here. I just want to get some, oh, got to get some shares out of Disney. That's coming back in. But Meta can't seem to get through these highs. I don't want to put it on the shit li crap list just yet because I like that 134 uh, to the long side. So I'm going to get some bids. I want to have stink bids in. The chips are not looking good at all. How am I not short Intel? Because I was looking for a bunch of longs at the open and none of them set up. I should have shorted this almost the first chance I get. I'm shorting the pops on Intel. That goes without saying. Brendo, what's up? Uh, another halt just popping up here. One that was it's a penny stock as of yesterday, not any longer. Uh, LYT just popped up at day highs there and halted, guys. Oh, by the way, Rivian broke that 1580 to the downside. Tesla's also looking weak. That 158, that's a fantastic line in the sand. Baba just crossed a dollar in the money here. I think Baba's on a collision course with 120. I don't think that's going to surprise anybody. It's a Friday. Options, yada, 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 yada. You're through 19s. I'm now looking dip to 118 and a half. That was the breakout price. So Alibaba, I was in it early, but I was in it too early and just got out of it. We took the break. We bought the dip after that silly wick out, which happens sometimes. But I think we're going to get to that 120 marker. Looks like it's super, super strong here. And Netflix... Through 340, looks like that's going to continue to churn higher. I'm still tracking Hellbiz, but, you know, it's kind of diddling in the middle. I want that other break in 30s or giving me some 25s. All right. Uh, I mean, we're pretty quiet here. I mean, Google, I told you this was the one, and uh, yeah, it's the one. So Google continuing to go to the upside there. We punched more shares long. I mean, there keeps being these size sellers showing up, which is what's bothering me. A size seller showed up at 02 as well, and there it is at 09. So these guys are bothering me, but they're getting chewed up anyways. There it is, just in one print. They're gone. Now you go up. I'm sitting at 14. They're just gone at 15. See you later. I mean, we went long at 95. Then we went long at 95, 70. Maybe you didn't like that, but what, did you like the 96 long? I mean, you know, this is what we're doing, man. And this is what we do here. We're putting it on, we're barbecuing it up, and there it goes to the upside right here, goes Google. I mean, all these size, I'm gonna take another out at, at 15 if we can. All these size buyers keep, or sellers keep showing up, man. So I don't know, just because we made money on this stock doesn't mean we will continue to. So let's just, there it is. I mean, perfect, man, awesome. That was just ripping to the upside right now. So now we're gonna wait to see where Google goes. And I mean, we have a lot of outs, obviously, but that's an in there, that's an in there, and there's an in hidden in here as well. When you take big shares, you got lots of outs. So let's wait to see where it goes. That's how I trade anyways. Obviously, I wish I got no outs as right now. There it is, man. It's the one, Google. We talked about that right now. Good trades, Alibaba's been a great trade as well, but this is the confidence that you have to have. And I hope I'm sort of giving that to you, right? It's not like, oh, I think this is gonna happen or whatever. You, you, we never, like we say, you never wanna talk in certainties, but I liked Google today. It's the number one name on this list. I've been buying it all morning and there it is, man. Reap what you sow. Yeah, the breakout just happened on Hellbiz. It's through that 30. It's through 31 now. I just grabbed it a couple of times there. I got the break at 30 and got slipped to like 30 half. I then added on the high of the day break. I think we're headed toward 34, 35 just to go back to the daily. I did show you this level before. 34, 35 makes a heck of a lot of sense to me. So that one's definitely churning. I don't know about GPS. It's... Oh, it's a, uh, well, it's not GPS, it's GNS, my bad. Uh, GNS, not nearly, not really going anywhere. I felt like the wind came out of this and it went over to Hellbiz, and this is barely even holding on to $4. Uh, we'll see where Hellbiz does go here. Just remember, these stocks can halt. I think liquidity is too good for that to happen, but it's not, it's not impossible. If I see it going into a halt, I'm taking some shares out because I don't like to hold everything for the next level. But here comes that 34 Got to get some more shares out in front of it. If we get there, I'm almost thinking, where do I get more shares? If we break out 35, I'll probably looking for a consolidation long. If we pull back to 30, I think we grab some more in that vein. Disney shorts still working, but I don't know how long that's going to last with what Netflix is doing. Because Netflix is already at 342. So how Disney hasn't broken 100 is kind of beyond me. That's a good sign. If I see Netflix start to curl, I'm adding to Disney shorts. Netflix up 8% and Disney up 06 I know relative weakness when I see it. 
Yep, uh, and that's why, man, you want to watch us every single day. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I mean, look class. what we're doing with Google right now. Look what, you know what, like I just, we were talking about Google so much that I forgot to go uh, this money, for Apple. Money, I mean, money, Apple today, money, what's up, Professor? Money, professor money, loves money, that money, 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 money thing uh, right there. Watch the Professor and uh, Luca come through at 11 o'clock today. Uh, but here we are, man. The bangers are right here right now. Um, we just took another piece out at 45, I believe it was there. Uh, no, sorry, 35. Um, the high for Google is that four. I'm, you know what? I just said 45. Let's put a number there. Uh, let's put an offer at 45. It's a huge move to the upside right now for Google, and we're just going to keep on riding it and uh, yeah there it goes man Apple's the next one to blast let's go buddy on that um, we are out of the money here a little bit on Macy's I thought I was going to uh, get a reload oh something just took me out there as well Apple just took another one out uh, to the high side there as well Wow um, we are really on one here today uh, 66 was where I put my offer there for Macy. So we'll see if that can come through again. Yeah, there goes Apple. Right, that was what we just got hit there. Um, we got a 65, and then we just got it right now, 85. So that's a nice move, or 80, 83. I don't know what it was. Who cares? It's at 85 now. Um, and then Google's right there at 50 as well. So, hey, man, we're done, but we'll still continue to trade. What's up, Brando? I uh, just watched Tesla here, guys. Back to the upside on a bit of a bounce on this note, it would appear. It looks like the website in Germany showing Feb and April 2023 for uh, Model 3 deliveries, which is pushed back from January, March previously. Uh, so a little bit of a bounce there for Tesla. Yeah, Tesla's trying to go, but it's 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 kind of on the weaker list at this point. You got to respect that. Uh, Help has got to 36, was able to get some shares that I'm now holding like 20%. There hasn't been a great opportunity to dip by, but as long as it's above the breakout price, I think it can make a move here uh, that we're going to like. We're really close to 120 on Alibaba. So I feel like that's going to be, that's almost going to be it. Like, I don't think this lasts forever. The futures are getting to a resistance level. At least the NASDAQ is up at like 111, uh, sorry, 1145. And that could be a nice little turning point. There hasn't been an obvious dip by. Starting to get some slowdown in Netflix. And once that happens, I want to add to some Disney. But I just got Macy's uh, for the first time in here. 23 is a level like it was that head and shoulders look. You got this nice little bottom in the afternoon that you had. We ended up closing at 78. Now I'm going to start rolling into the shorts there. Not ignoring Nordstrom's, but Nordstrom's 22% short interest, right? So preferred Macy's for a lot of reasons. The short interest in Nordstrom's is one, but Nordstrom's is close to the top. If Nordstrom's goes above yesterday's close, then Macy's could be in some trouble. But until that happens, I still like it. That 30 is going to be that. Sorry, that 23 level is going to be my line in the sand uh, for that. And then Rivian... Yeah, we never got into that Rivian short. It's kind of annoying. There's no bounce to be able to get us back into 1580 at this point. So Rivian, for the second day in a row, headed toward a 52-week low, it seems. Oh, man. Yeah, I got to start looking at something else here. I mean, we, we keep talking about how many trades do you need in a day, um, you know, in order to be a successful day. It, the answer is one. Uh, but we have multiple ones here with Google. Plus, we have this Apple trade going on uh, as well right now as Apple's faded out. Remember, we talked about uh, that Apple was relatively weak. I'm actually going to take another piece out here in the 50s. I kind of sort of forgot about that. The market has fallen back in right now. I'm going to take some more out on, Google, on Apple, honestly. Um, Google, we're, we're almost out of Google, by the way, just to let everyone know. That move is way extended, like not extended but it's more than I thought uh, we'd get, especially after the market not really doing too much. It's a great move upside for Google. We're almost out of that one, and we have just taken pieces out here on Apple. I'm waiting at 54 to take 15 cents. Look, 15 cents is still 15 cents, but I don't love this play anymore. Let's go to Brennan and see what's up. A firm, guys. Uh, not too much on this. The fintech space down on the week, but 4.2% here for a firm just popped up at day highs on volume. Oh, don't say that name to me when I'm looking for shorts. That's, right, right. It's almost like you say, like, I'm looking around because like, the market's starting to go back. We're at, we're at some highs. Now nah, we're not at 13 yet. We're not there just yet. Uh, I like that 13. You can kind of, it's obvious why I like that 13 level. If we get there, I might consider rolling into a short. But Alibaba just put a little bit of a turn on. So uh, turn on it at, up at about 119.75. And if I think 120 is a target, I was just sort of sitting there in front of it. What I want to do here is probably just take it out. Yeah, I'm just going to get I think we're going to get a dip here on Alibaba. Just cross the spread. I think we're going to get a bit of a dip here on Alibaba. I'll be looking between 118.5 and 119. If it holds a higher end consolidation, let me zoom in for you guys. If it holds a high consolidation for whatever reason, like 50 start holding, there'll always be like a 120 break that we can possibly grab in there. Macy's is starting to go against a little bit. Not much, 
but there's room to that 23 level. And Helb is, uh, for those of you who are still watching it, it's actually holding 34 at this point. So it's holding the tops. I think it's about to come back in, though. Like, this could be though, that yeah. test at 30. Like if that, it bounces like, off 30, that like breakout 30. price, then I think there's a chance for it to make another run at that high of the day. But I'm only buying the dip at around that 30 level. We'll be very, well. very patient with it. Disney... <laughs> We just had a curl on Netflix. This is the easiest way for me to show you this, is to go to the black chart uh, where I'm tracking Netflix. That just turned over. I said if that happened, I'd try to get more shares in, in Disney. Shit. I'm offering right here in front of 100. The question is, can I get some more? Wow. Oh, man. I mean, I just, it's like... All right, we'll take a 90 out on Google. Like, this is absolutely a monster here right now. Huge, huge, huge. Uh, Tesla website show pushback delivery of Model 3 vehicles in Germany to March. Uh, let's just see what that, that was four minutes ago. Uh, Tesla, that's, that's not a great sign, but whatever. Uh, it's at least they're delivering vehicles, right? That's the important thing there. 129, uh, nice little level there. I don't know, man. Sharif just asked me, like, and, and thanks for the compliment there, Sharif, about this trade uh, there on Google. But, um, yeah, like, I, he was asking me if I'm still holding. Unfortunately, I'm not holding that much of a piece, but uh, it's been the trade today for sure. Um, just huge move. We called this one. It's the number one name on the sticky note today, um, and that's what's good on that one. You know, one name that we want to talk about quickly, I just look at... First of all, I'm already upset that I missed GNS at 450. We're going to go back and look at that name in a minute. Uh, but right now, Softy, Four. what a move up for Softy, man. 236.50, like that one really got going there off the open, straight up to the upside. This is what it looks like on the daily. It's pretty blah on that one, right? But uh, if you're going to look over here at the 20 minute, which I like to look at for sure, um, you're into some areas there, uh, 236, 236 and change. The three minutes not going to give me much right now. But um, I don't, you know, just looking at this, this name can we fade this pop I mean I don't know if we want to fade anything I, I I'd rather look at this at 238 I still think there's a lot of room to run on this name here Microsoft so um all right we do have Macy's I'm looking to get shorter on this name it's just gone right up to the upside um yeah wrong on this basically it's fine we took our money early on it we've averaged in so it's not fine but we're gonna have to wait to see what Macy's wants to do here I did try to get another short at 90 but uh I have to wait for that I'm not gonna take an 80 if I want a 90 so let's wait to see if that's going to come through and it looks like hey man our uh, negativity there on apple uh need not be as it just came right back up to the upside so uh only a couple trades for me so far today uh let's try to find some more you mentioned meta i mean tesla's moving around amazon as well that hell is there's lots of names moving guys yeah hell just came in for that little dip here it actually wicked to 28 there uh, i was able to get some right at like 29 to give me a 30 price so we'll see if it can make that second move into the upside sometimes that first break is like your best trade and you get a wick top and then it completely flushes but i can now sort of just give it to 28 uh throw a stop order in there like i oh, on the way back i almost like a i almost like a hard stop here if it does if it can't hold a second time through like you've already got the first move and you don't want to get too greedy about it macy's is the one that's concerning me at this point because macy's is churning toward that 23 and nordstrom's um you remember nordstrom's that it got right into yesterday's high it actually went green. It's still green. Wick top. So if it doesn't Jesus roll over, Google. Macy's is absolutely going to, is just going to pump here. Meta, yeah, I still like the meta break, but at this point, it looks like there's going to be an opportunity to maybe catch like a 36 on the way back in. I missed the dip by by about 30 or 40 cents off that 134. As goes now Apple. it's trading to that high of the day. Looks like we might get that top break after all. Oh, man, as goes Meta, as goes Apple, as goes freaking Google right now. I mean, Google from the bottom is $2 in the money. We have the bottom. I kept thinking we had the top, but it just kept on breaking higher, higher, higher uh, and taking it out. I should have really held out uh, for some of these pre-market highs, which is right here. Actually, we're, actually, we're well past pre-market highs. Those pre market highs were 9670 we could have waited for that one just glad that we indicated that for you guys um you can see right now meta i think is going to be a long break as well uh taking out the top right here that's one uh 37 50 right there what else did i write down tesla on here i wrote down broke. google apple we already have the apple long tesla netflix they're all blasting man so 137 50 coming from meta what's up brendo the former runner trying to get going here c-o-s-m uh cosm health uh, you got to go back to November, December. This thing made a big move, but up 26% here. Just took out the highs. Uh, high, speaking of highs, 130 just went on Tesla. Looks like that one's going to be breaking out to the upside. Disney broke 100, so I'm out of Disney. That took out resistance levels. Like, everything is starting to churn here. I did get some out of Hellbiz. It's back up to 32, so the dip buy is starting to work out over there. You mentioned Meta, so no need, no need to go over that one. Uh, but Netflix is pulling back. That's a little weird to me. 
Like Netflix is pulling back in the midst of that market strength. I think there might be an opportunity here. Let's see. I mean, the break, you get 338 pre-market highs. Maybe you can catch a bid off said 338 level. But I'm a little bit shocked that that one is going to be making that pullback. Uh, just going back to the chip names here because they were in the tank. Now starting to pick up a little bit of steam. But look at NVIDIA. Cannot break 170. I still favor 172 short from yesterday. That hasn't changed. But relative weakness in NVIDIA and Intel. This market is jamming. Intel can't go green. I'm sitting at 2850. I might not get 2850, so I'm not going to wait for 2850. If the market wants to be this strong and Intel wants to show you how weak it is, I might just short it here on the first curl I get, somewhere down around this mid 30. Just give it to 40 and take several shots at this. Yeah, shout out to Giancarlo there in the chat um, talking about why did I not hold Google? I don't know. Um, you know, I got to make decisions here. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, Google, pff, wow, holy crap. Like, the amount of money that we'd be up now would be infinitely more than we have right now. Uh, we did, you know, I t was telling Sharif here that we, you know, we hit it with a good amount of shares. And there's nothing wrong with what, what we did. But yeah, getting out a little bit too early on that play. So good call on that one. We will remember that. Um, we are getting close to getting out here. Macy's just took down $23. Uh, dollars, so it's just ripping to the upside. This short, definitely not working out. Took it early. We waited for it, waited for it. And now it's right here. So uh, yeah, not working out here for us on Macy's. So that will be... The flush down trade of the day for me right now is going to be Macy's. But we could have another bad one on our hands. We did take that meta break. Um, I was just what, looking at this broke? from yesterday. Uh, 137.50, that was the high rate there, so we took it. So I took that break oh, no. from yesterday, 137.50 on meta. You got to get a little bit aggressive, I feel like, with some of these plays, or you are going to miss them. You saw what we did on Google. You saw what we did with Apple. I mean, look at Apple. I'm not even discussing Apple right now, uh, but it just we got out of it at 135. So it just ripped right up there to 135. That was a 60 cent winner that I just ho-hummed for you. So uh, that's that's that. Um, and Meta, just, just because we're in it, we do have another bid here. So we will get longer. I, it should fill soon. 137 flat. And then I'm just going to get out if we like, come back into like 136.50. We could take, it sucks to take a dollar hit. But whenever we're taking breaks like this at 10 o'clock, it's not... Like, it's literally, it was about 20% of the position of the Google break. Like, when, when, when I took Google here at 96, that was, the day just started. I really liked the stock. We talked about it. Meta already made the move today, man. It's already up huge. Well, not up huge, but off the bottom, it's like nicely up. So that one is not as big of a risk uh, for me as the Google one. So, you know, we put a lot of shares in Google, and uh, unfortunately, we have some shares in Macy's as well. That just ticked down back down to 90. Maybe if this, what's my average price? 60s? Nah. I mean, if we can get back to 80s or something, we'll just, uh, you know, lick our wounds and get out of Macy's, but I don't think that's going to be a possibility. Reloading back up on Meta, we're out if it breaks 136.50. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt there, but watch, be careful of Tesla. If you have this Tesla break, it just got to like 130.75, and there's been some huge size sellers here. So I'm ringing the register on a couple of legs on this, first at that 40 mark and then right in front of that 70. Uh, when I see these like 100K orders on the offer, someone got filled at 40, another big seller got filled at about 60. Looks like it might be slowing down. There's tons of volume going through. I'm going to pay myself out and try to hold out for a bit more. I want to go back to Alibaba for a second here, guys, because Bob, uh, okay, so I'm, I looked for the dip back into 119. I got out of it, said we will probably get a dip by close to VWAP. It's right back up testing 120. I missed it by a couple of pennies there. It was a great trade early on, but I'm looking to get back into, into this thing. I'll probably go to the quarters, just step it up a little bit more, buying in front of those quarters. Make sure I get to my price right. See if we can't buy the dip again. I don't need to have these orders in here at 18. So that's probably gone. A 120 break is still potentially in play here. Macy's just made a wick top through 23. So I'm going to give it probably about five cents through that wick top. I did add a little bit there. But that's the problem with Macy's right now is Nordstrom's just pull back. So if, if Macy's doesn't follow now, it's not following through. Like, that's what you want to see. Like, Nordstrom's pulls back in after it's squeezed. As a matter of fact, it's a deep pullback. Maybe I'll add to Macy's a little bit there. But that's what I wanted to see have happen. Netflix, I feel like this is a bit of a frustrating, this is a frustrating stock uh, here in Netflix here. Because with the market strength, I really thought we'd be taking out some highs. Or if we weren't doing that, giving some really good dip support. I'm seeing neither one of those. I just got Intel to the short side. But I'm going relatively tight stop. I want to give it to like this 42 pre-market low. And then I, want to, then I want to take another short off the high of the day. The chips aren't all that strong. And I've been picking on Intel whenever I smell weakness. Yeah, I like that. Um, all right. So by the way, 
Here we go. We got a nice little reload there on our boy uh, Meta. So here, hopefully, it can come up to the upside right now and continue to march. So we did get a nice little reload there at 15. We talked about that. Not enough shares, like I said. Um, we're gonna wait. We gotta that? let this one sort of work itself out, man, to the upside here uh, for Meta. So let's see if it continues to go. Um, we already have Google. Google's pulling back a little bit here. So what's that bottom wick? 96.92. Let's put something at 97.50. Um, if we're able to get it out, fine. Uh, if not. Yeah, that sucks that we're, that we're going to give something back here uh, on Meta. But let's just wait, or on, sorry, on Google. If, if the market wants to go up, man, um, we already have a great long. I, I'm really happy with this Meta long. So let's see if the market wants to go. We have this. I'm waiting at 75. It keeps, we keep getting ticked out here at 60. Maybe we'll, let's cancel our 75 and then just put a 60 here uh, because... Why not? We just reloaded that at 15s. Um, if we can get this out a little bit here, it's topped out a couple times at this level. There it is right there. So we'll go oh, Canada uh, right there. So it's a nice little move to the upside here for Meta. Um, let's just see if it where it wants to go. It's, just, it's not a small play anymore because we got some shares there. So let's take a little bit out and see if this goes uh, for Meta. And then, of course, Macy's uh, bringing itself back in. And then Netflix, guys, is right at a level that I talked about there in the pre-show pre there. And it's on the sticky note as well. This 340 level we knew this would be key and look what it's doing it's just kind of hovering around man it broke it ripped up four bucks and now it doesn't know what to do so i'm gonna stay away from netflix this one really isn't piecing out for me roblox roblox oh i have totally forgot about remember roblox 34 from yesterday it had that late break got yeah. to 34 15 it's right there now i'm glad i went to my quote board and was like i'm forgetting something uh so 34 15 double top it looks like it wants to take it out right now this is one of these levels where you can't i'm not i'm just not going to ignore it like, I'm going to play it both directions. We shorted at this level like six or seven times, but if it breaks out that 15, it is 100% a reversal for me. I tried the reversal yesterday. It kind of worked out originally and then eventually fell off. Uh, I'm at Intel. I said I'm going to have a tight stop, five cents, but it's not the last short I'm going to have on Intel. Uh, but here's Roblox right here. There's your 3415. If it breaks, it's a reversal. If this market goes, Roblox has a huge gap to be filled but i usually go short in front of key levels until they break gonna get my stop and make sure it's enough to reverse because i want to go into the long so new position for me is roblox tesla just pulled back a little bit but that's not the dip buy i want because i'm already in tesla it's got to be alibaba here like baba's still showing signs of strength i still want that vwap dip Maybe too aggressive there, but I'm going to try and get this dip here now in Alibaba if we start coming back southbound. Yep. Hellbiz did break 20, 28. I told you where my stop was on the reload. That's me getting out. We were able to get some from 30 to 32, but then it, it went one-to-one -one against me, so I just got oh, out of it. Always have to have a risk-reward. These things can come down just as quickly as they go up. Yeah, that's... That's why for me, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, I really like uh, to trade what we're trading over here uh, on this side. Look what's just falling back in like hard Google, big time movement back to the, high, to the low side there. Um, Macy's, we did take another piece out there. I just, whatever, like I said, we're, we're down a cup of coffee on it. If it continues to come back down, um, then we'll get some more out here. But for right now, Macy's, we just to take another piece out. I just don't want to be responsible. Uh, this was not a great trade here. Um, and we are being responsible by getting some out in my opinion, but hey, it could still fall. I do have a bid here at 81 as well uh, on Macy's. So give it to us. Oh, there, there it is right there. So I'm going to say awesome because we didn't punch out at 23. Like that was close to getting us out there. So the fact that it's come back in and now hopefully we can put a winner on um, is something here for Macy's. Let's see if we can get that Google falling down and Meta falling down as well a little bit. But it's all good. It's so good that we have Brendan over there at the big desk with Happening Now. Hey guys, brought to you by Chart Prime. They make useful tools for both day and swing traders. New features for the new year, including multi time frame support and resistance indicators, and so much more. For more info, use the link below. You'll receive an automatic 30% off. Shout out to Chart Prime bringing you happening now. A bit of a mixed board to start things off for Friday. Once again, it is the Dow already into negative territory. 0.19, remember, went negative on the year yesterday. 0.26 for the S&P, the Russell, 1, 2, 3, 000, about the same, about 0.2 to the upside, 0.75 here for the NASDAQ composite and the 100, if you're with us in the pre-market. Uh, so much uh, talked about, but uh, Netflix, Google, and Nordstrom's uh, were among the headliners so far today. I'll show you this one in a second. Really interesting move so far. Netflix and Google well covered by the guys. Yeah, retail back to the upside here for a second there. Anyways, Nordstrom's JWN goes positive 
uh, versus the close from yesterday and then right back down. So a bit of a pullback. We'll see if 17 can come into play once again for JWN. Remember, uh, cutting their full year revenue and profit forecast. Netflix, what a move up to 344. The aftermarket high comes into play for Netflix. Yeah, great move for Netflix. Um, I just got into Roblox and was able to get some out there when it reclaimed 34. Just a quick update on that position. Um, I still like the reversal. If the market t takes out the top, I think Roblox, it's too big a level not to look for that reverse into the long side. I just picked up the dip in Alibaba. Just got into that 119 in VWAP. With a dip buy, I do want to have a tight stop, but I don't want to just have it like at that wick. I'm looking at that like 75 area for a stop on Baba. Tesla just bounced off 130. That's the other one um, that we're trying to play off this secondary push so we got the breakout 130 didn't quite get to 131 but it got close you're getting a higher consolidation we get through the top we'll look like 34 35 this has some room to go you, know, you go you look at where tesla was just a couple of days ago like we're sitting at 137 so if there's a continuation market gets through the top you have plenty of room oh, for tesla man. to continue its run i'm back into intel because i said i'd take multiple swings at it and i will always watch what's going on with the stronger chip names NVIDIA is trying to climb here. It's still beneath that 170, still beneath that 172, where I would go short if it was even close to it. But yeah, NVIDIA too far away. Uh, I'll just focus on Intel for the short, at least for the time being. I mean... Oh, Meta just came. Yeah. I mean, Meta, we're 50 cents, 60 cents in the money right now. I mean, this is just... Honestly, we talked about it here on the stick, you know, Google Long, Macy's, Apple, Netflix, like they're all here, man. I mean, unfortunately, we Apple really wasn't so much of a runner for us today, but we did pick up some nice bottoms there and got out at 135. So Apple for me is the laggard there. But look what look what Meta just did, man. I mean, this is this is exactly what we're talking about. You know, not only did we hit, hit that Google trade, but then this Meta one is almost even better and uh, not better. It's up only a dollar, but still huge move up here for Meta. And we called this place. So there it is, another one for you guys uh, right there. Maybe I'll get one more piece out at 98 here. And this is like, what's up to Giancarlo again? See, I'm doing it again right now. As I have these winners on board, I can't stop scalping. Uh, there it is, another out right now for me on that one as it just hits 98. Um, and yeah, there, I mean, there's 98 again. So blasting through 138 as it continues to go. Uh, Macy's keeps dancing here. So we, we got a great out there uh, right before we threw to Brendan at 81. Looks like it's trying to take out the top right now. So let's adjust our script board. And I said that, look, I was really, we only have half the position now. So I was really happy. I said I was happy taking the loss there. So now you can see exactly why as we get some out there at 2280. And really, we'll be down on it. It'll be our only red stock so far today. We'll knock on wood. We had one red stock yesterday. I think we were six and one yesterday or five and one. And today will be one, two, three, four, three and one right now uh, off this Macy's because it's going to be a loser. It's going to break right now. You don't retest right now just for no reason. So here it comes right back up to the upside. Hey, if it fades 23, it fades 23. But I don't know. Wow. There, I mean, this is really getting elevated right now. May, uh, Meta, I don't know if you wound up punching that long or not, but... My long was 138. It, okay, good. it was too big of a level, but the um, Roblox. Roblox finally took out that top. Yeah. It's at 34.50 already. I cannot believe I forgot about Roblox for that long, and I'm glad... Like, I, it was blind, dumbass luck that I was looking at my quote board and remembered that I saw Roblox. The second I saw it, I'm like, mm. it's close to 34. Holy crap. We were th the only trade that we probably took 10 times between us yesterday off the same level and almost forgot about it. But you're right about Macy's. The thing about these names is they have a short interest and this happens. So I got my stop in place. You can probably guess it's not a very creative number at that 23 level. If it gets if it gets above there, I'm not reversing this long because I frankly don't believe in it, but I am going to have to get out. It's just one of those things that happens. Um, I did wait till Meta broke that top at 138 to go. I was able to just get some. Where did I just get filled? Probably at 32. Well, yeah, I, yeah, probably at 32. That's usually the number I put out there. I'll probably take another leg out here if we get past 138.50. Outside of that, just kind of let it ride. Tesla, where we at? 131.40. So I want that to get to at least 132.5, get a couple of bucks out of it. Roblox, I don't really have, in terms of levels for Roblox to get out, now you got a huge gap fill. Like the gap fills to 35.5. So I got to figure 35 and 35.5 and uh, is where the next stop should be. Um, you know, again, like sometimes you look at those flat bottom breaks, this would be kind of the opposite, like the gap to fill was in the other direction in this particular case. Intel short, we did re-enter it, at least I re-entered it. Uh, here, was able to get some, that's a 15-minute chart, Neil. 
was able to get right back in when it wicked topped me, got some out at VWAP, it's now retesting the top. I don't think this stays weak forever. At some point, it probably participates in this move, so I'm gonna continue to have tight stops on this. If the market rolls over, yeah. I wanna have something short. I don't know if Macy's is gonna work, but I figure if the market rolls over, Intel probably gonna fall. Yeah, we got, we got out of Macy's, and I'm debating just getting right back in here, because it is kind of holding that top a little bit uh, for Macy's here, and, oh, and doesn't really want to rip up too much, so we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see. That high was 04, I got out uh, on that 03 break, so that was the past high uh, right there, so as soon as we broke that, we got out, but we, our, our damage is not that hard. Uh, to, I mean, it was, I mean, the problem is we took 20 cents or whatever it was here, so that gave us the capital that we needed to lose uh, on this next play, and then we were able to get a little bit out there. I don't know, man. Uh, we can check in on JWN. I might just, uh, let's just go short again uh, right now on this and, and play it up until it breaks higher. Uh, again, one more time. I just don't want to get out at that very bottom uh, there. So let, let's see what happens. We got some 98s right there. You see, we just punched in, so it went down, but uh, that's just a, a function of punching in. So let's now wait to see what happens here. I'm going to give it to that 22, like 10 area. So I don't want to just keep on like, you know, getting into these losers like we did. We went into Netflix again yesterday uh, off of that. So uh, Firm, Upstart, yeah, all those crazy names. What's up, Frank Jones there? Um, I love Wynn, by the way. Wynn was my pick uh, for last year, and it actually, uh, shout out to Nelson there. We talked about this when we were in Miami. He asked me for a pick. I gave him Wynn. Uh, he likes it. He likes it a lot uh, right now. That was at like 60, 70 bucks. Now you're at 100, so that was a good one there, paying for the vacation right there. Um, Google right there. Let's go right there, back to the high of the day. That's the trade. We're out now of Google couldn't honestly could only be happier if we had held on to more shares but I mean just to give you guys these trades really early and be so confident with them you know that's that's the key there so I think it's confidence because if you're not confident in the trade then you're not you're gonna hit it with small amount of shares like you're here to make money right so um, that that was one there really happy with Google my number one stock today Apple's right there as well Meta's trying to go number one as well by the way but we missed that out so let's see if it comes back up I don't want to take another out here at 38 but uh, it is kind of top heavy there that was a good out that you had uh, in the 30 for sure we'll I was I was not well it is right now uh, we'll wait to see if it, if it is going to be ultimately a good out but for now it's a great one um, and uh, there goes meta so we'll, we'll wait for that one and uh, yeah Macy's man we're reloaded Check let's Nasdaq. see if we can make that money back so the Nasdaq's getting real close to 11.5 at this point, which gets you excited if you're long. Um, just, to, just to update here, Alibaba, you'll see I did get back into this one. I'll hit something positive for it. Um, bounced off VWAP. Someone asked me what my target was. I still like the 120. I, I am getting some at 119 and a half, but this is now the reload at 19. If it gets to 120 even, that can be a separate trade and a potential breakout. So I want to pay myself out here, hold some into the break. If it rejects, I want to grab uh, an out at that price. Tesla feels like it's going to be okay. Roblox is stalling out a little bit at 34.50, but you got to check out what's happening in the name Brendan's about to mention. Whoa. Yeah, just be aware as well, Fed's George uh, speaking right now as well. So just watch the overall market. No significant comments yet. But uh, yeah, some of these Chinese ADRs starting to pop up. Here's uh, Xpeng, 7.8%. It was a little late to the party. We did actually get a little bit of a negative move initially, but straight higher since on heavy volume as well for Xpeng. I didn't even I didn't even pull up the chart of Neo. Do we once know why those today. are going so I crazy? I have no. I mean, I don't know why. Uh, but Neo is uh, they're all kind of running up like three percent here. I don't know that I want to just sort of jump in off of those highs. I got Alibaba, which is loosely related to it. If I have to be concerned about a long right now, though, it'll be Meta. Like there was that break, I was able to get some out. Uh, at that high, but when you take a breakout trade, remember, like you're kind of chasing a move a little bit. So these dips do matter. Like, does it hold that last sort of breakout? The last breakout was 137.50. If it can bounce there, I think it might be worth a reload. But everything else just feels a little bit stronger. Like Roblox breakout, much stronger move. That sort of goes without saying. Uh, even Tesla here. So Tesla breakout. A little bit stronger off that 130. I guess it was a little bit earlier to that move. I'm just holding on for dear life for like 132 and a half or more. I don't know about the dip buy unless the market wants to confirm it can take out the next level. So I'm going to be very patient with those. Um, Baba is uh, Baba is even pulling back on me right now. So that pulls back into VWAP. I'll probably look and almost forgetting about VWAP and start looking back at this 118.75, which is put a bottom. No need to buy 119s if you can get 20 cents better, and that's where the support might be. So I'm going to be very, very patient here. Um, I'm going to check back in on Netflix only because I haven't in a while. Yeah, see, Netflix still just doesn't want to doesn't go. 
you know, Netflix, it broke that 40. It thought maybe it was headed to 50s, not participating in this move. If it gets back down into the lows, it might be worth picking up as like a bottom pick trying to play off the 332 level, but you got at least 4 or $5 before you have to worry about that. All right, so just get back into Macy's, right, is what we said. And, uh, yeah, good talk there and some crazy names, man. Uh, we'll have to check out uh, some of these Chinese names uh, blasting off there, Neo, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, lots of names popping. Uh, there's Macy's. So we just got a nice bid there. What was that bid? Uh, that was 85s. So and that now it's broken below. So we re-engaged in the short. We, we saw that we got stopped out and it didn't really continue to go. So remember we talked about, like, what our new strategy would sort of be, would be, like, to reverse into positions when they break. Uh, unfortunately, there was no follow through on this, right? So for me, there we go, we just got an 82, I believe, yes we did uh, on that one. So, you know, no follow through to the upside on that, so we just get right back in, right? And like, sometimes we miss those plays. Like if I would have punched long, there was no reason to punch long Macy's. It's not relatively, the volume today is really low, 1.7, so that's nothing for me to worry about. Uh, but yeah, good take there on Macy's out, bad take out, but good, good sort of reload there to get back into the name. And now, we, I don't think we'll be, well, we could be positive. Like, if this gets into the 50s, uh, we'd be positive again because, uh, unfortunately, you know, all of these, um, you know, were just short. So we did get taken out. But now we're making some money back. You don't have to be completely perfect uh, on the day to make money, right? So you just got to be sort of good sometimes, get the right levels, be patient, and uh, reap those rewards. Uh, speaking of rewards, Meta, I'm still sitting here at 30. Hopefully, we can get back up there. Um, I'm actually at 35, which is pretty much the high of the day there. Uh, it's at the high of the day is 37. I want to try to get that high. So that's what we're going to sit around and wait for now. So here goes Meta. We'll see if it can break that 138. Some of those names, I know you're on Alibaba. Are you still on it? Yeah, you're still long. I still so have that's Bob. a good one there. You're back. long at 119. Where is it at, Ray? Did it break that 120? Yeah, so right up to there to 120. So about, about as key as it goes, man. 119.11. See? Yeah. What? You know, you, not 12. 911, you mean? No, not 12. Not 12. Not 12. I okay. don't bid 12. I don't bid 12. All right, all right, all right. Uh, oh, yeah, because you were talking about your lucky numbers yesterday. Right, right, right. Um, so Alibaba there, I, I still think a 120 break is, is imminent. So let's watch out for that, especially if some of these other names. And again, you know, it's these Chinese ADRs just kind of go when they go. Uh, Neo, nice little move to 1120 as well. So, yep, so far so good, man. Big bull for XPEV. Is, it, is, is yeah. that what's, what's moving around Oh, here? Lunar New Year starts tomorrow. That's why the no. ADRs are... No, ADRs come are, on. I, I mean, I, if that's the reason why... <laughs> Fine. What is that? Because no, they I have just, vacations now? Brendan just put it in the chat. I was like, yeah, yeah, like what's cool. going on with these names? And it's, he just said Lunar New Year. So yeah, he know. said that's the only thing he could find. I don't know. Maybe does Lunar, I mean, you guys tell me. I don't know. Is it like, is that a vacation for days? Like, Is it you, a thing? Oh, it's definitely a thing. No, I just no, don't I mean, know. Like, I just don't know. Does that, why would that rally does it the, move the mark? Does it move the markets in Asia? Well, you give gifts for it. Lunar New Year. Maybe people are buying XPEVs for everybody. I'm, uh, I just don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I don't know. I just yeah, it's don't not, know. we're not trying to be. Don't know. I just don't know. But that's good. Good point there, Brendan. I don't mind Thanks being ignorant that. sometimes. Uh, no, I don't think that's yeah. really being. I don't think that's. I don't think we're being ignorant there. We're trying to find out the reason why XPEG is up nine percent uh, right now. And Brendan brought that news to us. So thank you, Brendo, for that. Um, I think I'm getting too specific here. I'm gonna just punch out there at 30s uh there sorry 27s there so we'll take that profit we're a dollar in the money on meta like if we're a dollar money, in the money, you know money, we're taking money, that play money, so right money, there money, and again money. you know everybody trade their different styles right there um and uh thanks momo there yeah it's there i know yeah we know it's their january holiday yeah. uh yeah so thanks for that um but uh, right there it is there's another out there for us look we're really we're, we're almost as much money as we were yesterday at the close. So uh, you put that for what it's worth. We had some big trades today. Uh, the only disappointing one for me is Macy's. I'm going to take another piece out right now. So uh, I, I didn't get the reload in meta, but I am going to take another leg out when it gets to that top. Like I said, like you don't, you have to, under, you have to make sure you pay yourself out sometimes when you take a top break, because if we don't get through, and I'm just going to want to walk you through like my thought process here um, when you if you don't get through this resistance say on the Nasdaq and you pull back everything that you've got that's a top like you're buying the absolute top as good a level as it is I'm still in some shares to the long side as good a level as it is I'm absolutely buying the top here so I want to pace them out if we continue to go that's great we have enough longs on that it'll be fine uh, I just want to go back to Tesla that's starting to show at least some signs of making a higher low here at about 138, sorry, 130.75. If it goes to 138, that's fantastic, obviously. I want to give this to 132.5. I think it's got another leg in it. But again, the futures have to go with us uh, right here. Baba's pulling back. 
However, I don't want to buy VWAP here in Alibaba. I want to let it press a little bit, see if it gets down to like 118, like 70s or 80s or something in here where I can grab a dip buy. And then if it can't hold 75, we get out. You see what those names are all doing. They're all pretty strong. Roblox, that one's been fantastic. But like everything I'm showing you here, you get it to a bit of a top. There hasn't even been a significant pullback in Roblox yet. I'm now just holding on to the last 20%. I want to see if we can get to 35 at this point. Yeah. Uh, starting to run out of steam, though, because the market rejecting some of those tops. Yeah, exactly. We talked about some of those tops there, 11,500. That's basically where the NASDAQ just ran to. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to, uh, you know, sit here with rose-colored glasses too much. Uh, now we are going to get out of Meta. Meta just broke through 138, so we take a, a, a piece out there. It's a stop order that I'm always going to have an even dollar level. So we take a piece out there. And this is the benefit. Like I said, man, we're getting better at trading, obviously, uh, every single day. I hope you guys can see that. And what I'm doing is focusing on singular names, right? I'm not in. 5, 10, 12, 1,300 positions. That's ridiculous to be in that many positions, right? How can you possibly take a decent amount of shares and hold five positions? It can happen, but if you're going to focus, like I'm trying to do, um, on certain names, you know, hit the winners. Like that Roblox that Neil had, like if we just remembered that that 34 was so key, then, you know, we would have been able to, I mean, just speaking for myself, like hit it with more shares. Like it's just, it's those things, right? That's why we hit that Google. It's why it's the number, like on here, I only have four names on here today, right? Google, Macy's, that's the two I've traded, Apple. So those are two huge, huge moves. Netflix, we wanted to watch. We talked about 340. And then GNS, I missed the trade. It was a 450 long. So, you know, you got to be specific with some of your trades. And then when names start to set up, like they do here on Meta, so on and so forth, that's where you blast off, right? You watch it, you see it. You see some key levels. Neil mentioned it this morning. I wasn't even really looking at Meta. Neil mentioned it. Boom goes the dynamite. And all of a sudden, it's one of my top stocks. So, you know, try to be as specific as you can be and be patient with um, your trades. And that's the one thing that's really, really helped me. We also identified that Apple was pretty weak today, right? So now that I'm going to look for some shorts as the market, I'm not going to look for some shorts right now, to be honest with you. But now that the market's trying to pull back a little bit, if there is a dramatic move, what about this Apple take low here? 134.40, if the market really gives it up, Apple's gonna give up the bottom as well. So these are little things, you know, I can see clearly now, you know, there's things like that that you have to watch out. Even Macy's, like that reload on Macy's. I mean, we got stopped out, fine. Lick the wounds, it's all good. But then there it is, man. It didn't extend further, so we reloaded it. Instead of just taking the loss and saying, that's it, hands off, we get back in there. We're analyzing what, what's happening around us. So this is a big one right now. Let's just see what's going on. Uh, Netflix, I mean, people, are, are we- are Come you here even, for a second. Yeah, this, go ahead, yeah. So there's no news on this LYT. I just asked Brendan specifically, by the way. It just reopened after a halt. It's got a five million float. So, that's enough to make something move. Obviously, I think we all understand that. Um, but just going to go give you the levels. I don't want to trade it until it, if it gets to like, oh, I hate when that happens on the scaling. Uh, if it gets to like 2 to 225, that seems like an obvious level that I want to be involved with. Um, but I, I, I want to figure out what's causing it to move. If it's just like a social media kind of thing or a sympathy play low float, I'm probably going to be favoring the shorts here. And the timing is pretty good because it's time for our small cap recap with Berendo. But I got to figure out why this thing is moving in the first place. Hey guys, yeah, small cap recap brought to you by Seeking Alpha, the world's largest investing community, your one-stop shop for all investing needs. Subscribe today to unlock all Seeking Alpha's premium features, including access to exclusive quant rating system. You can now receive a one-year subscription for 50% off. Check it out. Pin link in the chat there for uh, Seeking Alpha. A few names to make note of here this morning in small cap world. SLRX was one that popped up Late in the day yesterday, this one made a big move all the way up to 440, 450. So I was just working off of some of these highs from late in the day yesterday. And then initially in the pre-market here uh, was uh, 440, 450 at the top. Had a stop there. Initially, that was too tight uh, for some. I put that right back on. We're now uh, 350. So 450 at the top. 350 now trading on uh, SLRX. Uh, big move down once again. Uh, GNS, my initial idea on this was long. In the pre-market was so strong, so much volume versus four was holding four throughout the pre-market uh that has now given up so i actually flipped this short and have been sitting here waiting for this to break down starting to break down right now for gns hopefully we get a little bit of follow through here for that one guys but otherwise uh busy morning in small cap land back to you
Yeah, really busy. I think what happened, because GNS was strong, and then it was, it, it was like, it was like hell biz happened, and then the buying stopped on GNS. Yeah. It's like it just moves from one to the other. So this LYT, it's done a ton of volume. Like, I was just telling the shot, like, my trade idea scanner, it's maybe not true it now, but, like, yeah, winning the race here, it's, a, it's my high of the day Momo scanner, it's a top, the up gapper is it's that and, and GNS, so it's just, it's basically, that's what got my attention, and everyone on the chat was talking about it, too, so that's why I looked at it, but no real news, I'm, I just, I just paid for low case to, if, in case it gets up to that 225 level and I want to short it, I just want to be ready for that action because a lot of times it gets to a level and it's like you missed it. Uh, so I just want to go back over to one of the other names here. I, I got my area that I want to dip by on Alibaba and it never really came into that price. So, you know, I'm going to let it ride. But if it continues higher, maybe there's a 120 break in play. I'm just going to hold on to these shares that we have. And it's the same story with Roblox. You know, at this point, it feels like we can get to that. It, it can get to that 35. I have a habit of, I love saying... Uh, you know, I will I say, like, we, you, you guys know what I mean. Like, when I say we, it's like the stock and, like, anybody that's long. It's not like team trading or anything. But I'm going to get an offer in front of 35. It's kind of an obvious level. It is Friday, so when you go 34 break, 35 kind of makes some sense. I'm going to get an offer out there, see how far this one can go. Meta is the only one that it's not sitting in the money because I bought this top. But I do have my stop out here. I only hold a third left. I have a stop in beneath this resistance level. And at this point... It holds here. I'm looking for 139. It doesn't hold. We just get out of this one and accept uh, that it doesn't want to go anywhere for us. I keep going back over to, uh, going back over to like Nvidia and some of these chip names, you know. And I took two swings at Intel. Didn't work. Nvidia waiting for 172. They're not really that much in play. So I'm gonna be very patient for the rest of the day here with the chips. They're not breaking highs, they're not breaking lows. When that's not happening, uh, maybe you don't want to trade them. Netflix, I still think can be something. I was talking about this low, this low we'll down here at 332. It's got $5 till it gets down here, but yeah. maybe we can get a little bit of a double bottom. Netflix, kind of, I don't want to say boring, but either you got it off the open or you didn't get it at all. Oh, man. Uh, I don't even want to discuss. Uh, I mean, I was just discussing it with Professor over here. I, I don't even want to uh, discuss Google, but we're going to have to look at it because it's a banger trade uh, right there. I mean, the fact that we talked about this, I just, I got to hold on. I mean, if you guys held, great, fantastic. Um, you know, we trade our own accounts here, obviously. And part of my problem is that I've been a prop trader my whole life, literally. Um, so it's like, you know, I'm too used to scalping things out. I need to be able to hold a little bit better. But for me, man, honestly, it's just about this. It has nothing to do with how much money we made today or we lost, well, we didn't lose today, but how much money we've made today or anything like that. It's about the ideas, right? It's about the idea generation because as you're, as you're a day trader, and this is why I sort of gave Sharif a hard time there at the open, you know, like every day the market's open and you walk in the door and you don't know what's gonna come through, right? So it's like, I don't know where this market's gonna go, but it's the idea that we had to take the Google long, right? To take the apples, all these stocks, Apple, by the way, ripping, Macy's wrong. You're gonna have wrong ideas. It doesn't, it doesn't take an overly sophisticated plan. Watch us, we have watch lists, we have sticky notes, we have all this stuff planned out for you. Make sure you follow all of our resources and then learn, make your own sticky note, right? Tweet at me, send me your, I wanna see your sticky notes, guys. Like send them at, let's get this hashtag trending, man. Like let's go, like we, this is what we're doing. We're sharing information and sure, some of us positive more than others. That's true for every single thing in life, right? It's follow the process, be there for when the market happens. And I like getting out too early, that's, that's on me for sure. This is gonna be the trade of the day, but it's still a monster trade. And if you guys have it, then that's fantastic. And even just like meta breaking down there, right? Like I, I, I have that 10% left on Meta, well, about 20%, sorry, left on Meta as it's coming right back in right now. But understand, like, when that breaks 138, that's my plan to get that last piece out. So now we're not sitting on this L and we're like, oh, man, we wish we would have got out. We don't wish anything. Make it happen.
do what you want to become, right? Like, I, I was gonna, I'm going to shout out Pratt right now, too. You want to talk about discipline? This guy decided to go to the gym, change his habits, change his style, this and that. The guy's going every single day, and really, you know, his, I, I see the change in this guy, man. More positive, just, right, right, Professor? Right? More everything for this guy, right? Much better, much more focused. This guy's the man. Well, he's always been the man, but that's what we're talking about. Be disciplined, stay in your lane, make those changes, and we're doing that and it's definitely paying off here in dividends and in capital gains every single day here in the market that's my little rant let's go that's what it is there you go discipline is a huge thing for sure although prop traders it's you don't pay capital gains because no, you're trading no. the firm's <laughs> capital that's just gonna get that away so like I don't, I don't want anyone sitting there hey do these guys pay capital gains on these trades no when you trade for a prop prop floor you're trading firm firm capital everyone has their own buying power lyt is about to it Twice has tried to halt. It was first at 186. It resisted a halt at 186. It is now going to, well, I shouldn't say uncertainty. It is now about to likely halt. There it is. It just halted at 192 to the upside. So this is where the rubber hits the road. But just be very careful. It was GNS yesterday on a $2 move. And I'm not going to forget this because I was in it and I, Luca was in this one as well. When it halted right in front of the $2 level, it opened up, broke two, and everybody, well, I don't say everybody, but a lot of people in the move like that will have a stop on the way back. If you take a two break long off of the up, after it opens back up, you're going to have a stop underneath $2. And what happened is they ran it to the top to like 215 just so that 99 would be the halt band, and then it would be trouble people getting out. So it halted before it could trigger people's stop outs beneath $2 and then open lower. So I'll be very, very careful chasing any move here to two. I think 240, 225 to 240 is a good level on this uh, up at the daily chart. We'll see what happens if it gets there. Current indicated open is flat. So take that for with a grain of salt. That might change as we get a little bit closer. Uh, this market did have a bit of a wick top and pull back there. However, the names I'm in, I'm going to keep taking Intel every chance I see weakness. The names I'm in, we just bounced off 130 on Tesla. I'm going to look for a reload. I wanted to see it get down to VWAP. Would it bounce 30? Would it test VWAP? Looks like it's going to try to bounce 30. So I'm going to look for the reload off that number. That's where I'm long it already so you can probably guess what number I'm not going to be bidding uh, and then Roblox it feels like it's going to be pretty safe up here that's still a New York stock Neil uh, feels like it's going to be pretty safe because we had that pullback. It bounced off 34.50, so that 34 break, we're headed to 35. I'm going to get out some in front of 35, but then I'm holding for a break. I want to see how far this one can go. You're already filling in that gap. The question becomes, can you fill in the entire gap? And that's 35.50. So I'll have an offer in front of 35. At that point, I'm then holding it to see if it can get to 35.50. I might put a trailing stop in at some point. And then Alibaba, sort of the same thing. You know, Bob was up at around that, three, that 320, that 120 level. At this point, I think he can make a 120 break. I'm not, I'm not sold on buying a 120 break yet. I want to see what the rest of the group is doing, and then we'll see if we can hold on to this. I don't have an absolute target on Alibaba because it's kind of in no man's land uh, at this particular point. On the daily chart, like, where's your out going to be? Like, 125 stands out there, but that's obvious anyways. We get there, you're happy enough. Um, and just sort of taking it. So even the 120 break even looks more appealing now, now that I pull up the daily chart. All right, we missed that reload there on Meta. Thanks for all the kind words. What's up, Comp, our SRX1. Thank you so much, Giancarlo. Thanks, Bears vs. Bulls, everybody, man. I mean, I'm just talking the way I talk all the time, and that's just hopefully, um, you know, motivate some people out there. Uh, and, you know, no matter how you trade, you, you're going to be fine. Just love what you do, and um, the rest will follow. That's that's sort of the model that I'm trying to go with here uh, every single day. And then, you know, we get excited about our trades. A lot of that, of course, is, is going to be for the show. You know, you want to make sure that you do have a level head uh, when you are trading. But, okay, uh, someone said, what am I doing with Macy's here? Uh, before we go to Brendan, just real quick. Not much. I mean, I just got out at 90 again. Um, you know, we did get some outs there. Looking at holding this VWAP. I don't, just so you guys know, man, I, like, I'm not in love with this trade by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I don't really like it. I just saw the reject there at the top. So, you know, that's why when it rejects and pulls back to some key levels, we're emptying it out. I only have half left on Macy's. So hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, uh, it will continue to go back down to the downside. But for me right now, nah, if we take out that 23 again, a little bit higher than that, then we'll get out. But 
but I'm not, I don't think that this is going to go back down too, too far now. Uh, JWN actually went positive. I don't know if it still is. Brendan gave us that note it had uh, back. a while ago. It, uh, wait a I'll just check right now before we go over to Brendan. I think it's a NASDAQ I'm going to go with. No, it's a New York, damn it. Um, okay, so JWN right now, come on. New York, the whole, the whole, we're gonna go to Brennan in a second. Come on, load up. Okay, so just, so there's that note when Brennan brought it to us. Still down 1%, but it did go positive there. I did see Brennan mention that. So when I was trading um, Macy's, I was like, okay, good note on that. And again, the only reason we're in Macy's is because we thought that it would have some pullback there um, with JWN. But when JWN flies, Macy's does as well. All right, Brendo, uh, good, good list today on the watches, man. Great work today. Uh, let's go over and see what you're talking about now. Guys, yeah, we'll touch on uh, the crypto markets today. A uh, bit of a quiet note. We are positive on the session, so that's good to end off the week. But uh, more uncertainty coming in the form of this headline this morning. They made it official. There was rumblings of this earlier in the week, but they made it official. Genesis with the bankruptcy uh, filing. But yeah, both uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin pretty steady here, even with that news, uh, Ethereum back to the upside. Uh, right now, in fact, we just took out that last little pivot there on the hourly chart, same story for Bitcoin. Bit of a rejection at 21,200, but both, as I mentioned, positive on the day. Nice look, 1.34 Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, 1.8% uh, to the upside, 1565, 21, 154. Bit of a mixed board, otherwise, remember, big move down yesterday, basically from 88 to the bottom here was uh, four, five, six, seven percent plus. Uh, so a nice little bounce here to end off on a Friday, guys. Yeah, I feel like I haven't looked at crypto enough. And it's, it's one of those days, like, you know, you, you have a plan of action. That's sort of what allows you uh, to have your focus. Because you know where the levels are going to be. You set your stop orders and you're good to go. Um, there, was a, there was a break on Coinbase at 51, and that was a key level yesterday. If anything... When I see a wick top like this, a lot of times I'd be thinking, hey, you short a wick top at 51 even. My preferred thing is if I see any weakness in, in Coinbase is just see what Silvergate is doing because it's probably giving you an even better setup. And the problem with Silvergate is it just absolutely blew through the level I was playing off of the last couple of days. And until it gets to 14, 25, I don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. It's got like a bazillion share short interest. And why do I have a... Oh, that's, that's not right. a bad amount. Oh, it's, it's like 58%, the short interest on... No, seriously, it's like 58% on Silvergate. Oh, so yeah, when yeah. it starts going, you want to be very patient with those shorts. No way Hellbriz broke 25. Okay. What? Well, what? I didn't think that the was downside? happening. Downside? Yeah, I didn't think that was happening anytime soon. So mm -hmm. uh, remember when we were like 25? Okay, well, the breakout 30 got to 35. The reload 30, we actually got a reload here like 29 and a half. Was able to get some 32. Then lost as it broke 28. And now it's beneath that 35 number. So remember I said what goes up must come down, but not me, Clown? Um, yeah, this is what happens to some of these names, man. 25 was that like obvious sort of line in the sand there. I never ended up getting the long off 25, but when you chase these breakouts, have yourself an out the entire way. Because when they flush, they really flush. And this is going to happen like GNS did the same thing. GNS is now at 320. Um, what's that, the LYT? That's the one we were just talking about. I'm not saying LYT is going to flush, but that just halted. Now it rejected. Remember I was saying watch out for that two break? Okay, so broke two, trapped everybody because it couldn't get past 210, and now it's halted down. That's why I'm not in this stupid thing buying highs like we were doing on GNS a couple of times. Doesn't mean it can't go. However, you got to watch out for these retracements because the faster they go up, the more dangerous it is on the way back in. All right, guys. Um, yeah, again, like I hope you're just getting like a lot of these, like Neil's dropping these little nuggets there of information. Um, and, you know, that's just, this is what you guys got to do, man. Watch out, trade those hell business, trade all that stuff. If it's in your wheelhouse, those are great stocks. Um, all right, Meta for some reason just tanked. Uh, so let's go over, come on, chart, let's load this up. Uh, there it is, man. We just got a 137.25, so we got to watch out here. Our Meta... So I'm not, because I don't understand, like the market's holding up right now and Meta just fell down pretty That's good right. right there. So I do have an average price of 28. That's fine. We're not putting on the shares, like I said already. Remember when we got this break and it didn't, and I was like, you know what? It's in the middle of the day. We don't necessarily want this break right here. Well, we wanted the break, but I was like, the risk, the reward was a little high, so we didn't put on big shares. But then it came back into 137 where we had a spot that we could sort of respect. And that's where we, we you know, we got more shares than when we went up 
to the upside, we're able to ring that register for a dollar, right? Now you're coming back in and there's that 137 again. So, um, you know, th these are levels that we wait for. We look for these levels to come through. So if this takes down that 137, then we're gonna get out. We do have one more reload at 137 flat. And then I'm just gonna cancel my offer. My offer used to be down here at 136.50. That's where the 200 period is. I'm gonna try to respect like a little bit higher than that. Um, I mean, good reload. We just got 28s. It's back to 48, so can't can't hate on that price. Uh, but I'm still thinking higher. And if we're thinking higher, then we gotta protect the downside as well. So I'm gonna put it in about about halfway here. I mean, why not just wait? Uh, let's just. Let's just wait, we've done really well. Let's wait for this break, let's keep our stop in. Let's wait for that break of 136.50. Just keep it there and see what's happening. We just, I mean, we just got a reload right now and it's 30 cents back into the money. So let's hold out faith here on Meta and see if it can hold the highs until we break this 50 period uh, right there. So I'm, as I'm speaking, I'm changing my, my, my trade plan here. So um, yeah, 136.50 is what we're gonna wait for there on Meta. If that comes in, we'll take the L on it, but so far so good holding it. Uh, next piece to get out, Right around there, we just topped out at 75. Let's put an offer at 75. Yeah, and just so what just happened on the Nasdaq here this is kind of crazy. Like we just got to one 11.5. I almost said one five. 11.5, and just had that little pullback. So I went over to Tesla again, breaking 131. Can't really get to the high of the day, and already pulling back here. So at least a little bit of concern that we're going to have a bit of a dip here. Um, people, I saw some people saying hell biz isn't done yet. I'm not saying it's done yet. Like that. I don't want to get it sort of twisted. Like the stock, it just started going today. You can easily, you could very easily have a breakout. Like look at the break. The break was at 20 cents this morning. When I think when Sean was talking about this, the break was at 20 cents. If it holds 20 cents and just goes sideways between 20 and 25 all afternoon, then it probably is going to have a secondary move. I'll be right with you uh, thinking that's going to happen. As a matter of fact, I'll probably be long if that's the case. However, these pullbacks can be sharp, and sometimes the second move isn't until the next day, which would be on Monday. So you just got to be patient with this. It doesn't mean it's dead. It's just that for a day trader, that reversal was pretty, pretty hectic. I wanna, I'm going to be out. All that being said, I will be all out of this short if it gets to 20 cents. No question about it. That, that's a great terminus point. Um, Roblox, I'm really starting to think about that, that 35 level. And what are we really going to get there? Because I was just sitting in front of 3480. That's a 15. Let me go to my three minute for a second. I was just sitting in front of that 80 or above that 80 level. It's pulled back another time. What I'm going to do here is just out of, out of, out of an abundance no, of like caution, I'm just going to take something out in the middle of this range. That rejection on the NASDAQ to me signals you could, let me just actually just hit the bid. Um, th that signals that you could have a deep pullback and a rejection of a key level. And if that happens and we go all the way back into 34 for potential dip buy, I want to make sure I got something out in the middle of this range. We can still get to 35 or it can still get to 35. Uh, Alibaba, it can still break 120. But look what's happening here. Another stock sort of rejecting that top. So I hate to say it, I'm getting out of Alibaba. And as I say that, it's like cross wow, the spread. Macy's, I'm getting out of Alibaba. I just think we're going to get a bit of a dip pullback. And if it holds a higher low here, I can always just get back in on a 120 break. There's always another opportunity to get back into the trade. We did. I'm not, this is not the 118. This is now the 119 that we had. The 118 paid you all the way to like 119 half. The 119 trade I still think is valid on a bit of a dip buy. I'm not happy with Macy's till it's at like 2250, right? Like I had 80 was an average price. It'll show my average price at 88. My average price is 80. I'm risking 25 pennies on that trade. So it needs to get down to like the 50s and 60s before I can be happy in any respect with that trade. Uh, Brendo and Sector Watch now. Hey guys, yeah, brought to you by Stock Odds. Get 10 of the highest probability stock ideas from the S&P 500 delivered straight to your inbox. Every morning, try the top 10 odds daily from Stock Odds. Uh, check out the link for 10% off at the bottom of the screen. Uh, before we get into the uh, board here, I want to show you this. We are under 100 away from 375,000, guys, if you haven't done so. There are actually quite a few new viewers with us this morning. So uh, if you haven't done so, make sure you uh, hit subscribe, hit like, come join us every single day that the market is open. So uh, under 100 to go to 375, bit of a milestone for us on YouTube. That's the way the S&P 500 is setting up right now, half percent. 
back in positive territory, as we've been mentioning. Uh, a lot of the communication stocks, the reason for that, Goog and Goog L here, 5% and 5.15%. If you're wondering, it's just different class of shares for GOOG and GOOGL. Netflix, the big one, 6.5% to the upside matches here. MTCH, TTWO, CHTR to name a few. Uh, banks, strong as well. SIVB, a report today. 12% individual banks leading the way, in fact, as far as gainers are concerned. This is the consumer discretionary group. No huge moves, but nicely positive. Same story for material stocks over here and energy at the bottom right as uh, oil creeps back to the upside as well. It's been pretty flat so far today for oil, but half percent right now for the S&P, guys. Couldn't stop at a better time. Let's go to our screens immediately, Pratt, if you can, please. Uh, right now, Alibaba is at 120. I'm going long on a break of 120. Uh, you, I mean, you could take the short and then just get out if it breaks it. Uh, I mean, we were talking about this level for a while there, so 120s come into play here uh, for Alibaba again. So there it is, huge move up from 118, just, just, just ramping here to 120. Let's see if that is the level of concern one more time here. Oh, by the way, Meta, I don't know what the heck's going on with this name, but it just dropped down pretty good. So now we're pretty loaded up now uh, on this name, and I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, you know, not great with it, but we are, you know, we're at 99s right now on Meta. So let's see if that does pay off here. Uh, right now it's down. We are going to get out if it drops a, do a dollar. If it drops to 136.50, that's our stop spot. So that's what we're going to get out on Meta if it does go back down. Sorry, here it is right here. Uh, Meta, we just averaged into that. We got that 136.70. So it is actually nicely back up to the upside. Let's take a piece out here at 90. I didn't even realize that it did dip down to 70 there. I mean, obviously that's where we got the trade. Now it's right back into that level again. So let's just be careful here with Meta. We just took another. We just took a piece out there at 89. Yeah, I don't know. Let's hold. Now I have an amount of shares I'm pretty happy with here. Um, let's wait to see what happens on a break higher. Uh, this is 136.40. That's a good target spot for me. Let's see if that happens. There goes there Alibaba Baba. on the break. Did it? Oh, okay. I got, I got it long too. I'm just gonna but get I got to long it. at 98. So yeah. how did that break? How did I get evens if it if it actually broke? That's it's all good. I, I want this trade regardless. No, I, I I just hate that trigger when it does that. It's it goes back down so fast. The algos retrace it so fast that you end up actually getting a price that's better than what you think you should. If it does this, I'm like immediately taking out half because I don't like traps. Um, traps suck. No one likes to get caught in a bit of a trap. But to me, when it wicks that high at nines, and I never even saw it, by the time I got the fill on the position, it was already, it was, it was, I was looking at 93s. I'm like, I'm long at one, 120 even, and the stock is at 93. So I'm going to take half out there on a breakout trade. Usually I want to have limited risk when you're buying those tops. And if it can hold, great. I can always re-engage. So it's holding above 120. When Baba gets going, there is no trouble getting back into position because it's basically program buying. But I just always get cautious when that happens. Oh, just want to go to hell biz because I said I'd be all out if it got to 20 cents. It just touched 21 there. So I have one leg left. If it gets to 20, I'm all flat. And I'm looking for that to hold that 20 level. If it can hold 20, I think there's going to be another long back into VWAP at some point this afternoon. But I want to see a consolidation first. This one's kind of giving up the ghost here. Uh, I'm not going to put a trailing stop on it. I'll just kind of watch it out of the side, uh, the corner of my eye, let's just say. But Baba right now is going to be the one I got to pay attention to. Because if it, if it just stopped, like I'm not the only person who trimmed here. Some people probably punched out altogether. So if it reclaims that 120, there's less resistance the next time. Yeah, I mean, Meta, I mean, we just went long on that name again, and now we're in the money seven, 40, 50 cents. We're in the money 70 cents or 40 cents from that long. Uh, but look what we have now, 136.75. Stay in your lane. We keep talking about that over and over and over again. It's like there's Meta. It came right in. And again, I, another trade that I'm just really happy that we have together. I mean, we talked about buying that dip. If it came into this 136.50 area, it did that. We got 73s, and I just took some out. Uh, 08s there, I think we got. We got an 05, sorry, is our, it's at 08 right now. 05 is our best trade, so that's that. I took some out in the flats here, 95. So cause I'm long 98. Like, I don't even know how. I, I guess it broke, but it came back so fast there that no problem. I'm trying to go long again uh, if it comes into here, like 60s or so, and then drop it out if it breaks through 50. So I still do like this, Alibaba trade, um, and I'm going to try to hold on to it, but definitely has a problem there. This could be our second L of the day. And um, look, for me, like I said, I've changed a little bit here. Normally, I would hold Macy's, you know, to get back here, but the way it's trading, I just got, like, again, like, look how good that out is, 85. 
Like we just got an 85 out to save us a little bit there, right? So um, that's the kind of trade that I put on for Macy's. I, I still want to hold. I don't have any more bids. I still like the fact that what Neil's talking about there, back into the 50s, if it can get there. But honestly, I, I understand that this was a bad one, so I'm going to try to get out of it almost as fast as I uh, can if it comes back down again. So now, if it comes into the 80s, we'll reassess it. But I did put that 85 there. It was where the 50 period is, so we did get out. Again, you know what? Regardless of how bad our trade was early right there, that was 15 cents. It's kind of the whole range. I would love for this thing to start to move a little bit more here. I just don't know if it's going to. So we're going to have to watch out here for Macy's. Uh, again, it's been a tough trade today for me anyways. We did hit that short. We should have waited for 23 to begin with, and we didn't. So we're sort of licking our wounds on that one. Yeah, it's still... It's got time to go, but that 23, it does look like it wants to break. The question I have with Macy's at 23 is do I want to reverse it? I just can't bring myself to go long off that 23 level. But then Roblox, you looked at a key level. It was worth the reverse after all. Baba is, a, look, this is always concerning when it does a top break like this. So I, gr I jumped out of half because when it makes this test at that upper consolidation, so this out was like the last of the 19s, guys. Uh, and then when we get back in at 20s, I'm getting half out there at 80. And if it can hold here, great. But I don't, wanna, I don't want it to wick bottom through this consolidation level. And then it's like, oh, yeah, just jump out. I want to have something that I can kind of hold on to that if it doesn't fall through, I can jam back into it then have the top if it makes another run at that high of the day. So that's kind of my thought process on Alibaba. All this while, um, remember, like, all this while, like Intel got all the way back to VWAP and sort of waiting for it to break VWAP to get out. So this is what Intel looks like. As everything was breaking out, Intel, as usual, doesn't break the high of the day. Now it's red, and if the market wants to continue to fall, Intel's going to yesterday's low. And well, I, if, like I said, if the market falls, from here all the way back down into support, then I think Intel should get to its low because it's relatively weak. Shouldn't speak in certainties. Prad's been calling me out. I say it all the time, don't speak in certainties because then you'll think in certainties as well, which is a ridiculous thing to do because nothing is certain. Um, it's an easy way to tell if, you're, if your thought process is a little bit too jaded because if you have too strong of a bias, you don't see the alternatives. And I, I never want to be thinking that way. I always want to understand where am I wrong? Why am I wrong? How can I, how can I improve? And if you think that something's 100% going to happen, then you end up like that person that went all in on the Jags. Or sorry, that went all in um, against the Jags on the Chargers and essentially lost, it was like a million dollars to try and win 14,000 because they were up 27-0. Nothing in life is certain. The only thing that is certain is Meta Longs. No, I'm just joking. Uh, right there, we talked to Nether Long right there. Now we're 25 cents in the money again uh, here for Meta. I, I, like, I say this tongue in cheek, but it's like, you know, it's holding those levels. So it's 1048. The market's doing absolutely nothing. So we put on our scalper hat and uh, bank, bank these trades. Uh, so there it is again. We're, we're still going to get out if it breaks lower, but let's just put the profit where it lies right now in our pocket uh, for the day. As I said, we're going to end the show hopefully at our highest spot it's going to be meta dependent here as the only losing trade that we've given so far today well actually it's baba dependent baba's not doing anything right now at 119 uh right now but the only losing trade was that macy's which we're getting some money back on that as we speak so uh let's go meta uh let's see if that one wants to work i wanted to bring up the chips you just mentioned intel there again but like normally i'd be all over amd you guys know how much i love amd it's uh, that and microsoft are my two favorite stocks it's kind of turning into meta meta i think i might have I said I would do this, and I should should do it to find out what stock was my number one stock last year. Uh, but look at AMD, guys. I mean, absolutely nothing today. Like, just not moving around, not doing that much at all. So uh, right now, this is AMD right now to that downside. Maybe it's it's only up 0.75 against a 1% market. So I can see that uh, coming through. Oh, super chat. Let me see what this is all about right now. Jose Mercado, can y'all confirm Ryan Cohen? Yes. Confirm him for what? He like exists. His, like his, no, I his I, baptism? I, I know or? what this is. Um, there, Jose, you sent a super chat earlier, and, and thank you for sending this again. I know you, you sent confirmed. one earlier wh whether Ryan Cohen owned a large stake in ATER. I remember reading something about him, own, him being involved like months, like last year. Um, I want to say it was in the spring. Maybe it was in the summer. I'm not sure. I just asked Brendan if there's anything new going on with... Ryan Cohen and ATER, so I don't want to speak on something that I don't know about, but um, thank you for the super chat, but it, it was with regards to ATER and whether he owned a stake in it. Of course, people pay attention um, when you talk small caps or those types of names, and uh, Mr. Cohen. Hold on a second. Oh, he's calling me. Hello, Ryan Cohen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was you. It was short. 
Okay, you exist, perfect, done. All right, all right, so he's good. He's good to go there, guys. Wasn't sure if it was him, had to confirm that. Uh, but thank you so much, Jose, for that super chat. And there you go. Uh, we will confirm it, all jokes aside. Um, and I know you're just trying to get a spike in ATER, so let's just see it right now. Thanks I'm gonna for, say it's not Thanks moving. for the super chat there uh, for that. So let's go over here and have a quick look at it. Yeah, man, I mean, it's moving oh, up. So if Ryan okay. Cohen's in it, where is he selling it is really the question. Uh, nice move to the upside here. ATER really has been blasting. It's funny, because some people were messaging me on Twitter and stuff and saying, yo, ATER. ATR, ATR, um, and this was a couple days ago, so shout out to all you guys uh, that have really ran this one up, uh, or I don't know if you've ran it up, but it's been run up to the upside right now. ATR, congratulations to all the longs. You guys win again on that one, and we win over here on Meta, because there it is. We just get a nine, an 87 out, or 86 out there, 87, I believe. Now up to 91. We're long at 56. It's just another 40 cent winner, so that's all good on that one, as Macy's trying to come back in, and then Alibaba's putting me to sleep. I might just get out of this one. But let's go over to Brendan, with, you know, my favorite segment, it's Money Talks. Maybe we got to convert our CAD over to some USDs right here. Hey guys, yeah, I was just double checking this. Uh, Ethereum, I can show you this as well. Uh, this was earlier in the week, but they did increase their guidance uh, off of, uh, it was up 42% earlier in the week on guidance increase as well. I don't see anything new as far as Ryan Cohen is concerned, but I will keep digging. Here is the currency board so far today. Back to the downside right now. Anyways, we were up about half a percent at one point this morning for the dollar index, 102.1 currently. Still green on the day, but uh, not really doing a heck of a lot. Uh, as are the rest of these. Japan downside big way, more data coming out overnight for uh, the Japanese economy that wasn't good, so down 1%, 76.95. Remember, it had a big rally going back to the end of last month. Green for the most part, top to bottom, including Australia and New Zealand. Still down on the week for both of these after uh, data missed expectations throughout the week. So just a bit of a bounce uh, to end things off. But the euro, the Canadian dollar, and the dollar, very rare to see all three positive right now, guys. Uh, so Tesla just came out. Well, I'm not in Tesla anymore, so that, that'll update. That Tesla broke 130. That was my, my entry price. I got like 131s. It couldn't break 132, so uh, I'm going to be out of that one. The shorts are starting to come in a little bit here. And you can see, like, if Tesla doesn't hold here, I mean, you're thinking about these pre-market lows or maybe yesterday's close at 127, at least for a bit of a dip buy. All I got is Intel. I still have a piece of Hellbiz to the short side, but that's negligible at this particular point. So it's just Macy's and Intel to the south side. Um, Alibaba is still challenging the 120 top, so it's trying to go. I, what I like about, what I actually like about the chance for this is the market's now pulled back a second time off that top, the NASDAQ, the ES is pulled back as well. But the Chinese ADRs, at least this one, is holding on to strength. So I'm looking for an opportunity, like if it takes out another, if it takes out the high here, at 120, like 09, so I guess like tens or so, I'd probably just buy more shares because Baba looks like it wants to be relatively strong. I know Xpeng was making some power moves, but that kind of subsided here. So when I look at these Chinese ADRs, it feels like Baba is easily the strongest one. I haven't checked out Pinduo Duo, so I could be wrong about that 100%, but I just look at the relative strength in Baba and I like that one to add. Roblox is coming back into VWAP, but that's I was getting concerned when it couldn't get to 35. We got out some more shares at 34.60. Now it just has to come right back into 34 even. That's the only place I want to buy the dip on Roblox. We'll give it another shot. It was such a good level. And always when in doubt, zoom out. Like it was such a good level yesterday that I do want to give it another opportunity at that particular price to buy the dip and see if it can churn higher. Market's up 1%, so I feel like we still have a chance to go a little bit more here but we could be running out of some steam. And I said if Hellbiz could hold that bid at 20, I'd start looking for longs. H -H HLBZ. Yep. Why do I? I've done that like three times today. I keep typing HBLZ for some reason. Anyway, that's just me. Um, if it gets down to 20, <sighs> that you could catch a little bit of a bid and there can be some longs. Well, I still have a piece of it. I'm just going to get that out because at this point, I am actually thinking about where the long is going to be on this. It's managed to hold the breakout price. It's still in that channel, 25 into 20 even. So if I can catch a long off 20, I want to give myself some room to be able to do that here on Hellbiz. <clears throat> ah, limbering up over here. Uh, okay, guys, Alibaba just rejected 120 again. I'm going to take the long if it does break that level, but it doesn't look like it wants to do that. So we'll take another long somewhere in here and then get out if it breaks lower. I'm just going to see it did reject pretty good there um, at 120 again. So I took another piece out. 
uh, just holding now like 20% of that position to begin with. So we'll wait to see if Baba wants to go back. And if it breaks, I'm going long again. So um, that's that's my plan of action on that stock. Wait to see if that comes through. Uh, Macy's rate again, man. Let's go awesome. Take on that again uh, down here. Let's see if it uh, continues to hold this level. If it does, fine, whatever. We're, we're getting out of this uh, as it goes down and sort of licking our chops on that one. That's going to be our only loser today. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, again, that Macy's trade is completely irrelevant at this point because the damage that's been going on here on Meta. Like, we, we're, we're long again now. This is another 70 cent winner here for Meta. And these are reloads, man. Like, you could say, oh, I'm holding something, and you know, you're talking about, oh, it's still the same 20 cent winner. These are brand new. This is brand Nubian right here. Nice little move to the upside as it goes 130. Like, look look at this. This is a monster move. 137.50, what the hell? I'm not gonna wait for 137.50. I'm just gonna punch out right now. There it is, man. Wake up. There's another 80 cent win right there for Meta. So yeah, we are really ringing the registers back and forth here over and over and over again. I'm sure we have probably 1,400 graduates behind us right now. All they had to do was take Google. All they had to do was take Meta today. Um, we could take Alibaba even short uh, off 120. Would have just paid pretty good right there. But here it comes again, 120 break. Let's see how far we go now on this level, man. Today has been another good day. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Hit the like button. I haven't, we haven't even done this yet today, looking to see how many likes we have. 1.7k unbelievable we should have a lot more than that 7,000 people watching thank you so much let's see if we can get to 2k before we end the day thank you so much for watching neil and i are going to be back uh hopefully with some good trades obviously it's friday we'll see how the volume is at the close but we'll be back here uh in these exact desks uh for you uh, as right now meta is just still bouncing around at two o'clock i'm getting ready to throw it to the midday guys here uh luca and sharif yeah, just a couple of minutes to go, and then we'll be, like, like Sean said, we'll be out of here. Uh, we'll see what happens with some of these other like, low-cap names. I, I mentioned Hellbiz for the bottoms, but I, I do want to acknowledge that, G, uh, that GNS as well. It's still falling here. Now, $2 was a pretty big level for it, so there's always a decent chance it can find some support. But this is, what I, this is like the poster child for what I was getting at, right? Like, you chase these moves here. Like, it basically churned through everything. Like, the only place where it kind of held up was at $4 for a little bit, and it tried to bounce off 4 and now it's in complete freefall mode. And you don't want to catch a falling knife. I think you want to see it catch a bid, maybe start thinking about the longs. I should have been looking short, like a $5 break. It's like, you know, hindsight's 2020. I should have been looking for a short off that level. I was not. Now it's all about Alibaba and the fact that it does not want to carry through that break. If it gets through that 120 again, fine. I still like it, but I don't want to hold this past 119.50. That's why I got out half at like when it broke and I got out half at 80s. If it's a fail break, you don't want to get too trapped at the top. I'll give some back if it holds 119. If it holds 119.50, great. If it doesn't, we're just going to get out. I'm um, going back over to the thing that started everything this morning, yet I haven't even made a single trade in this. Uh, Netflix, right, right back into 334. So it looked like it was going to join the rest of this party to the upside. I still like a one shot kind of a bounce off that 332 level. It just never set up for me, so I never got into this one to the long side. I'm going to take my shot if it gets into 332. Still 3 or $4 away, but I have Netflix on the brain. You don't have to trade it if it doesn't set up. And Netflix just never set up. If it, if it bounces off 32s, that's what I'll look for. I just almost got out of all of hell, hell biz there, but I did not get it all out. As that one is starting to head back into the upside, uh, just going to go back over to HLBZ. And there it is. Oh, I, just, oh what? I had an offer at 25. I didn't want that. See, there's another thing. If you don't want to fill, it's like, I, you know what? I didn't get my complete fill. That's what happened. I didn't get the full fill at 25. must have got a partial. And then it just came back, and the rest of that order was still sitting in there. I'm getting out. I want it on the way back down, not on the way back up. All right, Alibaba, we're reloaded again. Look at Meta right now. Sorry I said um, that we were only in the money 80 cents. We're in the money $1.20 right now uh, as it's starting to blast up to the upside right there. And I just tweeted out, man. Oh, and I just want to say, someone said, where can you find the sticky note? You can find it in uh, at Trader TV, Sean, on Twitter there if you guys want to check this out. And I also just did, man. Thank you so much, Giancarlo, all this. This is the thing here, man. There's always so much love in the chat. So we go strong on that one. I work hard and play hard in these markets. It's great when our trading community is also as dedicated, man. You guys have given us some huge, huge names uh, today and some great ideas as well, including that Hellbiz and including the rest. There goes Alibaba right now, so we did get that reload. I, I told you I wanted to be here for that trade. Um, let's see, let's put an offer here. You know, 
in the high 80s if we can get it. We're long at 71. Um, and then let's put another one uh, in the mid 90s. We have, we have a decent position right now. Let's go. Uh, if we can go back up. I know we have to go to the midday show, but honestly, uh, right now, there it goes now. We are in the money now, Baba, 20 cents. Let's see if it can. I'm going to take one more piece out here as there it is. We'll take another piece out at 85. Nice little take here on Alibaba to close the show, man. Uh, wow, there it is, man. Good, good reload. Let's see if it's a good one or not, uh, as we'll see if, if Alibaba wants to go through 120. And hopefully we're getting this out around 121 or 122. Meta still, guys, still climbing. And by the way, there's Macy's again. Another out. So, you know, so far so good. All right. Cut the music and let's go over to the midday show. Thanks, Neil, today. A great show. Thanks, Brendan, again for dropping some of that news. Fahad, good job. Prad, I already preached your... Uh, Preached your uh, praise Praises. here today as well. Uh, thank you so much to Pratt and everything he's doing for the show. Um, and then, yeah, we're getting ready to go. It's midday time, baby. It's Vegemite it's time, Vegemite not day. for me, maybe for them. Uh, and we're going to get ready to rock and roll. It's the scalp demon over there and the professor. Let's go to the midday show. Thanks, guys. Never touching that Vegemite again. Never. I'm Sharif. That's Luca. Never this again. is the midday show, baby. Uh, we're at day's highs on the ES March contract. We're printing. Meta's near day's highs. Microsoft's near day's highs. And guess what? GNS, that big mover from yesterday, well, it's given up the ghost. It's down. It just broke down below, t uh, yeah, below three. Uh, so a lot moving today, guys. We got small cappers. We got big cappers and everything in between, Luca. Oh, yeah, lots of things moving. <clears throat> Exciting day. It's Friday. You know, Sharif was saying this morning he's excited that it's Friday. I think there's, there's room for both. There's room on both sides. You know, you can be excited because it's Monday because you're a trader. And you can also be excited when it's Friday because the weekend. Then you get to relax and spend exactly. time with family and friends. Guys, just a heads up. Alibaba is now testing and looking like it wants to break that 120 to the upside. So I kind of took the long, scalped a little bit out just in front there holding uh, still a good portion of this, looking for a move up. I mean, this is kind of weird, right? We just kind of spent some time there, broke it, quick pop in reverse. I think Neil covered that. And then uh, here we are again. This feels like we want to go. And then when we do go, we probably get like a 50 cent pop here. So I am uh, basically waiting for that to happen. My average is 87s, but I almost feel that, you know, risking off the low here, which is 11960s, you know, it should not get back there if, if we are going to break and go. So. Yeah, let's see what happens there. Hopefully that one, uh, you know, continues to be good and pops to the upside. Uh, you know, GNS, small cap of the day. I'm sure you guys were watching this one. This thing just crazy, crazy. Like coming into today, seeing where it oh, was morning. and you're getting that, that over under five action and now just kind of, you know, bleeding to the downside. Uh, I don't know, man. This thing, uh, you know, where's the bottom? I have no idea. You know, maybe it does get to that 250 area from yesterday. Uh, and the shorts were cheap on it. They weren't ridiculously cheap. I they thought were, it was going to be a lot more based on the yeah, move it me had too. yesterday. Me, me to too, me too. I, I did think it would, uh, uh, you know, it's, I, I never understand the logic with uh, the pricing on shorts. I mean, it does come down to float availability, but I want to say that GNS float is 10 million and uh, up so much, uh, relatively cheap, relatively cheap. Yeah, I mean, bad. cheap for us. I'm not sure about you guys, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, cheap on our side. I feel like we got the uh, we got the best best deals in town. Yeah, though, shout out day to trade shorts. the world, man. Yeah, every every stock sure. is essentially sh shortable. I mean, I haven't run into too many that weren't. I'm sure one or two pop up every now and again, guys. All right, so let's talk about uh, the trades. So, GSN GNS. Sorry, the idea here was real simple. I communicated <laughs> to my buddy Max yesterday, and I told Brendel this morning, I'm going short, and I'm going to wait for the break of VWAP, a consolidation sideways, and a move down. The plan was simple and the plan was executed. So the idea was, all right, you know, let's see if we get a real aggressive move back into VWAP. And the problem was on, on P Pro 8 and my other platform, VWAP wasn't the same. And, and on a $4 stock, it makes a difference, okay? Because we're talking like 10 pennies here. So to me, I had to make sure that everything was jiving. Jived, and I basically got in at this <coughs> low point right here. It was around 390. Now. This is where it made its retracement back into VWAP. And I'm like, okay, so I'm committed to the trade. I know where my levels are. I know where my outs are. I'm adding, I'm gonna add incrementally, not all at once, up into that retracement into VWAP. And that's what I did. And then you had a big move down. I, I scalped out a little bit at my initial entry point because I had added basically four times. So, sorry, three times. So I had a basically, uh, what did I have? A 50% position at this point. I'm like, all right. So I waited for that. 380 break, and that's where the, I took the majority of the profits all the way down, and then basically got out everything 
at that 340 and the 330 area. So it was basically a, a nice little simple trade. This one, I was watching it last night at home on my platform. I watched this one go into 8 o'clock. It was near day's highs at 8 p.m. yesterday into the close. I mean, it had a quick retracement down, but this one had all sorts of legs. And so I, I thought today, you know, this was a little risky. And then I, even my buddy, uh, Max, back there, he's like, I'll see you at $12. Good luck with the short, right? So uh, this one ended up working out, pumped about that. Uh, the other one that I had on my radar and that I'm still actually watching is, is this Edu, this Chinese uh, education play. We saw this one move up yesterday, like I think it was up 10, 20%, something like that, and it retraced. We had this one short, and look at this big move this morning, right at the bell. All that selling comes in, 40, 47 and a quarter. We make our way down all the way to 43 and a half. Uh, but here's the thing, we're, we're kind of making that flat bottom that I like, right? So initially, if you got short here, you probably added a VWAP, and now you're waiting for the bottom to fall out here at that 47 and three quarters. At least that's what I'm looking for. So I don't know if I'm gonna add into this position at the moment. I wanna see first if it retraces into VWAP. So I'll be waiting for it at VWAP, and I'll be waiting for it below 40, 43 and three quarters. That's my play on EDU. It's a bit slower on volume today, so careful with the liquidity, but it's still there, a lot of eyes. Uh, on it. You heard Michael Noss talk about it this morning as a continuation play. It looks like it was, ended up being the other way around. And then how can we go uh, without mentioning these big caps? I mean, yesterday, I don't know if you guys heard on the closing show, but I was, I was doing all sorts of yelling because I was long this Netflix position and it ended up paying. I'm still holding my meta position and meta is having a day. 138.37 is a high, 137.88 is uh, where we're currently trading at. You saw Sean trade that this morning. And it looks like, you know, a big retracement there, but bouncing back to uh, day's highs. Microsoft is also on my radar. Look at that. Now it's got an upward channel after making basically a, a 90 degree move up. Now we're getting a nice little range that we can trade here. This is a Microsoft three minute chart, by the way, okay? So we're very range bound, but we're range bound on the way up. So this isn't really a consolidation. This is more of like an uptrend. So. Play these, uh, play these ranges until there's a breakout or breakdown, I guess, right? And we're very close. I mean, personally, I would not play the short on an uptrend, okay? And that's one thing I was reading about yesterday in, in the, the CMT materials. Basically, it was like, look, yeah, it, there is a channel here that's developing, but you don't want to play the short on an uptrend. Play, play the long on the, on the uptrend. Play the short on the downtrend. And so I think I'm going to stick to that, that rule. So I'm looking at Microsoft as well. And uh, yeah, basically that's it, Luca. Um, you know, let's see how it uh, pans out the rest of the day. Why are you giggling? Uh, no, no uh, guys, I'm gonna be scalping Alibaba around the 120 level. I just feel like as long as it wants to stay around this level, I feel like I can uh, bid and kind of offer uh, 120s and then wait for that break to the upside. Will be great if it comes to fruition. Um, we'll see what happens. And again, playing off that 1960, which could break. I mean, it's Alibaba. The thing kind of can flush 20 cents. I'm sure if you guys are watching the tape, you're kind of noting that as well. So for myself, I'm sort of adding into this dip, and then hopefully uh, we actually pop uh, back and get a 120 test again. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Something that surprised me today was Netflix. Netflix, uh, you know, obviously coming off earnings, everybody asking about it yesterday, looking at it yesterday. You know, nice move to the upside. Market had that right. Uh, and heads up, NVIDIA double top uh, 171 coming from Neil over there. Um, you know, Netflix mm -hmm. popping to the upside, uh, you know, in line with the market's expectation of the move. And I do want to say that this is pretty interesting. The high of the move was call it around 345. The high of today, 344. The fact that Netflix could not get over, um, you know, 350, which is on the daily, a, a pretty big level over there. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting how we sort of opened lower, ran to 345, reversed the whole move, and then back to pre-market lows over there. So I think that was a good look over there. Um, you know, the fact that we ran up to this level, you know, that's 10% move, give or take, and then kind of faded and retraced basically more than 50% of that move uh, in the aftermarket. That was, uh, that was pretty interesting. That was pretty interesting. And then now up, I'm basically looking to fade Netflix. If we can get back over 340, I do like the shorts kind of 340 going into um, the high. I don't want to see this kind of break the, the previous high. Uh, but again, I, I'm not too sure because the flip side scenario to this while I'm looking at this is the fact that it kind of shows you that it wants to go up. Positive earnings beat, shows you that it wants to go up, comes back down, 
holds the pre-market low. Now, do we actually trend up for the rest of the day? So there's kind of two ways to look at it. I'm, I'm kind of going to react to whatever, whatever sort of happens there. I'm not really too sure, but I guess first first step is to is to really just get over VWAP there. So I mean, this is the uh, the one minute, little bit little bit of a cleaner look. Uh, you know, how many times do we see the setup where things you know run up, run back down, hold the pre market low, and then sort of just kind of float for the rest of the day? So I'm kind of indifferent uh, long to short. I just feel like if we dip into 335s, I like the long. If we get into you know 42s, 43s to the upside, I like the short for kind of scalp uh, scalp back down. But we'll have to see. Volume is, I want to say, lighter than it could be. Um, but obviously things could be better. But things could always be worse, right? So keep that in mind. Market is ripping to the upside, man. Yeah, 3950 is, is coming into play. Uh, hopefully, you guys got some longs on board. Nvidia days highs, Luca. I don't know yeah. if you're interested in that kind of uh, that kind of look there. Yeah, 171.35 right now. Nice. Days highs on Nvidia. I mean, I don't really usually usually trade these uh, microchips. Let's bring it in here. Give me a second. Let me get a chart for you guys here. I had a chart. Where was the chart? Uh, okay. So I guess I'll have to do a new chart then. All right. So let's bring in this. Oh goodness. Can you take over for a second? I'm having all sorts of issues over here. Yeah, sure, no problem. Thank so you. yeah, Nvidia is. Um, let's see if this wants to. Yeah, Nvidia breaking the high of 171 there. I don't know if I'm. This is a. This is a very very like tight kind of range that it was in. If anything, I would have said you know maybe kind of short off that level. But I'm glad that I kind of late to pull this up here. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting if it comes back through. Then there's lots of room back to the downside. But the key levels that I see here, 170 obvious, 169, and what I mean even dollars are pretty. You know, VWAP is just below 170, so yeah, maybe it does want to get back there. Um, Alibaba, I think, dipped into that 119.60, at which point it's holding for the time being. i uh, not really sure if I want to get out of that. Oh, uh, yeah, traders behind us laughing. That's kind of funny. <laughs> I love um, it, man. We'll, see, we'll see how this level wants to hold for the time being. Um, and and go from there. Yeah, I guess Uber's breaking 30. So let's have a look here at Uber. Yeah, everything just kind of, uh, you know, with pumping, the market baby. pumping to the upside. Yeah, everything Pump sort it, of baby. pumping. I am going to get long Uber here for a small long. We'll see if this wants to keep going or not. If it goes great, then I'll scalp myself out of this. If it doesn't and kind of stops, then I will, uh, I will kind of reevaluate uh, and see what happens on that one. So, I mean, this could easily turn and then I'll just quickly get out of it. So we'll go from there. Uh, I want to see where Google is. Here I mean, as well. I think it bears looking at uh, the general market picture because it looks like we're making a general market move here. 39.48, guys. Uh, 75 is the high of day. Let's have a look at the four hour chart because, you know, we were at these levels just a couple of days ago before that big flush. Okay, so how much of that big flush have we retraced? Let's use some fibs. Why not? Let's, we're, we're live. Let's use some fibs. So let's go ahead and pull out the fib tool here. We were. Uh, this, that's the tricky part. So let's take the top end of the spectrum and wick it all the way down. So we've retraced like, you know, a third of the way. 39, I want to say 39, 60s would be kind of that 50% mark of that move that we made. Like we were high, like we made the high, the recent high back on the 18th, right? And then we had that aggressive move down. We had a continuation a bit yesterday and it looks like we're kind of curling a little bit, at least on the four hour chart. Have a look at that. We're curling a little bit up. If we close at these highs, obviously, I mean, we could retrace, but you know, uh, let's see if we can make another higher low here. That would be super good for the trend. We the bigger picture trend that we've been looking at on the daily chart. Let's have a look at that real quick. Uh, this is what I mean by higher low. So this was the retracement off the trend line last time. And this was the trough. And then look at that. So if we end here, we make an, a lower, a higher trough than the one previously. And that's what you want to look for for, an, for a trend. So that's what I'm seeing on that. Um, yeah, let's see if what we do with these futures. But I don't know if we have any actual resistance. Let's see where we stopped off on that big move down. Let's go back to the four hour chart for a second here. Okay, so where do we see a possible area of resistance? Okay, so this area is interesting. This happened back on the 9th and that was kind of a double top there at 39 and three quarters. So 39.75 could be an interesting area of resistance on our way up, possibly back maybe into 4,000, 4,025 where we were. So uh, yeah, it looks like the market's still pumping though, Luca. I mean, are you, how's that Uber looking? Uh, yeah, Uber, it's kind of slow. You know what, now that I'm looking at this, I'm just gonna get out of this and um, reevaluate that one. It's just not going as quickly as I'd like it to go. So we'll see what happens. I am starting uh, kind of fade play here on NVIDIA. The higher that it goes, the uh, I'm going to like scale into the short here. So we'll see if this wants to 
uh, Phil, and uh, we'll see playing off 172 there. YOLO and FOMO, NVIDIA, L, long at 168, 129, slash 169, SS at 171.83, don't scalp, laugh out loud. Um, yeah, I kind of, my play on this one is the fact that we went all the way up to 171 and then reversed very quickly. I just feel like maybe there's a chance that we go all the way up and then we reverse that move uh, back to the downside. So I'm giving myself room to add into this one. We'll see how it wants to go. Uh, yeah, NVIDIA is more of like a name that you don't want to necessarily scalp the way that I would maybe scalp an Amazon or an Apple. So I am going for the move back through 171 and then kind of, uh, you know, I would love to get 170 out if it wants to fail back there, but no idea what happens next. Market is uh, moving to the upside, so I'm uh, going to have to take that one uh, and see how it goes there. Alibaba is now just breaking down below the 1960 area, so I think I am going to um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add some here, yeah. I'm gonna add some here and then see if, if it breaks 1950, get the VWAP test, then I'll reevaluate um, and then go from there. I also want to check Google very quickly. Uh, this is kind of moving back to the upside, maybe getting the break of the 50 period. So let me just get long here as well. If we get through 97. Uh, I think we get a test of 97, you know, maybe a break, run into 97, and then back to the upside. Target on this one for myself would be around uh, 97.40s if we can get there. I'll reevaluate the ad through 97. I mean, the market's ripping. Things are looking good to the upside. So uh, the longs are good. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's add a little Ooh, bit more Google little here. Again. Yeah, add a little bit more Google here uh, for a pre-break. Instead of waiting for 97, I mean, it's probably going to break 97, so why not just get long right now? And then uh, see where this one wants to go um, if, if everything keeps going to the upside. Tesla through 130, which I know they covered that on the morning show. Uh, you know, yesterday going to 130 and reversing. And let me just quickly, and okay, what's going on over here? Uh, yeah, Tesla oh, yesterday yeah. reversing off that 130 level right in the morning, not breaking it. 129.99 was the high. And then go figure today, running, breaking 130, instantly 1,000 lots popping on the offer taken right away and then kind of spending a lot of time up here. Uh, you know, now VWAP is kind of right around where 130 is. Not really too sure what to think with Tesla, but I almost feel like the short could be good uh, above 130. So if we get back to, you know, 130, 30, or 131.30-ish area, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to take a short there on Tesla. So we'll see if that one wants to happen. Um, yeah, Alibaba pretty slow, giving a flush to the downside. I might, you know what, let me actually just get out of this Alibaba because I'll just reevaluate that one closer to 120 there if we do actually go back up. Uh, Quan Tran in the chat, what's going on, Quan? Saying, uh, put it on Luca's face when, uh, when you're looking at fibs. Um, it's not that I'm against them. I just, I, you know, as I just kind of, uh, I have my own kind of thoughts on them. But yeah, we'll say, we'll keep, I'll keep them to myself. Uh, Houdini, thank you for the super chat. Ear on the retracement. So I'm assuming you're talking about ear on the NASDAQ. Uh, price of $16. This thing, uh, yeah, I think you called it, and you were not wrong, man. Well, that I was just a nice took move. it, baby. You took it? Yeah, I just that, took money, it, money, baby. Money, there we money, go. Money, okay, money, so punched money, in. Money, uh, nice. The idea here was to Let's front go. run this, um, this high of day. I, you looked at the tape, man. You could just see that the, 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 the ass was getting eaten up, and the bitters were really, they were dominating. So I'm like, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to punch through, through 15 because I don't want it to be a higher, a lower high, and then we flush down into view up. I'm going to wait uh, to front run that high, which I, I ID'd kind of at 1560. I punched in 1550s, and then there we go, baby. Scalp, 1620. Scalp, 1640. So nice little uh, 60 and 80 penny winner right on ear. Um, remember when eyes and ears would both run together? Yeah. And there was really no reason, there was no correlation, like logical yeah. correlation, other than the fact that people like to say eye and e eyes and ears together. Um, so ear, we just print on that one. That's looking solid. Uh, before that, though, I was actually starting to look at oh Netflix. Netflix just reclaimed VWAP, at least on my chart. So, Aye. you know, the market's printing highs. 39.48 now is the high on the ES March contract. And so I said to myself, well, look, Netflix is relatively weak. Yeah, it's up 7%, but like, look at the, the chart pattern relative to the current chart patterns of some of these other big tech plays, most notably Meta. Another one, obviously, Microsoft. Google kind of giving it up a little bit, but these two are strong. They're near days highs. In fact, Microsoft's making days highs, but Netflix isn't. Why do you want to go long Netflix? Well, I just want to see what it's going to do because... I've been watching this one, and like I said on the morning show, I feel like it's been, there's been like long-term trends. You know, it like has V-shaped recoveries often. It's really bouncing off uh, key support levels. It's, it's been 
very predictable. I, I want to say, obviously, the last 15 minutes yesterday before the close don't count into my statement there. I'm talking about more of the, the long-term intraday trade. So I'm looking for possible long here to hold off Netflix, but you know, again, no biases. Let's see what it does. If it gives me the opportunity, great. Microsoft printing high of days. I've got no trade on that. I'm not going to punch in long at these highs. What else is there? There, you got a little bit of an uptrend here forming on Apple, I guess, with the overall market trend, but it's basically flat on the day. It's up 0.06%, which is nothing. This is the Apple three minute chart. Look at that big move down off the bell. Apple definitely not having uh, the kind of strength that you expect maybe from good earnings uh, from a big tech player like Netflix yesterday. And the chat saying, look at Netflix, look at Netflix. Yeah, we were covering it ad nauseum this morning, guys. So it's kind of made the move now and consolidating sideways. So, eh. We'll see what this one does. Yeah, I just need to fix my thing. Oh, really sure. Here, yeah, so yeah, I'll no worries. I'll keep going. Uh, what else we got on board here? I, I was looking at JWN as well this morning. Obviously, it had a negative catalyst and sold off aggressively. Uh, but look at this move back that it made. I mean, right off the bell, 1640 is kind of where we started out at. And then a big move up to 17 and three quarters, essentially. Uh, a retrace back to VWAP holds VWAP like a T. I mean, you could have taken the dip off there numerous times and really not gotten stopped out because it barely broke through it. And now it's making a, a move up to test high of day. So JWN still in play. The volume dropping off, obviously, a little bit. But, you know, it looks like the market's buying up these... Uh, any kind of news, good or bad, because obviously JWN saying that uh, their margins were stretched, they had to mark down their clothing uh, to move items, and you know obviously that's not what you want to hear if you're looking to test the strength of the consumer, because that means that obviously things are not being bought up. All right, let's see what the chat is up to. Amazon flying to the high side. Yeah, it's near high of days. 95.70 is the high. 95.48 is where we're trading now. Nvidia, somebody else saying, yeah, Luca was covering that. Let's bring in. Uh, the side chart here and having have a look at NVIDIA. Are we still at day's highs on that? NVDA, there we go. This is the three minute chart on NVIDIA. Okay, so 172.18 is the high. 171.53 is where we're trading now. Yeah, I don't got to play here either. I mean, it's either a reversal or you know, it's a retracement. In either case, none of, the, none of the requirements of my setup are on this at the moment. So. Let's see what the scanner is up to. LYT was moving this morning. This one halted multiple times. Let's bring in this and have a look. Okay, so we're back close to day's highs on this one. This is not anything that I'm interested in shorting at the moment at all uh, because it's above VWAP. It's been a halt candidate to the high side. It's continuously making higher highs, continuously making higher lows. So this is bullish uh, and there's really no point fighting the trend. So let's wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna say let's wait until, you know, I want to say mid-afternoon, maybe like early to late afternoon a little bit, uh, but until this one kind of gives up the ghost, makes its way below that one and three quarters, and then we'll start looking for consolidation sideways to take the short on LYT. Let's have a look at the one-minute chart, see if we can kind of get any a bit of a different view here. Okay, these halt levels are always really interesting to use. I don't know if they, uh, I haven't been following this uh, this. The, the price action on this stock today. So I haven't really got to see if the halt levels have really played in as key areas of resistance and support. It looks like on this occasion, they definitely did. You could have bought that dip uh, for good reward. In this case, not so much. Uh, neither in this, yeah, it's, it's a hit and miss here. It's more of just creating higher highs and higher lows uh, as, a as the trend goes up on LYT. So this one, I mean, you could probably, is it halted? Yeah, it is halted again. LYT is halted. <laughs> My goodness, 52.3 million shares, Luca, it's done on the day. Yeah, Halt Central over there. Uh, I'm just updating my charts. They're going to be black for today. I know there's some people in the chat that are like, oh, you know, why, why always white charts? Uh, why not black? So, yeah, they today, uh, today they will be black. Just a heads up, I am short Tesla now at 131.24. This, uh, and let me pull this up as I kind of load this. This is uh, kind of, that's the, the, the general area as to where I wanted to see this go. Um, you know, popping up, this is kind of my level that I'm looking at, just kind of, you know, 131 into sort of 131.50. Um, if this makes a high a day, then I'm going to get myself in trouble for sure, so I, I am not going to get too aggressive with that. Just patiently waiting now to see where this one wants to go. And let me pull up the fills here. Yeah, so short here. I mean, my expectation is that, you know, it did a little bit of barcode action before around here, before actually failing. So maybe we get that barcode action. So I want to cover this. 
um, you know, into uh, into 131, if not below that. So, yeah, we'll see if we get those fills there uh, and see what uh, what they want to do next. Google, I am still holding that long. It is, I mean, it's it's not go really not working. It's just very, um, and let me pull it up here. It's not that it's not working. It's just kind of hanging out over here. So I am patiently waiting uh, for this to break 97. And this looks pretty, I want to say this is pretty healthy. I mean, like the 97 level kind of consolidating below, you know, maybe get the pop and then start to, you know, make its way to 98. I would not be surprised if Google gets to 98 over there. So I'm pretty good on that position. We'll see what happens. Um, Shib sucks saying, do the opposite of what anyone suggests. You can do the opposite of the opposite, and then you'll find that it maybe yields the same results. Uh, you need to just kind of, uh, you know, yeah, roll with what works for you. That's the thing I'll say there. So I'm getting the first fill there on Tesla. Uh, first fill coming in at 131 and waiting at like 80s, around 80s for the rest of that fill there. Actually, you know what? Now that it's here, let me just get out a little bit more here. Uh, yeah, okay, great. That's perfect. And yeah, maybe we get a flush into the 80s where I'll just cover the rest and then uh, we'll see what happens on that one. I don't want to hold for like a big move on any of these things just because I feel like I'm going to lean into uh, what I've been doing well so far. So yeah, somebody, I think it was Ponzi Fonzi who was like, yeah, man, Luca Scalp, what's going on? So here we go, you know, taking the first <laughs> fill out of Google, um, aiming for 19s uh, to see if I can get those 19 fills. And then, yeah, I think, you know, 50s will be my best out, even though this potentially could get to 98s high a day. Um, I'll just reevaluate when we get back there. So hopefully that one continues to work. Tesla working for me, uh, definitely making up for the uh, Alibaba mishap. And uh, yeah, man, GNS, I have no idea where that is anymore, but it's probably done for the day, which is unfortunate, you know, because I was really hoping that this would spend time and go higher and stay higher because, uh, you know, it's a lot, always a lot of fun when these things go wild and do their thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's nice kind of on the way down too. Yeah, no, fun on the way up, fun on the way down. Yeah. Not fun when they do nothing. No, Juan yeah. Ayala once uh, is asking that you kindly have a look at the options for uh, uh, SE. Do you want to have a look at this over here? Oh yeah, I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna get to SE. So you yeah. can share Sharif's screen on yeah. this. Um, I know you're saying, you know, SE. What are your thoughts? Like, it looks like it's gonna explode to the upside. I think that I'm quoting you when you what you said in the chat yeah, there from that's before. What you said, yeah. So the first thing that stands out to me is the fact that this is already up 10%. This is a very very strong intraday move. And anytime I see a chart like this move to the upside, I just think, Go even though street. you have that 70 level up to the upside on the daily, and I'll pull it up in a sec you know, it's how much more is this actually going to go? That's basically the main question that I ask myself. So let yeah, me put, um, yeah, so we could talk about the options in a sec. But anyways, anytime you have a crazy move like this, like this is a, this is, I don't want to say too far too fast, but obviously very, very strong move um, to the upside, right? From 62 all the way to almost 70. And the reason I say 70 is because if you look at the daily on this thing, which I'm sure is what you were referring to, 70 is that sort of overhead um, you know, level that if we clear 70, it feels like this thing can go like 80s, 90s, 100. But the main thing that I want to mention is you know, anytime you get a very, very strong up move that comes into a resistance level, it probably slows down. So it probably slows down around that level, uh, you know, probably balances out. Maybe you get some sideways action. Keep in mind that this day, and this was when? This was um, November 15th. But this very strong up move was followed by a lot of nothing. A lot of nothing, a little bit of a dip, then a curl back up, breaking the high, and then kind of reversing again. So you know, strong up move, 70 seems to be that resistance area. If we break 70, is it then in, into the next range? At which point, you know, 90 would be the, the top end of that, of that next channel from what I'm seeing. Um, this thing, you know, sold off with the rest of everything else. Uh, you know, maybe now you get that curl back and then it does actually want to get to 100 and test that. I mean, I have no idea. I just feel like right now it's sort of testing the bottom end of the previous channel, uh, which will be resistance, right? So, you know, look at the options. You can look at it this way. You can look at it that way. But the main things to consider is that um, it is probably running into resistance at that 70 area. And when I first pulled this up, when you, when you first mentioned it, I was like, oh, I would love to short this thing. So I know you're, you're, you know, you're probably long and, and kind of have a difference of opinions. But you know, anytime I see this kind of setup where things just go too far too fast very quickly running into the resistance zone, uh, I do like the idea of a short. So that's just my general thoughts on that thing. You know, maybe it keeps going, maybe it doesn't. I, I probably don't end up trading it. I'm going to stick to large caps just because these things are moving. Google, uh, very nice, man. Very nice move on Google to the upside. So, uh, you know, as we kind of continue to, uh, yeah, that's, uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, now I'm not, okay, no, so I just sold everything. 
Um, okay, no, let me just get back Let's into that. Go that meta. Was, ah, whatever. Sean yelling on the yeah. side here. Meta is moving. All right, um, I'll have a look at the options uh, at the options numbers for you um, at a different segment. But you heard Luca give you a full analysis there of basically how he sees that one going out. So hope that helps one. And uh, yeah, keep them coming. Anytime you guys want to know anything about a stock, let us know, and we will try to get to that. Uh, sometimes we're trading, obviously, so it takes a little bit of time. All right, guys, market's making newer highs, 39.54 now and a quarter. High of day on the ES March contract. Well, we broke through, and I guess I'm going to say this anyway. We broke through that two-thirds uh, retracement on uh, the fibs. I obviously, take that with a grain of salt, guys, right? But we're just we're looking for some levels here. That's all we're really doing. Uh, so the ES continuing to print to the high side, and uh, yeah, and these big tech, these big tech plays continue to play to the high side too. I don't have any trades on at the moment. I really have nothing on. Uh, I've been I took that that nice little pop on ear uh scott h telling me it's continuing yeah i'm, I'm kind of close to the out here like i think it got the highest was at 1680 rejected four times off that 1680 once when uh, i it popped up when i was on then three other times subsequent to that now retracing back and trying to hold 16 here but breaking for the moment vwap on ear is around 1540 so and there is a good um, there's a good like little peak here that you could assume it would act as an area of support. So nice when those two coincide. Uh, so 1540 and around maybe like that 1560 to 1540 zone. So that might be a little buying zone there. Look for a pop. Otherwise, you know, I'll wait. Again, I got no biases on this one. The price action dictates. But then I'll wait for this one to retrace below VWAP. Make a big ugly uh, move down big red candlesticks uh, back to back and then maybe have a consolidation sideways and then we'll talk about shorting this one. Um, and you heard Luca say, you know, it, GNS is done. I think it is done too. I mean, until it, for me anyway, as a short, I'm not gonna be pop, uh, shorting it into these pops. I kind of want a retracement somewhere along the lines of 390 to four. I mean, because just based on the strength that we had on this one uh, going, going into the aftermarket, you know, you gotta assume it's gonna maybe, try and make a VWAP retracement. But the area where it's at right now is an area of resistance. Like look at this consolidation period before the break, kind of topped out at that 345, 350-ish area, and we haven't been able to break that area since. And it looks like we're curling back down. So there may be a short to be had here. Uh, I don't know if I want to jump into it. I, I'm waiting for a, maybe a bigger retracement, like I said, into that 380 to 3, to that four buying zone. It may not make its way there though. These ones, when they really get going south, they really head south. And <clears throat> we've seen that a lot lately, hence why I keep trading them in that way because it just keeps, like Neil says, rinsing and repeating. All right, uh, what else we got on board here? I want to look at light as well, LYT. We were talking about that one earlier. It's kind of doing nothing at the moment. Let's bring in a side chart here to have a look at LYT. One moment. All right, guys, come on. Someone in the f computer was, uh, someone in the, the chat was saying your computer looks fried. No, it's just because I'm running all these programs on it. So at the moment, yeah, this one looking like it's kind of about to go southward. Now we're not making any new highs. Uh, we're basically, let's see, let's load this up here. It's not making any new highs, kind of flattening out a little bit. And that's what we want to see before it heads south to that 170. Now, that's what Why I'm going to be looking for. A big move uh, below VWAP, below that 50 period into that 170 area, and then a consolidation sideways. And then I'll, I'll decide to take this one long. But right now, I'm going to stay, uh, stay with my hands on my side and not punch into anything. Microsoft, high of day, 238.53, Luca. Yeah, guys, just a heads up. I am uh, uh, covering fully the uh, the Tesla short that I had at 31.24. That was good, man. Covering 131s, then popping. What I did miss is the reload short. That was, uh, you know, when it's a day like this where it really chops around at these levels, this is where you want to consider the reload. Not on the days that it's up 10% and it's making new highs and it's very strong. So those are the days you stay away, and these are the days that I feel that you reload on the levels that, that kind of recycle themselves. So a little bit of a mishap not reloading the short, but no big deal because still in the short, um, aiming for that uh, 130.81. So getting the 130.81, um, and then it's flipping me long. So again, just a little bit of a keystroke, but uh, no big deal. I don't want the long there. Now I am flat, and I'm basically waiting for that level again. If we can pop back to 130.140s, and I even like it better if we make a high now. You know, if we made the high before, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's showing that it's an uptrend, healthy dip, and then kind of rip back to the upside. 
Um, now, if we get back there, I just feel like now it's, it's really setting in that kind of overhead resistance. So yeah, I would love for this to get to 131, break 131.50, you know, do a bunch of volume up over here. I'll take it short over there again. So if we do get there, I'll be short again. Uh, but we'll see if it actually wants to, uh, if it wants to get there, right? If it wants to get there. If it doesn't and keeps going to the downside, no problem. Randy saying Nvidia short question mark. I was short Nvidia, but it just kept going to the upside. It was just too strong. So I'm like, I've seen this setup before. This reminds me of AMD when I got rinsed that other day. So I was like, let me just punch <laughs> out of this and uh, and move on. So yeah, there was that, and I did move on and and whatever. Uh, Alibaba, I don't have any like line like VWAP and thing. I gotta like load this on my chart. But essentially, Alibaba didn't do what I thought it could. So it was like long, long. I was gonna scalp this level, but it just rejected. So the short at 120, definitely the better look. I feel like now if we do get back to 120, I'll just consider it and react. But maybe the short is good over there. Um, Northwestern Canopy Development, what's going on? Um, Luca, look at SPCE short. SPCE, uh, I usually don't jump into these names unless they're like really, really doing something, but I can just have a look here at the technicals, see if there's anything that kind of stands out to myself. I remember this was moving from yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. It had like a big up move. Um, what time was this? This was at 9.30, no, no. And then, was it yesterday or the day before? Let me pull Why up the 10 minute. Why is there a huge move south side on Goldman Sachs? There's what? News, getting... There's news, okay, they're being investigated. What a move mm. down. Sorry to interrupt it's, you, No, Luca. no, no problem, you could, you could cover that. 352.25 high, we were just at the highs, and boom, 342.71, we just dipped down to, that's a $10 move. Um, okay, looks like we got Brendo at the big board with happening now. You're close, sorry. Yeah, it's all good, dude. I, this Goldman Sachs you know, I consumer like, business faces Federal Reserve investigation. Uh, so again, the WSJ, Wall Street Journal reporting that. Meanwhile, let's get you caught up on how things are wrapping up the week as far as European markets are concerned. Just waiting for a few final prints to come through, but positive for the most part across this board. Uh, Spain, Sweden leading the way there, 1.3, 1.08 to the upside. Just waiting for a few final prints to come through. But uh, overall, positive for the European session, guys. Thanks for that, Brendo. Okay, so let's continue. I'm short here, GNS, already scalped a little piece for, a, what is that, like a 15 penny winner through 306, got short there, 321. So uh, it's back into my, uh, into my buy area. Again, I, I don't know, I don't see much hope for this one. I'm out though, if it breaks at 345, that's my out. So we'll see how this one does. Small position, guys. This is a quarter position. It's just kind of to keep me interested here because uh, there's not much going on in my world at the moment in terms of trading. Um, yeah, I really can't find any setups that, that you know are interesting to me. I know we're making highs on a lot of these big tech names, but this is not where I'm going to punch in. Man, I'm just kind of uh, sitting on my hands here. Luca, I don't know what you, uh, what you got in store. Uh, I kind of want to short Goldman Sachs. I want to find a way to short this. So you know what? Okay. That's my plan right now. If we pop to the upside over here, and let me just like, yeah, if we, I mean, it kind of late in the part. Maybe this wants to like pop and drop, get a couple scalps going on it. Not really too sure what to think, but if 146 holds, I feel like that could be good. So let me see if I get this fill over here. I'm risking off, uh, sorry, 346, not 146. It's giving these kind of wick off tops around 345.50. I maybe just missed my opportunity. Okay, now I did miss my opportunity. Mike, right, Mike, Mike. That one. Oh. Um, oh, nobody can hear me. Okay, I'll just repeat what I was saying there. Basically, Goldman, anytime you, you guys see negative news that comes out that moves the stock up or down, what I look for towards the downside is you're going to get the, the big move down, and then it's is the move, is the move significant, or uh, sorry, is the news significant or not, right? So um, kind of drips, uh, drops to the downside, curls back up, and giving you these kind of wick off tops, right? So one, two, and then three. And what I was looking for, I was just saying right there, I'm going to try to short this. Um, you know, 345.50 is sort of that, like, it is kind of testing it and then dropping. So for, from a scalp perspective, what I wanted to do was short over here and then cover on the flush down, but I missed that. So now that's, it's a whole new trade. Um, second time around, I like it less. So if I was gonna take 100% this time, now I'm even thinking maybe 30%, because easily we could rip back through 346 to the upside and then we get back to 348. So these are just the quick levels that I'm watching right now as they're, as they're coming out. So 348, 346, I like the short in this general area for the move back down, scalp short. But again, this can be, uh, I mean, we could literally break this right now, right? So uh, yeah, let me just punch into this short, see if I can get that. While if you're doing that, fill. I just want to let the viewers know, ear yeah. is flushing. Sorry to interrupt yeah, you, no, ear is ahead. flushing very aggressively there. Uh, what a move down, 1680 high, 
we're printing 1380 now. So this one really giving it all up, all the way down. We're, you gotta yeah, assume we're gonna be halting sacks. around here. I know I, I'm not that good at doing math that quickly, but I mean, I gotta assume the halt levels are in and around this area here, 10% move in five minutes. So, uh, all right, ear now up 21%. Where do we get in here? Now, we don't get in. At least I'm not getting in. What I'm going to wait for now or the below VWAP is a consolidation sideways, maybe a retracement back into VWAP, and I'll be averaging in. I'm not going to punch in here. It's just not my move. Um, you know, and it, it, great. If you're short this, all the power to you, and I'm, I'm very happy that you're printing, but this just kind of goes against my move here. Uh, what I'll be going to be waiting for again, consolidation sideways, retracement to VWAP. VWAP's got 15 uh 1540 at the moment but something tells me it's going to come down pretty quickly this is the one minute chart by the way on ear uh yeah so we obviously have a, a nice little area of support kind of where we're stopping at now maybe i think we're breaking through that to be honest with you it was this consolidation area here the range there being that 14 to about 1440 or so looks like we're below 14 breaking through 14 quite easily uh to be honest do we reclaim it uh, let's see how quickly we reclaim 14. There might be a bounce play to be had here. That's a big move down in a very short amount of time on ear. But yeah, what do you expect? What's the float on this? Let's find out real quick here what the float on ear is. It is a $287 million market cap uh, company profile. Let's have a look. Come on, computer, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it, I believe you. <laughs> the computer doesn't want to do it at the moment, so we're just going to... It knows gonna... it's Friday. It's probably happening yeah, right now Yeah, the computer just way. has its <laughs> own thing. It's, it decided to take out um, an early uh, vacay. All right, someone's saying crypto, making a move. Yes, you are right. Crypto at days high, 21,306 days high. We're printing 21,282, so we're a couple of bucks off that. BTC, obviously, I mean not crypto, BTC. This is the five minute chart here on BTC, USD. Come on, load. Get rid of the left side. Yeah, so let's look at the 15 minute chart. We had a big retracement uh, with the market on crypto in the last little while. So let's look at what some levels are here. Here we go. So the first level that kind of stares at me in the face is that, that 21, I want to say six and a half. Yeah, the 21,600 level obviously is a level to to keep an eye out on here. That seems to be have been the top at least for you know this period going back to January 13th. We're pretty close to it. We're 300 bucks away. 21,306 now is the high. Nice consolidation area here that we uh, that we're at right now. So we're likely to encounter some resistance around here. Look how long we consolidated for at this 21,300 uh, going back the past few days, Luca. Yeah, guys, just a heads up. I'm long uh, W, um, playing off sort of 47. Just a very, very strong move to the upside, obviously, 21% up on the day. I just feel like any t at any point, if we do kind of rip, you know, maybe we continue to pop. Uh, playing loosely off the 47 area, uh, willing to kind of, my, my idea is like willing to scale into this if it dips down and then if we get a curl back back up, probably get a 48 test and then run and, you know, you got the 50 level coming into play potentially. So that could be, that could be interesting. Uh, I want to look back quickly at Tesla to see where this is. Yeah, no, this is not. Uh, I do have my order waiting there. And let me just put it on this screen. I do have my order waiting there. If we do get back up to short that, that could be good. Google is now back below 97. That was pretty solid in terms of, uh, I'm going to put VWAP on my chart in a second, but VWAP bounce right over here, running to the upside, sort of hitting the long. I said to myself, let me get long if we break 97. And then I'm like, you know what? It's going to break 97. And it does that little bit of a channel. So I'm like, let me just get long before I forget. Um, you know, get the size that I want on that, and then we actually get the move to the upside. Even though I believe that this has a chance to get to 98, things don't always go in a straight line, right? So it's like, it's going up great. I scale myself out, and then I'm like, okay, 97.50 is probably gonna be my best out. That's what I said from before. And uh, I think, yeah, the out was like 40s over there. So I'll take it. Uh, now we're back below. I'm not gonna short this thing. It's up 4%. Everybody knows that they cut, uh, they cut jobs. Um, whether it was like 10,000 or something like that, not too sure the specifics, 12, but 12,000 yeah. uh, 12, yeah, jobs. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's uh, the market likes that clearly. I yeah. think Google was down for too long and uh, you know, now it's to the upside. So the long is good there. Going back to Goldman Sachs, I'm watching uh, multiple things here. So obviously I'm, I'm gonna miss things, that's no problem. But hopefully somebody had that short off 345.50 uh, area, that was good. I would have covered at the lows personally, um, 
this is like, you know, you go down, you chop around, then maybe you get the leg down. So for myself as a scalper, I'm very comfortable seeing the short over here and the cover over here. Where does this go? I don't know. Does it go to 340, 338? Like your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. Uh, you know, maybe I can pull up a, a wider time frame to look at that. Let me just fix my charts here and uh, pull up maybe the 15 minute to see where are, where is the support on this thing. Uh, I have no idea. But yeah, that trade would have been done, just a heads up there, so I would not be in that trade anymore. I should have, ah, man, you know, the thing with Goldman Sachs is obviously you guys are looking at the spread right now. It's like 20 cents, it's 50 cents. So, you know, when I try to get into positions, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, <laughs> but I miss them, but I miss them, and I'm okay to miss them because I'm not gonna chase things that like this I just say, you know what, I either get it or I don't, and then I just have to let it go. I kind of feel like the bottom from before, which was like, you know, 339 to 340, just based on this. It's kind of, this was the bottom, then they had the run up, then they had like earnings, a little bit of sideways action, and then kind of the news coming out right now. So where does this stop? It probably stops at this area, if I had to guess, right, if I had to guess. So 340 to 338, based on the technicals, this is the 15. Um, so this was back on the, uh, the 29th, the 30th. This is the start of the year, right? So yeah, kind of interesting to note the fact that the low of the year was like 340, give or take, um, you know, give or take. Uh, obviously, yeah, it's very spready. Um, so now it's coming back into the low of the year. So yeah, we probably get a little bit of a bounce there at the low of the year. Uh, I convinced myself into a long play, so let me try to get that bounce in front of 340. I just assumed that if I was short, that's where my full cover would be. So yeah, maybe fill me 340, bounce a dollar, I'll cover that, I'll take the long and go. Uh, heads up back on that WNY, I'm just looking, I'm seeing that I have less of a position, so I assume that I did get the fill there. That was pretty, uh, pretty solid, nice like long. This is what I was looking for, something that's up on the day very strong. It kind of moons to the upside, gives you the pullback, very, very kind of grinding to the downside, and then at the first sign that it wants to pop, it like pops very quickly. So I obviously have my order scaled to get myself out. First out in front of 48, that was pretty solid. Second out, I mean, I would love to get, you know, 48.50, 48.60 towards the high of day. I will maybe try to hold a piece um, for a little bit of a, you know, for a move into 50, but again, I, I don't do, I just feel like I, it makes sense to me, you know, as a scalper, like in, out, and then after I get that kind of final out, I'm like, well, I don't know where this goes now. So, I mean, maybe it wants to keep going, but yeah, I'm gonna try to get out, above, I feel like above 48. This didn't break 48, did it? No, this did not. So this actually ran to 48 evens and then turned, turned right away. So I almost feel like if we do break 48, we do get that next kind of pop back to the upside. And then I'll take another 50 cents for that. Yeah, Darwin, hold for the dream. Well, Darwin, you know how fast the dreams turn into nightmares. So I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of these nightmares. I, I don't want to have them anymore. So I'm going to stick to the scalp game where there's no dreams. It's just a lot of work, in and outs. And uh, go from there, man. We'll go from there. Baba, just a heads up, kind of bottoming out. I feel like VWAP is right around here. Bottoming out and now curling back to the upside. I'm going to have an order to short this in front of 120 um, as like a reminder order, so very, very small size. And then uh, we'll see if I can uh, recycle a bunch of shares at that level if we get there. Somebody asking again, Tesla, any thoughts on Tesla? So I'm not sure if you, uh, if you heard what I was saying before. My level on Tesla is like 131, like this kind of 131, uh, 40 area. I would love it to break and make a high. So I don't want it to just come here and then reverse. I want it to come here, rip, stop everybody out. I will scale into a short and then look for the flush back down. So we'll see what happens on that one. Uh, yeah, W now pushing to the upside. Maybe, you know, I mean, you could maybe justify to yourself a break of 48, like to take a long there. But to be honest, I just feel that the, the long was better onto the dips. I'm not going to be adding to this position. I'm actually going to be getting out as we rip back to the upside on that one. So we'll see what happens there. I want to go back quickly to Uber to see if my decision was correct or not on the long short there. It, uh, where, where was I? I think I took the, uh, oh yeah, you can't even see it here. The 30, so the long was good for a little bit of a 20 cent move. But uh, kind of choppy there. I'm just going to let this one go for now. Coinbase, high of day, says Sean. And here is the chart up 6% now. Obviously, it has something to do with the fact that we're printing big boy highs here on Bitcoin 21373. Now we're making new highs. Bitcoin moving to the high side. Likewise is coin. Do we take the long here? I mean, this isn't my play, you know? I don't know what to do. Do I punch long? What do I do? Mm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for this one, but just wanna shut that out to you guys. Coin, coin is moving. And uh, yeah, I'm sure some of these other crypto names are moving as well. Let me have a look for you guys here. 
Let's see what these uh, crypto names look like. MicroStrategies up 3%. Uh, GBTC, yeah, flat. SI up 11 and a quarter. Uh, you see Neil trade that a lot lately. Mara up 3%. Riot up four and a quarter. BTBT up seven. So yeah, this one continuing to print new highs. I'm locked into a trade that I don't like. I'll be quite honest with you on this one. GNS, <clears throat> I feel like I've averaged in too many times into this short. I was over committed to the short. This is, uh, what is this? This is a 35% position because we took, this was a quarter and then a 10% add and another 10% add here. Uh, we took out 10% down here. Hence why this was 15%, not 25%. So it uh, looks like the half dollar is holding my out is a little bit above, above 70. So uh, if it flushes down, great. If it doesn't, you know, I'll learn my lesson uh, because I, did, I should not have been fighting it the way that I did. That was kind of against my rules. Back to coin, rejecting a little bit now off that top. It just made 52, 53 high of day uh, back into the 52 30s. That's to be expected after the big move. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, some confluence today between uh, between uh, BTC. Why do I get the look from Neil? There is what? some, you know, like there's some jiving. Do you want to talk about something? Uh, no, guys, just heads up. So I am long Goldman Sachs right now off 340. I feel like it's through 340, but it's not really Crap my concern. Over. The area is like 340. 339 and 338. So it's very, very wide area, obviously $2. But I mean, the stock just went from 350 to 340. So it's like, it sold off $10. Um, I need to give this, you know, a $2 area. There's no stop in play. There's no, huh? Oh yes, there's no stop in play. I'm going for like a bounce to, you know, 341. Um, like I'll take the dollar. I just feel like, you know, sometimes, obviously as a trader, you have to make sure that the risk to return is in play, like you do. You have to say to yourself, if I'm risking this amount, then I need to go for that amount. It's a two to one, it's a one to one, that makes sense to me. However, I do like to take a flip side approach to that and say like, as a scalper, I feel like because I'm adding liquidity in these areas, I'm sort of playing the house. So my sort of scalps that you see me take, people probably ask, you know, why are you taking eight cents? Why are you taking a dollar when you're risking two dollars? That doesn't make any sense. That's a, you know, 50 cent to one or whatever. Um, the reason is because when you do play the house, um, if you, you know, uh, if you run your own casino and you play the house, you're kind of giving better odds because the person is losing most of the time and you just reap the rewards of it, right? So for myself, that is kind of my take on the situation. I sort of uh, look at it like I need to risk more and then take less as a scalper because I'm going to find these trades more and more. I'm going to find them. I'm going to be able to recycle them. Um, and I'm just going to do this like 500 times a day. And, uh, you know, my percentages of winning will be higher, but my odds on the trade will be less. So that's kind of the general, uh, the general kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, not rule of thumb, but that's basically what, how I kind of view it. So, yeah, we're selling off pretty hard. This is a big move to the downside, but I am pretty comfortable. Um, I'm just sizing accordingly and then waiting because eventually there will be a pop. The same way how we dip down into 342.50 and then pop to 345 is kind of the same way that I feel like the short is obviously better from up here, but at this point now, you know, if we get through 337, 335, I'll be like super wrong on the position. I'm pretty light on the position, so it's not gonna destroy me, but I do feel like when that pop does happen, you know, 342 probably gets tested. So yeah, we'll see where this wants to go, where it wants to pop to. Safe to say that 341, or for myself, I'm telling myself this, like I think 341 does print, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to get out in front of 341. My average now is like 339.75. So yeah, not too worried on that one. We'll see where it wants to go uh, and continue to move on from that one. Heads up on W, it did run back to 47. As I quickly glanced at it, you know, there is somebody who is trying to sell uh, quite a little bit. So, you know, not to say that it's a liquid, but anytime somebody tries to sell, you know, 500 lots and it hits the book, it's gonna, you know, have a, have a reaction on price, right? This is not Google, W, a little bit of a different name. Um, I just feel like this still does have the, uh, you know, it's kind of showing that this general area is holding for the time being. Um, you know, maybe this is a channel. Easily break 48s and then pop to the upside. So my order is still there. I am still calm in this position. I do want to add to it a little bit, but I'm going to let 47 resolve and see how this kind of plays itself out. The main thing to know with this is it really, it, it had a nice uptrend. That's nice short. It had a nice, this is, this is long. There's long, long and then cover, yeah. yeah. Um, it had a nice uptrend and the, and the move really started to go when it broke that 47. So it broke 47, it went crazy, it dipped back, and now it's kind of holding this, this sort of area of 47. So I'm gonna watch 47, and I'm, I'm wondering if we dip through 47 and then pop back up and then go back to the upside. So again, up 21%, 
the long is not wrong. I already made money on it, so I'm okay to now hold this and see where it goes, maybe add to it. But yeah, I'll just reevaluate and, and continue to move on and, and you know, find good trades there. Uh, really glad that I covered the NVIDIA. Sometimes you punch the top and you're like, man, I punched the top. Like I literally punched the top and then it went down. But then it makes another top and you're like, oh, what a genius exit on that one. So pretty happy with that one there. Um, but yeah, we're going to find more trades and move on. All right, guys, in a couple of shorts, in ear short, in GNS short, let, GNS one, um, I'm less confident about. I feel like I'm about to get stopped out here. Uh, this looks like it's going to be a flat top breakout here. Brewing on the 50 period on the three minute chart and the 200 period on the one minute chart. So this one probably not going to go well for me. I'm more optimistic on ear though, punched in uh, here. Where did I get short on ear? I got short 53s. A little bit out of the money at the moment, but hey, let's uh, let's give this one room. I'm just gonna start putting out my profit takers. In fact, let's change that. Let's put this amount, okay? And then we're gonna take some out, maybe through the 40s. So put it in the mid 40s. There we go. So wait on that one. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna let these trades uh, do as they like. What's my cost basis on GNS? 36 is okay. So we're gonna have to look at setting some outs here as well. Let's go ahead and put some outs on GNS. So I said 36 is okay. So it's gonna have to be in the 20s. There we go. So we'll put that and we'll we'll basically wait and see. Oof, ear just flew to the high side there. Oh my goodness. Uh, so I gotta really be careful here about this one. Uh, is it gonna wake up? It waked right back down. So this could be stopping a lot of people out. A lot of times we see this uh, during periods of illiquidity where it shoots right back down. There we go. Oh boy, that was, now the spread's really opening up on here. This could get dangerous real quick. So we'll have to manage that. But I want to also mention that we're starting to print new high of day on coin. This one's starting to move to the high side again. Uh, kind of retraced there a little bit, coming down from 52 and a half all the way down to you know, 51.75. This one's still going. Let me look at Bitcoin real quickly. Are we still printing? 21.412 now the high of Bitcoin. We talked about a resistance level possibly being at 21.6. So this one, we're now $200 away from that resistance level. That should make for an inter interesting little piece there. So. Uh, in a couple of trades at the moment, got to basically nurse, uh, nurse them and make sure that I don't get blown out here. I think I'm going to add at this location. There we go. So we add it there. We'll wait and see what that one does on ear coin. Really going now. 52 high 60s. Uh, now I'm seeing 70s come in on coin. Now it's going to be up seven and a quarter percent. Uh, sorry, six and a quarter percent. This one really starting to move. Uh, we're not really seeing the corresponding move on a Bitcoin. Bitcoin kind of just uh, hanging out flat there, but coin making the move up. You know, these equities and uh, the, the related uh, uh, crypto product, you know, they move in tandem, but they don't move identically. They rhyme, they don't repeat. So this one, excellent move there by Sean. I mean, I didn't want to punch into this. It wasn't my game to punch in at high of days. So, you know, I'm going to steer clear, but, you know, uh, coin moving there as well. Uh, what's the chat up to? People saying NVIDIA going, NVIDIA so strong. Yeah, we looked at that this morning. Uh, Clyde Roberts saying GS tanking. Yes, uh, we, you see Luca in that as well. Goldman Sachs selling off and buying Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, right. I got the fill on the bounce, by the way. All right, go for it. Uh, yeah, guys, so I got the fill on the bounce into, into 341s. Um, pretty textbook, you know, kind of averaging into it. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you know, 341s based on the look of this is probably going to print. I do think that there's a chance this goes back to 343. I really do believe that. So I'm holding on to a piece uh, for that move. So yeah, next target on that for myself. Um, you know, I, I should have added, I said 340, uh, sorry, 338, I said that. I should have added, as you guys can see, one, two, I should have had the third add, but I, I'm just sort of doing like multiple things at once here. So, yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no excuse for, uh, you know, poor, poor execution. Uh, you know, I take full responsibility, but I should have had the third ad and then it would have been out, out. And then maybe I could hold for uh, maybe a 347 bounce. Um, do we get there? I have no idea, but yeah, my next target now at this point is uh, closer to 342. Um, you know, 342 breaks, then I'll be, I'll be fully out of that shot. position. So we'll see what Pratt, happens. <laughs> Pratt, go wide shot. Oh man, that, that looks good. That smells good. I put on some yeah. pasta for you there. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Put some chicken there, some couscous. You got the protein, the carbs. Oh, man. I should just stole I'm, the carbs. But. I'm hungry. Why you got to do this to me? A little bit of carbs is good. Why you got to do this to me? 
Come on. You gotta live a little bit, man. Sorry, go for it, Luca. Yeah, yeah, no worries, guys. Uh, still, so I did end up adding to the uh, the long on uh, W over here. It's sort of breaking that 47 and then kind of, you know, slow curl. I do feel like we're gonna maybe get another pop. Somebody's trying to sell this thing. And I don't know if they're done selling, but I do feel like maybe if they finish selling, then, uh, you know, maybe we, uh, maybe we get another pop there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more right now. My general idea is that eventually we pop the same way we did over here. Maybe we pop again. So yeah, orders are gonna be scaled for sure. Uh, we'll see, I mean, how far do we pop? I have no idea, but I'll just basically take what I can get on that one. Um, Someone's saying W is going to 45. Maybe, maybe it goes back down. I'm just scalping, man. So my average is 47.10, um, basically at break even right now. You know, if this move wants to keep going to the upside the same way this one does, it'll scale me out of that and then I'll continue to go from there. I wanna look at Amazon as well. Something that I didn't really look at today. Uh, somebody was mentioning before, yeah, Amazon going to the upside. Is there a level of interest? Because 96, I was buying the dip before and I feel like 96 now may be top-ish. But, the, but then we are holding this general area. May, eh, you know what, I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna leave it. There's probably better names to look at. Uh, let's see where Google is. Google is holding now for the time being and doing some type of action here below 97. Let me try to bid this closer to 80s. Um, I'm gonna try PJ to see if I can get 80s. Was asking here in the chat, so many companies is announcing layoffs and markets ripping higher, very weird. You're absolutely right, but we're in an environment where like that bad news is kind of good news. So. Uh, Basically, analysts are worried that these uh, big tech companies are overextending themselves. I've hired too many people, their costs are too high, and basically they need to cut costs, just to make it very like blunt. And the one way, obviously, to do that is to lay people off. And so the market, sadly, reacts positively to that, and that's just the nature of the beast that we're in. So um, that's basically the news there. So when you, you have companies like Microsoft, Amazon, now today Google, announcing Meta, uh, Meta announced already, I believe last year, that they were laying uh, people off. You saw rallies in those company stocks and you're seeing it today in Google. We've seen it over with Meta going back, geez, how long now? Uh, Meta's been rallying, Meta's been relatively strong relative to the S&P for like weeks now. So you're seeing that, you're seeing these cost cutting measures being uh, accepted uh, quite favorably by Wall Street. Um, as I say that Meta is pumping up for some reason here, it's flying to the high side. 138.20 now, 138.17, uh, and you're not seeing nice uh, the I'm same market inside. reaction uh, with that. So just saying Meta's moving here in case anybody is interested in that moving. So yeah, I just want to mention uh, that little question here by Team PJ asking why the market is reacting so favorably to these uh, bad, bad-ish headlines that we would associate. Obviously, we don't want people losing their jobs, but you know, such is the nature of the beast. Again, um, all right. 39.54 highs yeah, market's pushing. on the market. Contra, yeah, Luca saying the market pushing. We're about to break through 39.50s again. We're pretty close, Luca. Yep, just another heads up there. So getting a nice little fill on the pop on W, just as expected. You know, it's kind of down, 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 pop. Down, 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 pop. Down, down, down. Eventually, eventually what I'm hoping for is that it rips through that 48 level. So yeah, we'll see if it has the steam to actually do that. Tesla is uh, making its way to the upside. So yeah, probably get that, that first initial fill that I have. Um, yeah, 3150s area, that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, covering that, you know, Meta going to high a day now. I don't know what to think with Meta. As much as I want to punch long, I feel like I'm sort of late to the party. I should have gotten closer to 38s over there. So Anybody uh, gonna... who punches long, Meta is in my good books. Yeah? No. Should I just get long right now? <laughs> anyway, you know I'm long that, right? Yeah, I know, every like, time. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking smack, obviously, guys. You know, I'm tongue in cheek. Yeah. I, uh, oh yeah, and I'm, I'm fully out of Goldman Sachs. So this was a nice pop to the upside. It's, um, you know, maybe, uh, I said 343s, but then as it was like down here, I'm like, eh, I'll just go for like a little bit less. Not gonna try to be too greedy. Um, the money was the short, obviously, on the initial move down. So that was pretty sick. Um, now it's kind of, you know, my average was whatever, like just below 340s and getting out averaging just uh, 341.50. So yeah, nice little win on that one, locking that one in. I'm looking at NVIDIA, which is a making a high again, a high of day. Um, I want to short this so badly, but <laughs> I know it's maybe not the right idea. It's probably not the right idea Itching. to short this thing. Should I short this thing? No, I'm not shorting no, NVIDIA. No. I'm not pulling it up. Don't ask about it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and uh, let's go to Netflix. Let's see where Netflix is at. I know I, I had a bit on Netflix There's before. Below view up. Um, oh man, did I not get the, oh, cause I, I reloaded. NVIDIA, holy. Ah, okay, okay. I should be, I should have been long Netflix here at 335 or 36 ish area. That's a nice kind of like higher low in general, just sort of, you know, this is, uh, you know, with a grain of salt, but like kind of bounce. 
bounce, bounce. Are we now going to curl to the upside? I feel like I missed the opportunity to get long. I don't want to chase it now just because this is closer to the middle. Maybe it does float to the upside. If this clears 340 and gets to like 42s, 43s, then I'll consider the short uh, for like a scalp trade short back down. Uh, but yeah, definitely going to have to put that one on ice. Alibaba running to the upside but not getting that 120 fill. So I think I am short, trying to short this thing closer to 120. The uh, market, goodness. yeah, the market's pretty interesting, curling back up. You know, do we get over that 39.50 and keep going to the upside? Uh, I mean, now it's kind of channeling here, which is interesting. Maybe we, maybe we go up. Maybe we don't. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to see what happens on that one. Uh, we'll put Nvidia, that one. Nvidia, my goodness, yeah, Luca, what is happening here? This one. Do we have any specific news? Let me just have a look at my news blotter here. So. Uh, here we go. Okay, so Nintendo rumor switch production, that's not it. Uh, T-Mobile breach, consumer, that has nothing to do with it. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything specific here with respect to NVIDIA. Inv investors heavily search NVIDIA Corporation. Here's what you need to know. No, that's not it. Okay, so it looks like it's a secular breakout until I, we can confirm otherwise. But, you know, it's also pumping with the market. The market is up almost 1% now, 34 points off the bottom. So this one, you know, it's it's not entirely secular, but it's definitely stronger than the rest, at least for the moment. Microsoft is the other one that's really strong. It's at high of days, currently 238.77. This one continues to be strong. It's been strong all day. I had a couple of trend lines drawn on this one, and you know it's broken through them, and now it's holding uh, former resistance as current support. If we extend that, look, look at that. When you extend that trend line, it ends up being the support. It's, I love that. So this one, looking at 239 straight in the eye. Likewise with Meta, we're like 30 pennies off the high on Meta. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot going like on here. Disney right uh, what's going on? Uh, Disney near high of day two, eh? Yeah, guys. I'm taking a short on Disney. Sometimes I pull these things up and I say, this is this is where I have to short this thing. So I could be wrong on this. It's, very, it's a very impulsive move that I'm taking right now. But it's a scalp trade. I'm in at 101.21s. I feel like we could easily drop back down into the 101 region, uh, give it a little bit of a test, and then kind of go from there and bounce. So yeah, short Tesla, but I didn't get the full fill. I was sitting at, uh, guys, this is bad, man. I'm, I'm sitting, where's my order? At, uh, I think it was 54s. So I was like 54s. I was going for like the high a day move and then give me the fill and then quick reverse, but it didn't. It just reversed right at 34s. So I am now short with like, with less size, not worried about this position. Um, if we dip down to 80s, I'm gonna cover that and kind of take the scalp trade. But yeah, I would, I would love for this to go higher. So the higher that it goes, the better off that I'll be. Uh, then I'll get that full fill up there and we'll see uh, you know, who goes from there. Uh, Johnny Singh, whoever called out coin, thanks. Quick 20% yeah. profit. Nice. Well, Sh Sharif was all over that, man, talking well, about so that. Well, so Sean, too, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't, uh, you know, you were saying it's in the 60s, it's in the 70s. Yeah, yeah it kept And I, I, like, blacked out, and I was like, 60, $60. <laughs> $70? Oh, my bad, no, pennies. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the pennies you were talking about, that's, uh, that's funny. I mean, nice move up on this, man. Now at 53. Um, yeah, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that coin trade on ice. I'm basically watching like one long, two shorts. Somebody keeps saying W to 45. Can you just put that comment on ice until I actually get the full fill of the pops? Then it could go to 45, okay? Because I'm long. I don't want it to go to 45. If it does, I'll be, uh, I'll be out of the position. I'll be uh, in a loser. But I just feel like, you know, let me be right, and then you can be right, and then we can all move on. It's Friday. Good day. Hey. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm not allowed to like Fridays anymore. Up here. No, yeah, Sorry, you're not. I keep yeah, that can... to myself around here now. Yeah, I think, uh, you know what, I, I stick with what I said. You can like Fridays, you can like Mondays, uh -huh. you can like Saturdays and Sundays, uh -huh. but come on, Wednesdays. Wednesdays, oh, I don't know about Wednesdays. You know, middle of the week, oh, not really anything too crazy. Uh, yeah. As long as it's a good trading day, I guess that's what'll be happy. Guys, let's do this real quick here. We haven't done a like check, 2,100 likes. In case you missed it yesterday, I don't know if you missed it, but uh, I'll uh, just remind you. Luca and I were able to generate a plethora of likes, uh, over 8,000 8, <laughs> 8, likes, which now has caused us, um, which is going to result in us, sorry, that's what I meant to say, uh, wearing costumes. I'm going to wear a big bird. Luca's going to wear the cookie monster. That's going to go down. Uh, but yeah, so uh, smash the like, guys. We've got 2,100 likes. Pardon me? You may be Elmo. I may be Elmo, actually. So uh, for those who wanted me in Big Bird, oh, yeah, okay, we're, we're having trouble securing the Big Bird. We're going to get it. We're, we'll see what goes there down. Uh, you know, it's going to be some sort of Sesame Street fail. character. 
As long as Luca and I can use our hands to punch into positions and can see the screen clearly, we're willing to wear the costumes. We're committed to it, and yeah, that's what that's what what's gonna go down. So, 2,200 likes, guys. Let's get that up to 2,500. If you have us in your pocket, if you're listening to us in your ear, uh, just take a moment and smash that like button. All right, coin. Still near high of days. I gotta stop for a second. Loft Jr. says Miss Piggy, perhaps, and added me. He wants me to wear Miss Piggy. <laughs> Give me a break, dude. I got to wear a costume at work on live uh, YouTube. So <laughs> does it have to be a humiliating thing as well? All right. The short we're in that we're nursing is ear. I'm looking for a head and shoulders pattern here. I've got my position built. I've got one more add-in spot that I'm eyeing. Mm, Other than that, I've sick. got my profit takers resting there, and I'm looking for a big move down. I'm hoping to spend the money on this one quite soon, but not yet. We're not going to celebrate yet. Not going to jinx it. This is the short that I'm not happy with. It's GNS short. It's creating a flat top, and it's going to break out, and I'm going to get stopped out. I feel it, but I'm going to follow my rules. I'm going to stick to the stop that I put in case it does reject off that level. I've got a profit taker waiting there in the midst uh, to take profit. Hence, it's a profit taker. Yep. Um, yeah, go for it, Luca. No, no, uh, you're, you're killing it, man. You're killing yeah. it. But I, I can uh, take over here as I just load this back up. Um, I am now in the Google long as well. Woo. So short Disney, which, guys, to be honest, I, I said this. This is an impulsive short. And what do I do with it? I, I add to it, honestly. I add to it. I just feel like this, this is not going to be wrong. But it could be wrong because the long is, is right. So, yeah. Uh, we'll see where that one wants to go, but just a heads up on the W position. This one is looking pretty good, back in the money again, floating around, but I was just uh, kind of utter, uh, you know, uh, mumbling to myself here. This long could be sick because it's, it's now creating that little bit of a base. And what I'm doing is basically add, add, covering like on the pops. It's, if we do clear, I feel like if we clear the 50s now, you know, maybe kind of 50s over there, 48s, and then, you know, high a day. If that happens, great. If not, no big deal. I'm basically paying myself on the pops anyways, so it's not really a big deal. I did miss the Tesla reload at the top there. It actually just kind of turned around right off of my order of uh, 54s. So yeah, 54s, I mean, the, the highest is at 53s. So that I'm a 54, so 54s is not the right spot. That is not, or maybe that was the perfect spot. One cent away from greatness, God. Uh, okay. Don't you just love that? It's That's trading, man. Trading yeah. is, you're one cent away from greatness and you're two cents away from blowing your account. That is real <laughs> trading. Um, if I got the fill, so there's true. no way 54 would have been the perfect like fill. It would have been all the way at like 30, 130, 170. So, you know, it's like a one cent away from greatness, two cents away from the fill and just being wrong. Um, that, is, that is trading. Uh, it is what it is there. Uh, let me just look at this Google position. Where are we on this thing, man? Because this thing, I, I kind of bid here and I just want to reevaluate. Re I feel like 81's long was good. Where am I? I'm at 83's. Uh, this is the bottom of this kind of, you know, area that it's sort of bottoming out at. Oh, we already did pop to 97. So this is on the way back down. You know what? Let me, let me just get out of this trade now. And then uh, if we get back over 97's, I'll reconsider uh, this area. I wanted the pop. I didn't realize that it actually already popped and then dropped back down. So I, uh, I'm going to get out of that and, you know, small win, but it's not really a win. It wasn't even a part of the plan. Uh, Disney is not doing what I wanted to see here. So maybe I will just take the, uh, actually, let me add one more to this. Okay, no, it already flushed. Um, that's kind of a little bit of a blow off top, a little bit. Not exactly what I want to see, but still with the same common theme of as long as my average stays closer to the top end of this channel that's being created right now, I think I'll be good. If we break 101, you know, 60 to the upside, then probably ends up making a run to uh, 102 over there. So yeah, maybe that's my kind of general area for, for a stop. Hopefully it doesn't get there. But yeah, looking to cover into the 101 region, that would be awesome. Um, looking here at the chat, some Calgary activists, what's going on? Some uh, saying ear is flying to the upside. Yeah. I mean, it's, it went to the upside, it went uh, back to the downside. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in this. Uh, this Still is my that? ad nice. here. It's a very illiquid stock. There you go, flushing right back below 14. I tried to get filled here at 1540, uh, exactly 15. Where, where was my 1539? I mean, it was crossing there like crazy, but as you can see, that wick went all the way up to 1554, but I wasn't able to get filled for some reason. Uh, well, Here's the reason, look at the spread. It's like a lot, okay? <laughs> that's, a, that's all you need to know, it's a lot. It's like 27 pennies at the moment. So this one, is, it's very illiquid, but it's, uh, it's, I still don't believe in it and we'll see what it does. GNS, this one rejected through that break. It broke the top that it had built here at, I wanna say 365 or so. 
breaking all the way up to 370 and then really rejecting all the way down into the low 340s, uh, reclaiming 50 for the moment, but we'll see what this one does. Um, you know, I'm, this is why I didn't punch out because it rejected off the top like that, right? Let me just get stopped out. It's a 35% position that I'm in. So let's just follow the rules and let's not, you know, paper hand this trade. Uh, back to ear, yeah, we're right back into that 1497 level after popping up into the, like I said, the 1555 there. So this one, you know, I, I still, I feel like a head and shoulders is brewing on this one, but hey, we've got stops. We've got everything uh, set up, so let's wait to see if we can print on this one. I, I have a good feeling about this one. All right, where are we here with everything else? Those are the two trades that we're in at the moment. Uh, we're keeping an eye on the general market. Uh, NVIDIA was flying. It's kind of taking its foot off the gas a little bit. Set 174.71 is the high. We're at 174 now. Let's see if the whole dollar holds. Uh, what's, what else is going on? Microsoft retracing a little bit as well. It, it was, you know, 238. Uh, 81 high, kind of back in the 238.30s at the moment, likewise with Meta. Meta creating a bit of a, a flat top here, uh, almost a triple top here at that 138.40. So you want to say 138.50. I was looking at the daily chart on Meta. It looks like, you know, we're creating newer highs every day and uh, not necessarily, yeah, today we're obviously going to have a higher low. And you can see this trend here, obviously, oh, this is the daily chart on Meta. But having a look here, this is kind of the area that we want to break in, break out of, excuse me. And I've kind of Who earmarked a couple of areas here. That first one was at 135.50 to 136 go. area, basically. And then the other area was the top of this consolidation area here, which was 142.50. So I think if we break, if we have a $4 move above and close above this level, we really do have an interesting trend on our hand. And then basically we're looking, um, we're looking at 170 in the face at that point because that's the next level of resistance that we're going to encounter. There's a, almost a $30 vacuum here on Meta that uh, can't really be accounted for. That's the aggression with oh, which yeah. it came Let's down go. on the last time. I got my buddy over here printing money, so I'm going to send it to him. Yeah, guys, I'm taking some more out of W on this pop. Very, very nice pop to the upside. I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. This is like, this is awesome. You know, this thing is doing exactly what I want to see, so I'm going to, you know, every single pop is like, yeah, like pop and... Uh, Pop and drop, drop there, so yeah, man, so I am, uh, let me just get, uh, wait, wait, let me get the Ooh. right amount out of that. Um, okay, beautiful, beautiful, and now just waiting uh, for where this thing wants to go. Disney, I don't know if you heard me saying this, this is digital warfare. Ooh. I don't need charts if these charts keep crashing, no problem. As long as execution doesn't go down, I'm taking the fills. I'm covering the, four, the first at 101.20, waiting now for flush into 101. Uh, good average, 101.32. So, you know, sometimes sometimes being impulsive is good. Most of the time, probably not good. But, uh, yeah, YOLO and FOMO, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, it's orange now. It changes? What? It comes with different color oh, all the time. Oh, I thought, like, everybody don't has their own that? color. Oh, I, I don't really know anything know, about YouTube, honest. guys. Um, oh, based uh, on the amount. Oh, by the way, guys, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, I feel like there's, if you're a subscriber, you get so many better things. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, let's get to 400,000. That's such a good number. I forgot about uh, that. We're like 25,000 away. You know, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button. You can't button. be in the chat if you're not a subscriber. You can't be in the chat if you're not a subscriber. Yeah. Oh, I thought the green names were the, uh, the those are Those are like the members. I'm learning, man, I'm learning new things every yeah. single day. Uh, yeah, but guys, hit that, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Uh, great community. I love coming on here. And let me just read this quickly. Luca, I love you. I love you too, man. Uh, the GS Long. Yeah, Ooh. the GS Long. Tell me it's all money, the way up. Where is money, this thing? Money, 43s money, now. Money, the thing money, is, is money. I make the calls. I'm like, yeah, 343. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go there. Then it like goes up and I go, you know what though? <laughs> let, me, let me just get up 42s because it's a dollar. I'll just find another trade. Uh, and then it goes to where I wanted it to go anyway. So yeah, uh, you're probably doing better than I am. But great trade. Awesome. At this point, guys... And the thing is, is I don't have volume on this chart. I got to put this on here. But volume is always the tell, even with large caps. Less so with large caps in the sense of these things can still float to the upside. Whereas when I refer to it on the small cap side of things, I'm saying, you know, be careful because when volume dries up, um, you know, there's, there's really no liquidity. Like Goldman Sachs, there's going to be ample amounts of liquidity. There's never going to be an issue with that one. But uh, who knows where it goes now. Volume is the tell. I feel like volume is probably dropping. So it's like you have the move on the news play. It pops back. You take the short you have the money short, you take the bounce play long if you want it, okay, great. Now it's like you're either in the position or you're not. I'm not gonna be looking to play this anymore. Um, I'm not looking to go short, I'm not looking to go long. It was two trade ideas, both of them worked. I, I was fortunate enough to catch the long, um, that was great. So you know, I'm assuming you're in that one too, so congratulations, that was pretty solid. And uh, yeah, Disney, 
uh, fading now to the downside. Let me just cover a little bit more here. I'm trying to get that 101, but I just feel like I don't want to be too, too greedy. So yeah, let's see if it actually wants to flush into 101 for the rest of that position. This uh, WN, whoever was saying 45s, uh, you might be right on that play. I just feel like now we're breaking. If we break 46.40 to the downside, then uh, you know my thesis is wrong. So I've now made enough on the scalps that if I, if I am wrong on the last piece of the, uh, the kind of drop there, um, no big deal. If it spends a little bit more time here and then curls back up, I'll continue to add and then uh, cover up top there. So yeah, I can't complain with that one. Tesla is, uh, is showing you that this is the level, man. That 40 level, like this is the level. So you know, hopefully this can uh, get back up there. I'm gonna take some more fills uh, towards the top. That would be awesome for the fade play back down. I was aiming covering on this trade over here. As you guys can see, like I missed the fill that I talked about. Dipping down, I was bidding 81s. Didn't get that fill. But that's not bad at all because now I'm actually going to get the fill for the short here. I do want the short, so please fill me Tesla to the upside on that short. That would be awesome. Um, and Tree Bullies Tree Service, member for six months. What's going on? I, I haven't seen you in the chat, but uh, hopefully you're doing well. Number one show, time to sell Netflix swing calls. Uh, best of luck if you take that. I, you know, when Netflix is in play and uh, as a, from a day trading perspective, when Netflix you know, is doing volume when it's in play, when it really moves. I love trading it. There's so much opportunity. Uh, today, it's kind of muted. And, you know, you either had kind of maybe that dip buy off the pre-market low. Maybe you had the short off of the high uh, from yesterday. I know you're talking swing trades. So, you know, maybe you see something. Um, you know, obviously, trade your own playbook. I'll say that over and over again. For myself, I am just basically waiting for 342 to come into play for the short. If it doesn't, then, uh, yeah, Josh, I kind of agree with you. Like, no touch. Uh, sometimes no you need touchy. to know no touch. Some no touchy. Sometimes you need to know uh, <laughs> when to uh, when to stay away there. Uh, Ryan in the chat saying at 420,000 subs, Sean has to smoke a blunt live. Um, <laughs> I'll let him answer that one. That's uh, I just he I just love did right there, guys. You got in living color, and it's legal in this province too, or in yeah. this country. Um, Luca, I'm just gonna mention something to the viewers here. G N S pumped up about this. This nice is why trade. I didn't punch out. I said, look, you gotta stop. You're gonna you're gonna take the L. You're gonna go down with the ship. I mean, the, obviously, uh, tongue in cheek when I say that. I gotta have a plan, and this was the whole idea. We get the rejection off that level. It doesn't end up being a flat top breakout. In fact, it ends up being a fake out. This is basically a bull trap here. Um, so that's what we're printing now. I took some outs here in the 25s. I'm looking to take take out some more in the mid teens, and then we'll talk about maybe uh, a test of three because three is coming in real soon. Uh, I have a feeling that I really need to hold on to this one. Um, I'm, I feel like you know, in the past with these ones, I've kind of taken out too much too quickly and watch it run. This one's this one's you know, it's still up 54 percent on the day because so it's got more to give. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. It's, it can give you a lot more. It can go down that quarter. Look, we're printing in the teens now, in the high teens. I'm looking to take out some mid teens. I've got a resting order hanging out there. So let the, let this one play out. I don't want to take out too much too quickly with this one, but uh, in all fairness, you know, I didn't have the largest position on to begin with, so there's only so much we can scalp out. The other beast that I'm in is this ear short as well. I finally get that add through 1540. I get a really good fill up there at 1543. We're right back down into like the 14s, the high 14s. So uh, this one, still out of the money on this one, if I'm being honest. So I'm still waiting for this one to reject VWAP and kind of make that head and shoulders pattern down, but it's gonna march to the beat of its own drum. So I'm gonna let that one go. The plan is, the plan is to follow the plan. Does that sound like it makes any sense? That sounds All like right. it makes complete sense. <laughs> yeah. The plan, the plan should the plan. always be to follow the plan. Right. That's why right. you have a plan. Yeah. Thank so you, have, you, you have a double plan there. You got a Sometimes plan and then I, you have a plan to follow the plan. I need someone to say it to me in order to get it. Guys, the NVIDIA. Plan NVIDIA. What can I say about NVIDIA? Someone in the chat said this is a regular NVIDIA move. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you're That's more fi more in tune with the NVIDIA moves, uh, I don't trade NVIDIA that much, but it looks great to me today. The market is only up 0.8%. NVIDIA now is up four and a quarter, looking to go four and a half. 174.92, we're just continuing to print newer highs here, guys. This is the NVIDIA three minute chart. It looks like we really got going. We weren't really doing much till that 11 o'clock hit. It looks like some algo got turned on right at 11 o'clock, some hedge fund. They decided they were going long this stock right at 11. This one started really going and the volume has been up since then. Have a look at that aggressive move up. Now here's the thing guys, the, the greater the angle of uh, the ascent, 
the equal angle of the descent usually. And in the case uh, of NVIDIA, we'll see if the market holds up. Uh, this one can hold up too. All right, so NVIDIA, I just want to mention that to you guys. Looks like G -ed GNS, yeah, GNS now coming back into the teens. Looks like we're about to get filled. Let's go. Their mid-teens, if there we go. Now we're getting 17s. Can we get 15s? I think I'm sitting at 15, so we'll see if this one prints or not. Luca. Yeah, guys, uh, just a heads up. So I did get some of that Tesla fill at 131.10s on the flush. That was pretty nice. Now I'm waiting for the break of 131 to go to 130.80. That is the level that I mapped. That is where I want to cover. And uh, I mean, if this goes to 130.50, I'll try. I'll try to hold because it's the level can only be good for so long before it actually like, you know, resolves and then goes back down. So I just feel like, you know, 130.60, 130.80, that's kind of that general area of like where I like to see it. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of waiting there for the uh, flush. I feel like we are going to get the flush. Uh, market potentially is turning around. And uh, yeah, we'll see where that one wants to go. So Tesla, yeah, Tesla is probably good for the flush down. So I'm just going to make sure that I have the right order out there for some of that position. And then put, uh, yeah, let me put a little bit more there. Um, and then maybe 90s too. Yeah, let's see if we could get 90s on some of that as well. Um, you know, the break of 131, I tell myself this, and maybe I'm wrong to say it, but I feel like these even dollar levels if stops are below, which is weird. I mean, who would put their stop there now? But some people do probably. And if they're there and if we get there and if we trigger it, you know, it just kind of gives you the flush the same way that you got the flush action right over here where it goes 131, triggers it, goes down, and then quickly retraces like liquidity vacuum to the upside. I feel like that can happen again. So it's just a matter of how far do we go. So I'm going to bid like 90s, 80s, and 60s to see if I can just get the fill on the flush through. Um, that's kind of the scalps trade perspective that I'm looking at. So that was a great trade. Heads up on WNY. It seems like we're curling back to the upside. Initial pop, drop. Now we're actually, there's actually a chance that now we actually run to 47.50 and go. So yeah, if that actually happens, I'm going to make sure that I have orders um, at 19s. I think I'm trying to get filled at. So yeah, if I could get filled at like 19s, that'd be awesome. But I'm going to try to hold some for the 48 test. Uh, I just feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's did, uh, you know, spent a lot of time curling to the upside, dipping to the low, right, making a new low, then ripping back to the upside. So it's almost as if every time it makes a new low, that's the pop. It makes a new low, then it pops again, and now it makes a new low, and then it pops again. So that's basically what I'm looking at on that one. I'm going to quickly take a look here at Apple to see where this one is. Uh, are we at a significant level? I did not trade Apple today, um, but let's see where we are here. I feel like there's a short to be had for some reason. Yeah, you know what? Let's see if I can get a short here closer to 135.69. By the way, guys, I am out of Disney. Um, because it was impulsive, I, I made money, and then we started to go back up, and I'm like, well, you know, this was an impulsive trade that I probably shouldn't really be in uh, or be too committed to. So as soon as we triggered break even, I, I took the L on that. So up on the name, but not, it's not like as much as I could have been up if we did flush into the 101s. But no problem on that one. Rainmaker saying free money Fridays. I like that, free money Fridays, although I don't necessarily believe that anything is free money in the market because the market is hard, man. You pay your tuition, you pay your dues, you get smoked, it's a lot of pain. When you do start to make money and you say, oh, that was free money, no, it wasn't, man. Think back to all the pain that you went through. Nothing is free in life. Um, I feel like air eventually is not going to be free. Like you're going to take a breath and someone's going to be like, okay, that'll be like 3150. Uh, yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen here. So yeah, guys, I am short Apple off of this little bit of a channel. What I see on this one right now is basically this level that stands out to me. It is just kind of, you know, this is uh, in the pre-market, but sort of once, twice breaking, then reversing off the morning. So it's now sort of making its way back there. You know, we shouldn't get to 135.90. Like I'll be out of this trade. This is a sort of like I'm in this trade. If we fail down, maybe I can get like closer to like uh, 35, uh, 135 50s. Take the 20 cent scalp on that one and move on. Where's Google right now? It's over 97. This is, uh, yeah, this is now like slowing down, um, uh, looking like it wants to just slow down a little bit. I want to be long, but I feel like there's better areas to be long. If we can dip down into that 96.80, I'm going to try the long again. So we'll see if that one wants to go. Let's have a look at Amazon as well to see where this one is. And uh, uh, yeah, E-Ray, 31.50. I was thinking $3, 31, no, I did say 31.50. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, but I hope that doesn't happen because then it's like, you know, life, life's already expensive enough as it is. I already make 500 trades and, you know, I can kind of afford life, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to make a thousand just to afford the air that we live. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's uh, kind of funny there. Just a heads up on Amazon, what I see here is that 95, 
below 95.50 is kind of interesting. It's like it dips and then you get these wick off bottoms. I'm sort of wondering, maybe I try that. I'm gonna try to bid just below there, see if I get a little bit of a fill down in this area. It should pop right away. So it should break 95.50 to the downside and it should quickly pop right away. Maybe get 10, 20 cents out of that. The overall market is sort of going to the downside. So obviously everything is gonna move uh, together. I'm seeing now that Apple is going back to the downside. Let me just take uh, some over here and then, uh, yeah, go for like the 50s, uh, 50s area, 10 cents to the downside. Hopefully that happens. And am I still in Tesla? I am still in Tesla. Why isn't this not breaking though? We should, uh, uh, yeah, it's, well, it's looking pretty good actually. I'm gonna hold on to that one. Uh, Rom Romza, Romza, I hope I said that right. Uh, watch Riot short. Sure, we could have a look here at Riot. Bitcoin name Riot. Uh, Riot Mara usually used uh, move together. This is, uh, oh, I see what you're saying. They're kind of a uh, uh, blow off top. Was this through six? And this man coming in clutch with the double spro, he looked at me quickly and he was like, yo. And he, he literally goes like this. I don't know if you guys could see, it says spro. He goes spro and I'm just like, absolutely. Double thumbs up here. Um, thank you so much for this. And Riot Short looking, uh, looking okay, although, Where's like the 15? I feel like I want to find like a level. Was this above six last time? No, no, this was, there was something else at six. Um, okay, no, this was not what I was thinking at six. This, eh, it does have like boom, boom. Um, I'm not really too sure about that one. I'm not gonna personally trade it, but I see that it's kind of popped to the upside, drop back down, popped to the upside, maybe bounces out around that six level, but it's uh, slow, you know, more liquidity. The range is going to be a little bit tighter, so I'm going to stay away from it for now and see, uh, you know, if I uh, get a couple other trades going on some other names here. But for the time being, we're going to go to uh, being sorry. We're going to go to Brendo at the big desk for volume leaders. Hey guys, just reading a note here on Nicola. While I have you, uh, Deal Reporter uh, reporting that uh, activist investors could be interested, uh, possible deal, and attractive. Uh, possibility for Nikola. So NKLA just popping up there on a the screener. Uh, heads up on that. Let's get you caught up on what's doing the most volume this afternoon. Very busy uh, on this board so far today. Look at that. Almost half a billion shares traded uh, so far in Hellbiz. HLBZ. Top of the list so far. 451 million. Uh, this WISA. WISA uh, approaching 300, 252 million anyways. Uh, there's GNS, Zilla, TQ's Mullen on here as well. Uh, 81 million, Tesla, LYT, CFRX, SKUs to name a few. But uh, if you remember earlier in the week, we saw only, at this time of day, we saw only a couple here that were above 100 million today, back to the normal uh, of what we usually see here, about four or five. Uh, on this list, 10,622 U.S. listings, of which 6,730 in positive territory, 2,941. Downside so far this afternoon, 951 right in the middle there, uh, basically flat on the session. What a day though for uh, GNS, still top of the gainers list here. Huge move on uh, big time volume as well, 177. But uh, Hellbiz guys, uh, almost half a billion in shares traded. While I have you, we're getting very close here guys to 375,000 subs. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join us every day. We're here for you live every single day, the market's open. Wow, we are so close. Thank you so much for that, uh, uh, Brendo. That is, uh, that's really cool, actually. Hit uh, the subs uh, button. Yeah, guys, hit the send subs. Send it to your friends. Uh, send it Family. to your friends. We're here live every single day. Well, not Saturdays and Sundays. Imagine no. we just never ended and started trading crypto <laughs> on the weekends. No, we got to sleep too and enjoy time with uh, family and friends, of course. Um, heads up, guys, I'm getting filled on Tesla to the downside, so that's pretty good. Getting the 91s, getting the 81s, waiting now for the 60s to the downside. Hopefully that happens. That'll be my best out on that one. Apple is slow, it, it kind of filled me and then popped back to the upside. I'm not gonna let this go because it's very choppy and, and you know, there's a chance that we actually do test the 50s down there, so I'm, I'm pretty confident on that one. I got the fill on Amazon dip, and so what I wanna see now is this, this should hold and go back up. Like it should not keep going to the downside because the pl my play right now on this one is the fact that this is the level. Bounce, 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 should bounce again. I'm not going for top of range. Uh, I'm gonna go just, just in front of that. If we can get back above, um, you know, back above the 50s, then we probably pop and then I'll just, I'll take like 10 cent winner on that one. So uh, yeah, definitely won't complain. And uh, WC, uh, never, uh, you know, I thought maybe we would, we would run to the upside. We kind of stopped. And that's like, a, that's like a hard level, like for some reason, like this level right here, like 13s or 14s, maybe there was like some type of seller that's trying to get out of this. 
uh, just like right over here. But you know, I'm still confident my offers are going to be in front of this line, in front of this line, and in front of that line. If we can do that, I mean, you know, I don't want to overstay my welcome, and I just feel like uh, I am making money, so I don't want to stop. But at the same time, uh, you know, if we if we fail, then I'll probably be wrong. So I just gotta gotta take the money while it's there. So yeah, everything basically working for me for the time being. Um, we'll see what happens. Jeff Ross saying 47.11 multiple tops on W. Uh, yeah, it's just you know it's. Again, just to, if anybody's tuning in again for the first time, um, the long was good. Pop, drop, hold the pre-market low, run to the upside, and the, ex the kind of magnitude of the move was extended once we broke 47. So we are back down now, and I just feel like when we sell, we're not really selling off. Like nobody's, it doesn't, it's not giving me the feel that people are selling this to sell it. They're just selling because they're long, and then they're like, oh, let me just sell the long. Um, but then when it pops, it really like goes, right? So it's like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like I feel like that's, and then eventually, if we curl to the upside, you know, there, there's my kind of asymmetrical risk on that. So that's why I like it. Um, so we'll see what happens, guys. We have 2,300 likes, and Jerry is saying yeah. going for 9k <laughs> likes today. I mean, yeah, sure. If you guys want to, feel free hit the like button. Uh, we are here every single day. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Almost at 375,000, which you guys saw on the screen just there. I hope it updates on YouTube because I'll just be like, let's go. Let's go, baby. Um, yeah, Leon saying, can you look at M? Sure, I'll have a look here at M. Uh, I know they were trading in the morning. I did not trade it. And uh, I got the Amazon fill, by the way, uh, to the upside, so that was a really good scalp there. Let's have a look here at Macy's. It's very uh, kind of choppy. The first thing that stands out to me is kind of this that's sort of setting itself up. So like, Brad. you know, strong move to the upside. Um, yeah, you can share my screen, feel free. Um, uh, strong move to the upside, little bit of a, you know, call it flag pattern if you want. So this is that general resistance, this is that general support. It is now in the middle of that area. And so even though, even though this is kind of setting up here, you know, if you want to draw a couple lines, I almost feel like, you know, it's not up that much. The dip buy could be scary. This reminds me of Alibaba yesterday when I took the L on it. If we do get there, you know, why are we there? Um, I, I almost like the short a little more above 23, but I feel like I'm late to the party, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take that yeah. one. I'm just gonna kind of be very patient with it. Uh, where's Tesla right now? Oh, we're right, actually I'll back up on to Tesla. Yeah, sure. quick. Um, yeah, so it looks like we made our way down to my exit, but we didn't cross that 315. Uh, yeah, I think it came down to 316, literally. So again, you know, you heard Luca say that. Missed by a penny. Retracing back now into the high 20s. We already took a piece out here, so I don't want to de-risk any more here on GNS. But, you know, uh, the idea here is to see if it can hold, uh, hold against this resistance zone. The resistance zone is going to be that 40 to 50 area. You know, the, look, you can see, you can even see it. Like, these, this area flips from this area. So what the, what the um, resistance area was... For this area, over, what the resistance zone was for this area over here ends up being the support zone for this area. So we're looking for a 350 to, uh, 340 to 350 break. That's when I'll, I'll know I'll be out of that one. That will be a break, break even trade for me as my cost basis is, is exactly 350. But I'm gonna keep my profit taker uh, where it is, stationary where it is, 315. I'm not gonna change that. Uh, this is the problem one though, ear really kind of going against me here. I've had to average into this one several times. Thankfully, these are not full positions, but now I am in a full position, but it's really kind of rejecting this level here. Let's see if it makes its way back through 15. My cost basis on this one is 1502. So, you know, I'm out of the money on this one. Uh, that would be putting it lightly. All right, uh, I want to mention Edu quick because people keep mentioning that in the chat. Uh, it's not really doing much, guys. Uh, it's kind of just hovering in and around this uh, 14, uh, 44, sorry, 30 area, 4440. It's been doing that for the majority of the morning uh, since basically 1130 onward. It had a couple of peaks and troughs over here, uh, but that, there was really nothing. And the range kind of resolved itself after that. It's below VWAP, so to me, it looks like it's a good short, but it's just there's no volume, and it's not doing the volume, so there's nothing we really can do about that. What? is the chat up to people still saying nvidia i definitely uh yeah i'll take that one because i gotta load all my new charts up again because this thing crashed on me yeah sure i'll, I'll quickly look so guys I'm, I'm taking the l so i made the money on apple but it's it's moving back to the upside kind of my gut feel is that i, I don't want to be in this because we're probably going to make a, a 136 test uh you know the market sold off and now it's kind of channeling i, I feel like we could easily go up um so i'm just going to quickly get out of that apple trade and reevaluate it 
Tesla, I'm not worried about this at all. If anything, I want this more short if we can pop. Um, I feel like that's, that's like awesome. It's just like, you know, uh, general kind of rule of thumb uh, for anybody wondering. And why am I long Disney? That's, oh, I had an order out. Oh no, this was a stop order. No, that is not what I want. Uh, let me just get out of that Disney very quickly. I mean, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe the long is gonna be good there. I was like, yeah, let me put a stop at 161.60. Um, but no, 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 that's not, that's not a part of the plan. So I'm just getting out of that one. Uh, yeah, so going back to that Apple thing, uh, you know, Apple, if we pop to 136, then I'm gonna try to, you know, take a short into 136.20 if that actually wants to play itself out. So I'll have orders there uh, layered to take that short if we pop. Market is moving back to the upside, so I should be getting a Tesla fill um, so sometime soon. It's, no. uh, you know, it's, it's up on the day, so I'm, I'm obviously aware of that, but the level has shown that it's been good. I'm in the last piece of it, waiting for a flush down. If I get the fill to reload at that level, great. If I don't get the fill, then it's not really a big deal. I'll just kind of roll with what I got. Uh, yeah, this, this market up move is pretty good. Hopefully yeah. it does help the, uh, the W position that I have. Maybe I'll like add a little bit more to this one, actually. Let's see if I can get this fill. I feel like right now it's giving me that vibe that it is curling to the upside. So sticking with that one, we're going to see where that one goes. NVIDIA, 175? Flying, man. Flying. What? Someone in the chat said to me, 177, wow. and I kind of dismissed it. It was at 173 and a half at the time. It's not going up four bucks. But guys, NVIDIA is moving. <laughs> I'm going to get to snow in a second because snow is flying too. 175.49, Luca. That's a high of day. Uh, this one's starting to go. Now we're up four and three quarters percent, almost. 4.66%. Uh, uh, I'll get to that. I'll leave that one for Luca, but I want to look at snow re real quick here. Someone alerting me to that in the chat. Wow, look at this move. I don't even know what the catalyst is on snow. Do we have anything here? Snowflake is attracting investor attention. Okay, what is this one? This one came in at 9 a.m. Zach's Investment Research Newswire. Snowflake is, is attracting investor attention. Here's what you should know. Has been one of the most searched stocks on Zacks.com lately. You might want to look at some of the facts that could shape the stock's performance in the near term. Okay, so this looks like more wow, of a NVIDIA fundamental a case monster. for the stock look as opposed to any news catalyst that's coming in now. NVIDIA's flying, eh, Luca? Uh, guys, sometimes the trade of the day is not really the trade that you made Ooh. money on. It's the trade that you let go for a loser which then could have been a monster loser. So guys, I was shorting this. If I held that, I would have, like there's no way I would have held to all the way up here, but maybe I would have continued to try to short this thing. And uh, yeah, it would not have been a good look. So yeah, I'm, that's why I'm just saying, wow, NVIDIA. Hopefully um, somebody's long this from like 169 bottom area, because after move. that breakout to the upside, and here's the thing guys, when you, when you tell yourself, you know, it broke the highs, I'm gonna short for the move back down, it should move back down almost right away. If it doesn't, then maybe there's a chance. I mean, with large caps, after 11, when they break the highs, they are a little bit more trendy than small caps. It is NVIDIA, it's not this random GNS trade that can you know, fly around and whatever. So what I wanted to see is, even though it did this, what I wanted to see is up, 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 down, then down. Like, that's what I wanted to see. So the fact that it went higher and it didn't give me a good feel, it did come back down, but then did this, I mean, it was just off to the races, right? So kind of a general rule of thumb, a lot of, a lot of traders say this, um, you know, obviously I'm a scalper, so for myself, I'm just kind of in and out, but a lot of traders, intraday swing traders, what they'll say is, you know, don't fight the trend after mm -hmm. 11, because it sort of shows you that, look, it is, gonna, it is gonna now float, and the magnitude or the velocity of that floating is uh, dependent on, you know, how many people actually like this, what key level that it's at. So I'm going to pull up Netflix as like another example for this. It's like it's not floating up as much as I thought that it could, which is maybe a small tell that the short on Netflix could be good if we do get to like 342, 43 or whatever. But uh, look, look at Netflix, man. It's just floating, right? So it's not really selling off. After 11, which is like around over here when we came on the show, it's just now floating like at VWAP. So, I mean, Netflix is very kind of like, uh, kind of like in this, you know, tight range. And I do just expect it to, you know, kind of tighten up and then either float up or float down. I'm going to stick to my guns on this one. I still do have the order out. I'm pretty sure I have that order out. Yeah, if we get to like over here, I like the short, which is like high a day, um, you know, short into kind of high a day and then maybe get a potential uh, short there. You know, this is, uh, this is not NVIDIA. Nvi I hope it's not. If I get that short, I hope it doesn't become NVIDIA. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens on that one. Uh, tease trade, Baluka, if you abort the short, the long can't be wrong. I know, man, I know. <laughs> NVIDIA, man, if abort the short, the long can't be wrong. I should have flipped. 
Sean was even talking on the morning show about doing a better job at flipping on his trades. Yeah, um, me too. I know where he comes from because it's so hard as a scalper to flip because we literally take the trade. If it works, great, we're out of the trade. If it doesn't, we just get out, we look for another trade. So it's really hard to like be committed when, it's, when I'm wrong. I'm just like, okay, whatever. But, uh, you know, yeah, man, if abort the short, the long can't be wrong. From 172 to 176, that is, that's a $4 move. Wow. I love it. Wow, I love Sharif. it. All right, guys. Uh, wow. In two shorts, still hanging out. Uh, I'm looking at adding to this GNS, if I'm being honest here. It looks like it might be bouncing and rejecting off that 50 period. Let's go ahead and add to it. We're already in a winner. So I'm going to add a little bit more for the flush through what I'm predicting to be that 315 level. We rejected off it last time. I'm gonna have to pack my patience for this one because it's gotten to be a bit of a slow mover here. My out, my out's gonna be the exact same thing through the break of this uh, 360, 370 area. Last time I had my stop set at 371. Yeah, that's right, Algos, I set 371, come hunt me. Come um, hunt me. Yeah, so adding to this position just so I have a bit more on because you know I had taken too much off to be to be honest it wasn't going to be really, really worth the trade okay there we go ear come on down you're the next contestant on the price is right there we go <laughs> baby uh, we're talking that 15 break let's go let's go we want that 15 break and we want to flush all the way down into the 14s this one can get going in a hurry so we're waiting for the rejection on this yes it reclaimed VWAP this is the trick though I mean the spread is so wide, so if I wanted to punch out right now, I'm looking at a, a 16 penny loss between the bid and the ask there. So, you know, sometimes it gets me excited and then it rejects off that 15 anyway. Uh, gain uh, saying here, today the market movement very slow. What do you think? I don't know. I think we kind of bounced off uh, a bottom that we've been kind of making in the pre-market. We kind of rejected that bottom and basically from 9.30 onward, uh, we've been printing to the high side, kind of consolidating now, but you know, we have a 39.11 bottom and 39.54 top. So some decent range on the market today, I wouldn't I say. It's completely this. slow. Zaxi saying, I can't hear you. Um, nobody's complaining about my mic and my mic is not muted, so I'm good to go. Saad Mahmoud saying, I would first move my target to 1475, 1480 instead. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, my cost basis is 1502, so, you know, 1475 would be an interesting area to take. In fact, you know, I think that you might actually have a point on that. So let's go ahead and put 1476 uh, and we'll take out this many shares. Yeah, if it makes its way down there, great. If not, uh, Zaxi was joking. Oh, say it louder. I got, I got excited <laughs> and, you know, his ear, I guess, paid the price for that. Sorry, Zach. Uh, you know how it is around here. It's exciting times, exciting moves on these stocks. Okay, so GNS, sorry to flip between these, but I'm managing them. GNS, all right, so it, our ad at 35s end up paying dividends, at least for the moment. We're back down into 30s. Let's see if we can break through that quarter dollar again. I think we can stare 15s in the face. Luca. Uh, somebody's saying, can you talk about NEO? So I don't sure. really, I mean, that 11 is interesting. There's some type of reserve seller, but then they pull it, they let it trigger the 01 stops, then it goes back below. It's pretty uh, slow right now, so I'm not gonna have a trade on this, but I kind of feel like, because I know somebody in the chat's like, oh, what if we break 11 up or down? I'm just looking at this, you know, anytime a, a, like a, a reserve kind of shows up like this and then it pops and goes back below, pops and goes back below, I mean, now it's sort of, you know, maybe going back to the upside. It's just, it's just, you know, middle of the day. I don't wanna, I don't see anything here on Neil. So yeah, that, that's basically my thoughts on that. I'm not gonna take a trade on it, but I am long Alibaba. Uh, this is, uh, you know, long this level here based on kind of this general idea, like higher low, higher low. This would be the higher low if we wanna make a move back to the upside. Uh, so I'm pretty light on the position. I'm not really over committed to it. It's the middle of the day, volume is pretty light. So I'm taking the long here. If it goes against me, no problem. I'm not gonna add to it. I'm just gonna wait. If this wants to pop to, you know, 11970s, I'm not gonna hold for 20s. I'm just gonna try to get out over there uh, for the full position. So yeah, if this pops back to the upside, great. I'll take my money. Um, if it, you know, drops below 119, then I'll take the L on that. So it's basically a one-to-one, -one, nothing too special, pretty light on the position. So again, so not really too worried. Uh, Tesla, I missed the fill, man. That's that's unfortunate. I was trying to get, I think, 44s probably. Uh, that feels like, I, I don't even know. Where's my order log? Yeah, probably 44s. But uh, now back down, I mean, you know, I'm still aiming for 60s if it wants to flush. That is just because this is sort of that bottoming end 
of the range. So it sort of filled the 90s, the 80s, the 60s will be the final. That's the final position on it. So uh, that'll be my best out. Somebody was also asking, Luca W, what are you doing with this one? Mm. Um, that's a great question. I am uh, going to continue to take profits in the top of this continue range. To print, baby. I'm going to make sure that I hold. Uh, yeah, now we're really going. That was, that was pretty nice there. Um, okay, yeah, so I, you were asking before, and I'm kind of late because now we're actually moving to the upside, but um, I said 46.40 as a rule of thumb when we were over here because we popped to the upside, but again, every time it made a low, it popped. So the last thing I want to do is have a stop at the low, and then I get triggered out, and then it pops on me. So, you know, I put the stop in from before because I was watching multiple different things, but at this point, I don't want to have that stop in anymore, and it's not even for the correct amount of size that I have. But yeah, we are now moving to the upside, which is pretty nice. If we break 47.50, I think we run to 48s. If we break 48s, we're going to finally get that pop to maybe 48.50, uh, maybe high a day test there, right? So we'll see what happens. I just feel like it's, it's shown that you know on the pops, you want to sell it because there's a chance that it does go back down. But if it does keep going, this was the general idea. Load, 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 out, 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 and then hold some uh, for the move back up. So I'm going to make sure that I have the right, uh, the right kind of uh, orders out there to sell this thing. I just feel like, you know, what was the high before? It was 48, then it was like 48, 40, oh sorry, 47.90, you know, maybe 40, 47, like a break of 50s for 47 and, uh, and three quarters. Um, let me see if I can get some out over there. And then, yeah, uh, anything above 48 will be a gift. Anything about 48 will be a gift, so that'll be awesome. Uh, Pass overdose saying Luca Snap and Meta moving towards the top of day break together. Yeah, yeah let's have and a look. And Microsoft too. And Microsoft? Microsoft is super strong. 238.81 high, 238.66 is where we're printing Meta. Meta has been consolidating for a little bit. I mean, you know, I feel like I want to. Yeah, go for it. It's cool, I, man. It's cool. I, wanna, I was like, I feel like I want to short Meta. Yeah, but I'm like, of is course. It okay You're always in my good books. Man, if I, come uh, on. If yeah. I short this thing right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's you know what? This is the same kind of like like similar to Tesla in the sense. This is the area, the topish area. Yeah, exactly. So maybe I missed the chance. But if I can get 138.25 ish. Uh, maybe I'll do 24s for the short there. It's very clear. I mean, if we break 138.50, I have to be out of this trade. There's been so many times that I've short meta into high a day, and then it breaks high a day, and it keeps going. So I'm not getting myself into that madness. Uh, fill me on the short here. If it breaks, this is a 25 cent risk for myself. Stop will definitely be in play. I feel like there's a very good chance that it like fills me and then runs and stops me out right away. But if it does, it does. No problem there. It's all good because I'm long W, long Alibaba. That's working. Tesla short still in the money, waiting for Meta short, and uh, Microsoft earnings is Tuesday. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh wow! Uh, next I love Tuesday. all these earnings, and I'm doing all the Earn. earnings uh, board right now for for the the early morning show, so I get to see all the oh, yeah. the previous night. Guys, Seems we sure. just printed. Let's drop some money down on our GNS short. That ad at 35 ended up working. We take some out. Uh, through the quarter dollar there. So now we're holding, uh, you know, we're still holding a bit of the position here. The idea is we're just scalping on the way down. I'm not removing my profit taker at 15 because I think that that is a very key uh, support level. If we break there, uh, I want to be part of that move. And then I'm actually not going to take any more out here. In fact, I'm, in fact, I'm going to look to add, but I'm going to keep my eye out on um, the change in trend, which could be consistently higher highs or higher lows. I'm gonna look for a trend change. I wanna see continued movement to the south side or something to show me, you know, this is rejecting along, like for example, a rejection off the 50 period, which is done several times now, or the 200 period, which is done. Look at that, look at that flat top that brewed at the 200 there for like a good part. How long was that? 11.45 to 12, yeah, half an hour. And then it rejected beautifully, look at that. I should have been adding on all these pops, I'm a goof. I should have been adding on each and every one of these, but um, you know, such wasn't the case. In any event, I'm looking for a trend change. Otherwise, I'm gonna really hold everything until this 315 break, and then I wanna scalp below that. G S N that is. All right, the other trade, ear, kind of like holding. I wanna show you guys this trend line that I drew a little bit here on my side chart. I think it'll help uh, help the case, uh, help the, yeah, the argument for my case. Oh, this is GNS, that's not what I wanna do. This, it's this one, ear, there we go. So I had a little trend line drawn there, and you know how support becomes resistance, yada, 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 you guys know the whole thing. And so now it's rejecting off the former uh, support line. Now it's become the resistance line, so I'm looking for print possibly down into this 50 period here. I think Saad Mamu was telling me to take uh, uh, profit in the, in the three quarter dollar area. I've got one set up there, and then I'm gonna be looking definitely for how it acts around that 50 period, but the spread is so wide 
on this that it's kind of tricky to trade. So if you are following me in this trade, really be careful because you can get cut up, cut up I mean, getting in and out on this one. All right, guys, we're two points off the market high today. I haven't talked about the market in a little while. 39.54 and a quarter is the top where we were just at 39.52 and a half now, 51 and a half. But point is, we're kind of in this consolidation range uh, nearer the top. Uh, stocks like um, Microsoft and Meta have really been holding us afloat. Google was relatively strong earlier in the day. Uh, but, you know, even Tesla, geez, Tesla's up 3%. You know, I mean, Tesla's strongest of the bunch here. No, Google is. Google is the strongest of the bunch. The weakest of the bunch is Microsoft, is uh, Apple, up half a percentage point. Let's bring in uh, the uh, big caps. Let me just move this quickly. Things don't happen as quickly as I would like on this computer. All right. Okay, there we go. Um, so 238.84 are the top on Microsoft. 130, we're actually, you know, Apple was the laggard, but look at this. Now Apple's starting to pick high of days here. 135.95 is a high of day. We're at 90s. Uh, obviously, we made a bit of a higher high here in the pre-market, but that doesn't count. 136.29. So, you know, if we break through there, all the better. But it looks like things are headed to the high side. I don't see a... a a bear case right now on the market, at least. I mean, you heard Lucas saying he wants to short meta off those off those highs. That makes sense to me uh, from a stock specific perspective. But in terms of the market, I mean, yeah, you could say kind of we're rejecting off that 39.54. But the way I see it is maybe we're kind of holding that area for a flat top breakout, especially when the flat when the when the volume starts coming in during that later period in the afternoon. So. We'll keep an eye out for that. We'll keep an eye out for these shorts and everything in between. Luca. Can I draw what I want to see on W? I think I can. So let me just draw it here very quickly. Manifest it, I'm going to manifest this into reality. Um, I want this to like, you know, okay, down, right? Go to, actually, let me do a green, a green thing very, very quickly here. Custom pen. Is that green? It is blue. No, no, no. We need green. Green to the moon here. <laughs> I like here. that. It's so uh, superstitious. Yeah, lime green. There we it. go. I love okay. It. Little bit of a dip, because you know nothing goes up forever. Then curl, curl, and just boom to the upside, and then break the high, run the stops, and uh, let me draw, I mean, where Trade my arrows money. will be somewhere over there along the way, but if that happens, then it'll do exactly what I've been waiting for this whole time. Um, and there's, uh, I know there's, there's people that are probably short this name. Uh, whether you're watching the show or not, best of luck. Hopefully I don't lose, but obviously, <laughs> never speak in certainties. You can always yeah. lose uh, when you trade, but you know, hopefully that does come to fruition. Oh, Neil is like, I'm short it. Well, Neil. <laughs> oh. Ah, okay, okay. Well, Neil, best of luck. We'll see who wins on that one. Uh, always a good time, man. Always a good time. Ricardo saying Diz. I'm assuming you're talking about Disney. Let's have a look here at Disney. Wow, what a good, what a good cover. That was like, this was not supposed to happen. That was a, that was a stop that triggered there. Um, what a cover at 33s because it went to 102s. So yeah, sometimes your impulsive moves are not the right idea. So stay away from those impulsive moves. John Spruill saying drawing lines on Lambos. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm gonna continue to draw lines uh, and hopefully those lines get me a Lambo at some point in the yes, future. Sir. Although it'll have to come after the Ferrari because Ferrari will definitely be my first purchase. I gotta agree with that actually. Yeah, I'm, on, I, I'm on board with you on that. And we don't agree about a lot. We don't see yeah, eye a lot, yeah. a lot, but the Ferrari thing, dead, dead on that with that. Uh, just a heads up, Google is uh, sort of doing this little sideways action. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start building into a long for the move back to 97. Uh, if it wants to run to 97 and break the 97s, then I'll, I'll try to offer out above 97 over there. I feel like it's just floating around, so I'm not going to be too heavy on the position, but uh, it just feels like the right thing to do there. So we'll see what, where that one wants to go. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, and I'm going to add to it too. If we keep dipping down, which we are right now, let's see if I get some 85s. Uh, film me on the 85s, that would be awesome. Uh, third Eye Brand, what's going on? Saying Roku double top or bull flag? Let's have a look. I haven't huh. looked at Roku today. Neither have this I. This is on the NASDAQ, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Let's see if this wants to load. Uh, Roku on the NASDAQ, $51. You're saying double top or bull flag? Now, are you talking about, maybe let's look at the 15. Like retrace, though. It's too much of a retracement on to be a bull flag. It's a V-shaped, it's a V-shaped retracement. If you zoom in on that, I don't yeah. know if they're talking about that or talking about what you I, just had. I almost want to just do this just okay. to make sure I see this correctly. So let me like kind of zoom out over here to show the 15. Maybe because this is, I feel like, like it's like I this and then, and then this. Yeah, so are you this. saying double top or bull flag? Eh, that's mm. like, yeah. I don't really run with patterns personally. I just kind of scalp in and out like a maniac. But uh, 
I mean, if you think that the long is going to be good, I almost want to say that it, it looks more like a double top to me. Yeah, it does, and, like, and here's why. I mean, if, you're, if that's the continue, okay, so here's the first flag. Yep, can you do, yeah, can yeah, you do here's that? Here's the, the first, the first flag. flag. And then yep. look at the second flag. You've basically given back the entire thing. It's a V-shaped re retracement. How can that be a flag? Yeah, it almost like looks a like an inverse W yeah. that's being created. Double top so if you, if you take a W and turn it upside down, is that like, you know, what does that mean? That means the, the, the W has not worked there. So I, I don't know, you know, kind of go with that one. But uh, yeah, not too sure. I'm not going to have a trade on this name. Not really too interested in it. I mean, you know, Sharif has his thoughts. I have mine. You have yours. Just make sure that you're trading your own playbook. You and, uh, you know, recycling levels, that makes sense. I almost feel that, you know, from an intraday perspective, the long should be good. It should not break through 51. Like, if it breaks through 51, yeah. then it's like it's not really looking good for longs, and then it's probably going to go run and test maybe like 50 area to the downside. So, yeah, we'll see what happens on that one. I'm, I'm noticing that I'm getting a bunch of fills here, so maybe some news is coming Something in. Something uh, just topped off on the market right yeah. there. I saw a huge spike on a wow. lot of these big tech everything and on the market, and, everything and then the it just right, right back down. It was like a quick eight-point move. What time is it? It's one o'clock. Okay, I think there may be a Fed speaker today at one o'clock. Yeah, Allow me a moment that here just weird, to pull it up. That's when you know your levels are good. Uh, Harker was speaking in the morning. Okay, so Apple. Fed speaker, US. Apple filled me and dipped. <laughs> Let's okay, go. Okay, so hold on here. Uh, Fed Walker, uh, F Waller, excuse me. Fed not? Chair Waller. Not out. sure of their first name speaking at one o'clock at an economic event. Bangers. Not sure what they are saying Bangers. or if they're saying anything or what this market move is, but things popped off to the high side. We didn't really make a new high of day on the ES or any of these other big tech stocks, but they're all pretty close to high of day, guys. I mean, uh, except Google, which is retraced now, you know, about a dollar or so below that. All right, guys, ear is the short we've been working on all morning. Banger. And now it is really starting to come close to our first profit taking target, but the spread, super spready on this one. We're talking about a 13 penny spread at the moment, so we may cross and I may get nothing. So uh, I'm gonna continue to watch it. GNS, the other short we have on, this looks like a 50 period rejection to me, at least again, here we go. We retrace to the 50 period, and just like we did it on the time prior, we reject, and so I'm not gonna uh, uh, adjust my uh, profit taker. I'm gonna keep it at 15s, even though we're still in the mid 20s, and I still haven't gotten anything for a while on that. So GNS and EAR are my plays. Uh, they're slow moving, but we still have another hour on the show, so hopefully they'll be able to print uh, before that. Let's have a look uh, to see if anything is coming in on these big tech names. Uh, I'm just going to check the chat real quick to see if Brendo said anything. Nothing to speak of. Somebody no, in the chat, the uh, Doge called member, saying um, it's tough to believe you when your name is Doge called, but uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, 225 hikes in quarter one. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's. Uh, uh, maybe that's that's what happened there guys. I just want to cover what, something is that quickly. What someone said? Yeah, somebody in the chat was saying that I just want to quickly cover this I just got so many different fills all at once and I was like wait a second What is happening and they were all instantly in the money and they were longs and shorts So it's kind of funny when you have like the levels So I got the Apple fill at 98 and it instantly flushed down. I was like, I'll take that win Okay, sick I got the Google fill or I was already long and it quickly I filled me and then popped to the upside Taking the win on that scalp as well. That's pretty good. And uh, what else? Oh, I am short now AMD, which I, I don't necessarily think this is good, but I'm, I'm averaging into, I have more uh, shorts to be had here, yeah. So I'm kind of averaging into 69 uh, with the idea that 69 could potentially break and then, and then revert back there. So not really worried. Oh, and Meta as well. Meta popped, filled me on the short, instantly back down. Meta's the only one that I'm still holding of the bunch because I really, really like this short. So I got it, covered some, taking the small win on that and now waiting uh, to see if this wants to go back up or back down. I did have a stop and play on Meta for above 138.50, so let me just reevaluate that one uh, to put it into place for the rest of the position because I covered some of it. So yeah, if we break 38.50 to the upside, I'll be out of the rest of that position. If it goes back down, I'm gonna ride what I have here. Uh, going back to W, let's have a look on this one. This is kind of curling back to the upside here. My orders are where, they're, where they are. I feel like I'm just going to leave that. I did cover Tesla as well on that flush. I was bidding 60s, but it just kind of flushed and stopped. So I was like, why is this stopping? I might as well like get a little bit more out. I still am in some of the position waiting for 60s to come to fruition. So we'll see if, uh, if this wants to actually finally fail and go back down. If not, no big deal there. Um, so W long, three shorts on board, waiting for AMD 98s. It did not come, now it's actually going to the downside. I would love to, if I can get below 80s right now, so like 68, 68, 70-ish areas, 
on that on that short, I'll be pretty happy. So just down over here. I mean, what I see on this is is the fact that this is kind of like uh, you know, it's like I want the short above this. And then I want to cover back into the into the region over there. So I don't believe that this is going to skyrocket to the upside. And uh, you know, Nvidia is the strong of the bunch. Obviously, like this is a very strong move to the upside. Somebody before was asking, "What do you think of AMD?" Uh, well, I think short. So uh, I actually put these orders in after whoever called that. So thank you so much for that one. That was pretty awesome. Um, so this one, I feel like that's going to work for me. It's already in the money, so it's looking pretty good. Let's see if this wants to dip down into the uh, mid 70s for the uh, the fill on that. I'm going to go back to Google to see if this one, uh, where are we? The 80s are good, man. The 80s are good. Maybe I let that go too early, but it is what it is. I'm going to bid right. down at 80s again as well and see if we get the fill. All right. Um, someone in the chat, who is it? Cactus wants me to look at COSM. This was a mover from this morning and it goes back a day. So let's start with the daily chart quick because it just broke VWAP. So the breakout's are already in progress. So if you don't want the history lesson or the levels go and punch in. But this has been moving for a while. It goes back to November. Uh, they did a split, I believe, back on either the, the 19th or the, or the 15th, I think of the 19th of December. And there, that's why the chart is skewed a little bit. But you've been having basically a sell-off for the better part of a month and a half now or a month or so. Yeah, a month and a half since November, uh, the end of November. But today we're getting a bit of a move. I'm not sure what the catalyst is on this. Uh, but anyway, so where are the levels? The level that strikes me right away is that 580 level, $6 level. You have the 50 period on the daily at six. You also have the price action, the peak here at six. So stick, six stands out to me like a sore thumb. Um, where are we price action wise? We're 406 days high. We're at 381 right now, which means we're closing in on days high. The volume is definitely starting to pick up. Uh, it had been basically dead since around, you know, 10.45 or so, and the real volume came in obviously at 9.30 and so, but look at that. Volume bars are starting to increase as we get that retake of VWAP and uh, the creating of newer highs. It was that, I wanna say, three and three quarters area that we had to break to kind of create that newer high, but uh, we, we're there. So let's see if we can hold it. Uh, I'll be looking at this one, COSM. In fact, I'm gonna replace Carvana on my SAR chart here, COSM with that all right so let's move that off uh, yeah i don't really have a play here you know you know, like i have to see a setup i'm not just going to punch in because it retook vwap uh so if you're looking for a setup for me i mean i don't got one uh, i don't know if luca wants to uh punch chime in. in on that uh, which one cosm cosm yeah. um yeah i know no, you I'm, like punching up well no 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 there's yeah. a time and a place to punch yeah. in i don't feel good about um this no one, this one right? doesn't feel good at all to be yeah. honest it's uh i feel like it's just you know four is that area where it did an over under this is a reverse split they did a reverse split yeah. i feel like yeah they did. um four is an interesting level like we we popped above four and then quickly dipped back i feel like that could happen again that's kind of my my thoughts on that one um, Jeff saying, bring Sean back. Sean will be on in, uh, in another hour. Uh, two to four shortly. is the, uh, yeah, shortly uh, for the closing show there. We are just uh, nursing these midday positions, man. Meta failing to the downside. Oh, nice move. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm covering the rest here. That was pretty solid into 138 there. Uh, can't complain on that one. Tesla slowly going. I'm probably going to get the fill here. Uh, let me just cover this over here. Why not? This is a nice little win on that one. And uh, yeah, W moving back to the upside. So now, uh, one position on board, waiting for Google Phil, waiting for Netflix. Somebody before was asking, Luca, Netflix, any, any new thoughts on it? No, not really. I mean, I don't want to go long now because I feel like that pop is where I would have kind of scaled it out anyways. Uh, but again, if it is respecting this kind of general area, uh, like bottoming, like bounce, 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 you know, maybe bounces again and then pops, but it is just in a very, very tight range. So I don't want to like, uh, you know, like get, I don't want to take any trades on it right now. The only trade that I will take on it is if we rip to the upside, uh, take that trade and then look for the fade. But other than that, nothing crazy. Charles saying Disney, nice spot to short. Maybe, let me have a look. I mean, I did it before, why not again? This is maybe a double top that's being created over here. Little bit of a double top in front of that 102. I just feel like, yeah, maybe you could justify a short here. I don't know if I want to short this. If we get to 102 and break 102 to the upside, I really like that short. So I'm going to like try to short it above 102 if we can get there. Uh, that's just my general feel on that one. So we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, let's update you on this ear trade. We get that fill through the break oh, of let's go. Four, 14.75. So we get that fill. Awesome. But yeah. Still very spready. It took a big cross for me to, to actually get that fill. My next profit taker is going to be at that 
right below that 14 and a half. In fact, I should probably adjust it to above 14 and a half. I probably add one. Yeah, let's go ahead and add one here at 14, uh, 53, let's say. Okay, so we got that profit taker here. I'm out of GS, GNS. This one broke the, uh, the peak over here. So created a new high. That goes against my uh, thesis. So I'm out, I gotta admit when I'm wrong. Uh, this one ends up being exactly I, usually we don't say anything on here, but I'm exactly flat on this trade. So all the profit that I made from this big move down, I gave back by adding here. I, I scalped a little bit here, but I'm, I gave it a bit more room um, away from my entry, which was, I believe the ad was at 34s. I gave it to, where did I get out? 46s? Did I get out 46? I got out 48s. Okay. I'm I just reclaimed this. the half dollar. It's going back to that level. Uh, Lucas says he's long, but yeah, I just long. want to mention that keep an eye out on this level. Okay, so this area that we consolidated here between, you know, 11, I want to say 45 to about 12, 15 or so, so a good, better part of half an hour, that 365, 370 area seemed to be an area of resistance. So be careful on that. Back to ear. Um, yeah, so this one still stair stepping down uh, oh, below VWAP. Big red candles is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing lower lows. I'm seeing lower highs. It's moving in the right direction. We have a bit of a deformed head and shoulders where like the left shoulder is like way bigger than the right shoulder. It looks like a bodybuilder who took like bad steroids, right? Like where it's like all like deformed and stuff. Oh, I've, seen, like I've seen some guys at the gym like that. Uh, different time, different place though. Um, so anyway, it looks, it looks right. It looks like it's solid, but it's very slow moving and very spready. Some people are yelling COSM and they have the right to be. This one's continuing to head to the high side. 394 now is uh, the little high on that. Peak 406 is high of day. That was made earlier on at 9.51 a.m. That was a big wick and a huge rejection off that. COSM looks good. Concurrently with that, the market just kind of tanked a little bit uh, here. And we, have, we also have news on ear, but I'll get to the market quickly. The mar market kind of sh rejecting off that 54 and moving down into 43s. Recall Fed Waller is speaking. Um, I'm not sure if it's a male or female or, or what their gender is, but you know they're, they're making uh, pronouncements with respect to the interest rate, the upcoming interest rate hike. I believe the chat was saying something like they supported um, a 25 basis point hike. I asked Dan Emmons if they were a voting member. I still haven't heard from him, so tag me. Uh, if you're able to there, you're seeing some retracements on Microsoft. You're seeing some retracements on Meta, but you're not seeing retracements money, on these money, profits, money, baby, money, as we money, continue. Money. Money. To, pray, to print on this ear short. There we go. Fail, fail, fail. This one is good. Going well, Luca. Yeah, guys, uh, obviously mar market giving a little bit of a turn down there. So I'm getting the Google fills, and I just feel like Google is the best long to be in. If this market continues to sell off, Google will obviously follow suit. But if we do get a little bit of a pop, then, uh, you know, this one might be the first one to pop there. So I'm going to sort of scalp this uh, with my eyes on this one. Uh, GNS, I'm long this. With the, with the sole purpose of, you know, maybe it gets back to the top end here of like 65s and then wants to maybe run into fours. I just, you know, Michelle was like, oh, 350. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to just take a long. So I took a long, took another add to it. If we do break back below like 340s, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to be out of that trade uh, just because it's not something that I want to hold on to, but I will, you know, if it works for me, great. If it doesn't, no problem. But I'm just really more concerned with this Google. Uh, the 80s area is kind of where I like the long for then a move back into 97. Um, so we'll see what happens. If it continues to fail to the downside, no problem. Then I will, I will take, the, take the L on that. Uh, heads up on W, it is kind of moving back to the downside. So I did have order scale to get out of that in front of 47. I'm hoping for the 48 move to the upside uh, and then a break. But, you know, now it's back down. So not a big deal. I'm just recycling over and over again. So can't complain. Things are good on that one. We'll see, uh, we'll see where that one wants to go. Somebody's saying BBBY is ripping. Let's have a look here at BBBY. This is at $3.40. Oh, it's not ripping. Come on. Ripping to the downside, maybe, is what you said? Um, I don't know about that one. Okay, yeah, let's move on. Uh, NVIDIA, one curling to the downside. Maybe now you could argue that there's some type of short to be had on it. I don't see it. I see, like, a, a pullback, and then we could easily rip back through 175. 
Not gonna trade this one, I'm just gonna kinda let it be. AMD, I probably let this one go a little bit too early, but we're now moving back to the upside, so I'm not really too sure what to think on that one. I just feel like, okay, where are we here? Yeah, GNS probably stops me out. If this goes five cents lower, I'll be stopped out of this one. But uh, Google, yeah, nice move to the upside on Google. Okay, hey, let's go baby, spend the money. Right this is back running to the to, highs. Uh, yeah, see, that's go. what I thought was gonna happen. Okay, we're good, we're good here. Uh, yeah, we are we are good. Let's print um, that 97 I so I can get out. Yeah, go ahead. What Dan, do you got there? Dan Emmons in the chat saying, at Sharif, US, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen stating, failure to address the debt limit could lead to a recession. I love how, yeah, like, they're obviously. dangling the recession in front of, like, you know, they're using it as bait. Anyway, uh, point is, that's a statement that uh, she made, and, you know, Markets may or may not have moved on that. Obviously, uh, Janet Yellen, one of the voices, obviously, that's being listened to a lot by uh, analysts and market participants. All right, we're out of this ear trade. We get so far here, we've got bottom wick at this location. Obviously, you know, it could continue to go down. My thesis is it will. Uh, but, you know, for just to lock in profits, I'm out of this trade. I'm looking for a decided break, though, of that 14, that 1380, 14 area. Have a look at this trough right here before the big retracement. That's the area where buyers overwhelm sellers. And uh, we made a big move off that bottom. So that was a 1380 bottom. And we moved up to almost 16 bucks, basically rejecting off 16 there. And then giving me that nice, look at that. Look at that ad up there, Luca. That looks good, man. Come on. That's oh, it. That's nice, Ooh, right? We so, back, something uh, whispered in your ear for that short there. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one, we're right, right at that one down pumped about uh, this trade here um yeah the, these ones they always seem to play out these uh, flat bottom breaks luca all right sorry um cosm man continues to go where is the chart for it this one now has broken through the four dollar area i believe it has made a new high yes previous high was 406 current high 415 this one squeezing up 32 percent on the day let's put it in uh to the uh platform here and get some more data on it all right do we have any catalyst i don't see any catalyst on this one so it's a technical breakout or a squeeze um the float on it just so for you're aware i'm seeing a float of 1.3 million shares that's micro float that's causing me a little bit to suspect so we're going to go ahead and use floatchecker.com to see what other data is out there Let's go, computer. Mm, w flushing. Um, okay, so I'll just have to wait for that yeah. one, and then let's go. We need float checker. Where's my float checker? There we go. Okay, awesome. All right, floatchecker.com, C-O-S-M, and then we'll concurrently get the, um, the short interest. Okay, so float, Yahoo Finance saying 2.92, Finviz saying 6, Ameritrade saying 1.3, Morningstar saying 10.9, and the Wall Street Journal saying 6. 6.89. Either way, it's small. Um, whether it's micro float or mini float or small float, whatever the adjective you want to use to describe it is, it's small. Uh, the short interest on it here varies from about five and a half to 10. So yeah, the short interest, not that great on it. But nonetheless, it is making uh, a very aggressive move. 427 now is the high. This one is squeezing. This one looks like it is squeezing, to be honest with you. Here is the three minute chart. Let's look at the one minute chart. Did we even get a red candle here on this one minute chart? Yeah, we got a few here and there, but the, the majority of them are green. 429, 430, we're continuing to print new highs. Let's look at the daily on this. I think I looked at the daily earlier and I said that the, the obvious level was at six, six and a half, and then above that we're looking at, you know, 10 and then, so we got room. We definitely have room. It's a former runner again, back to November. It had that big move up all the way to 22. And then you had that V shape Christmas tree style uh, retracement right back down to the breakout level of around five, 430 or so. Uh, I don't have, I don't have a trade here. Uh, I'm not punching in long here, Luca. Yeah, it's uh, funny to see that I'm like, yeah, no, maybe it's going to go, and then, like, it just uh, goes. I, yeah, no go, trades on yeah. it for myself as well, guys. I uh, took a bunch of fills uh, while Sharif was talking there. Um, let me just uh, cover the Disney, I, I was shorting off the 102. I just kind of covered. Um, it just felt really good for, like, the, the move back down. Uh, it feels like, you know, it's 10, 101.60 is kind of that area that it was, like, you know, for some reason that was my stop. But bounce, bounce to the upside. Now it's in this sort of little bit of a channel right over here. So 102. 
Um, kind of, you know, call it what you want. It obviously is in the uptrend. Uh, I was just like short into 102. I'm basically risking, like, you know, I was in 95s. I'm going to risk 102 or just above. So, you know, when you give me the, uh, the 10 cent win, two to one on the scalp, I'll take that trade. Pretty good. I'm going to Amazon short as well off the top of this range. I'm going for 45s. If I can get that flush to the downside, that would be great. GNS, I'm still in this, but it's probably going to stop me out right now. I'll take the L on that, no problem. Uh, yeah, okay, that's the Amazon flush. That was pretty nice there. So flush into the bottom of the range. Let's see if this area wants to hold now. Do I go long here? Where's the market? Market is, is really selling off, so Google is, is now going to probably go against me there. So let me just, uh, you know what, I'll revisit this position. Actually, no, I feel like the long on Google is good, but where's the, yeah, you know what, let's add more to this Google. Never mind that one. Let me just add a little bit more on this Google trade. If this one keeps selling off, then you know I'll, I'll definitely have to get out of that one. But yeah, Amazon short was a banger there off of the range that it's in. Uh, GNS just stopped me out uh, below the, uh, sorry, on the Amex. GNS stopped me out below 40s, no problem, take the L. This is like I was hoping that we would fly. Again, GNS has the potential, maybe we fly. But uh, yeah, probably not. I mean, I was probably better. GNS is a genius for stopping me out, and I'm losing money, but they are not. Um, but yeah, I should have been in COSM, man, because COSM is like flying. Now I want to short this thing, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to short that. I'm not got myself into too much of this. Uh, Google is, uh, it's now or never kind of for the bounce. If this market bounces back to the upside, my average is not too bad on it. Uh, we already had, had the kind of dip and rip on that. So like dip and then rip into 97, cover, 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 still holding some for the move back over 97. Didn't get it. Now we flush again. If we pop back to the upside, that's going to be a banger. Uh, you know, the market, that was a pretty, it was like a little bit of a sell-off, bounce back, make a low, rip back to the upside. So let's see that rip back to the upside. That'll be awesome. Uh, not really too sure what to think with this Google position. But uh, yeah, maybe, you know, now that we kind of did that, let me, uh, yeah, let me just get out of some of that. Let me lighten up on the position. So I added, it didn't work right away. I'm going to lighten up, give myself some room on that one. The Tesla fade is now fading to the downside. For uh, Just a heads up on, on whoever's watching Tesla there. Looking like it's finally curling back. Do we actually go down from here? You know what? Yeah, let me short Tesla on this. I'm going to short Tesla here. We should not break above 131. Uh, if we do, like, bounce back, Google will be good. Tesla will be bad. Uh, if we go down, Tesla will be good. Google will be bad. I think I'm sized accordingly perfectly for both. So we'll see what happens on that one. I'm fully out of W, so by the way. Uh, just because we had the sell-off, I was like, okay, this thing is not doing what I thought it could. So I am. Uh, so Neil is, is good. I think he's still in that. I'm out. I took the win. I'm up on the name. But uh, yeah, that last piece didn't, uh, didn't work there. So yeah, long Google, short Tesla. Let's see how this one goes. You got anything going, Sharif? Yeah, um, I just want to mention to the viewers, Fed uh, Christopher Waller speaking right now at uh, the Council for Foreign Relations, essentially saying the market has taken kind of an unrealistic view about inflation that it's going to melt away while the Fed is being more pragmatic and uh, doesn't believe that it's going to fade away and therefore they're going to take, uh, you know, uh, affirmative actions uh, to, you know, to get it under control. So the market, I guess, not really liking that hawkishness, if you want to interpret that comment as hawkish, uh, and, you know, retracing, uh, I want to say, 12 points off the high here. We saw, you know, we saw the initial move down. We saw a retracement. It looks like it's going to be a may maybe a bit of a more sustained move down. Uh, he's right now, he's talking and saying all sorts of goodies. Uh, if you want, uh, tune into that. I'm sure you can find a stream online. I'm sure YouTube has plenty of those. So just search uh, Council on Foreign Relations live. Uh, 447, 450 now, 452. Is the high on like COSM? Yeah, I sound like an auctioneer, oh. Lucas, says, and I, I feel like one. I should have Forty-four percent. This Why one's pumping. The, the short interest on this is bupkis. I mean, it's not really anything that big. It's squeezing like it's uh, shorted 30, 40 percent of the float here. It's moving, guys. COSM, whether we like it or not, it's making moves, and somebody's printing on this, Luca. Yeah, I uh, yeah, Google Long is gonna probably come. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have lightened up on that position, but it's all good. I should have punched the. I should have punched when I said I'm not gonna punch. I was like, I'm not punching this. It's at three dollars and eighty cents. No way. Maybe it goes to four and reverses. And Dr. Crusher absolutely probably crushing it, saying, Ooh. "Hope you guys caught it early." I did not. No, but I had a chance to, but I didn't. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, GNS brought a lot of traders to market today. It did. It did. Anytime these small caps really start to move and go crazy, uh, people get interested. People come to market. People put their money where their mouth is. And, uh, and uh, you know, then it's definitely a lot of fun, lo uh, lots of excitement there. 
Um, just a heads up, Tesla is moving up here. I want to add a little bit to the short, so I'm going to see if I can get that. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, adding a little bit more to the Tesla short. Um, I feel like if we fade. Can so, I send you a meme that you can show the viewers yeah, if sure. I text it to you? Yeah, yeah, te Thank text you. it to me over okay. there. Um, so the market breaking down out of the range that it was in. So here and here, right? Popped, dropped, reclaimed, now kind of back down. If this holds and we start to go lower, I feel like Tesla is the candidate for myself to really fade back into the 130 and then drop to 129. So, I mean, you know, I'm not here gonna yeah, pretend that I know uh, that that's gonna happen, but that's basically what I'm going for on Tesla. I wanna see this like rip into 130 to the downside, break 130, and then I would love to cover like, you know, like cover 130 just because that makes sense to me. Um, and below 130, those will be like pretty sick covers. Google, if again, I gotta watch this because Google could do the same thing, but if we go up, I want, I want a long on board in case we go up and I want a short in case we go down. I feel like I'm positioned good for that. Um, so I'm gonna chill now and, and wait to see uh, what happens. Brendo, uh, Brendo saying in the chat, Luca, Fed Waller backs quarter point raise next height. That's being reported by the Wall Street Journal. Fed Waller, continued rate rises will be needed per the Wall Street Journal. These are all WSG, by the way, WSJ. Uh, see, Waller sees ample evidence that economy is slowing as needed to contain inflation. Fed is making progress on inflation fight. So a mixed bag saying, you know, that we, we need to raise, we need to be continued, uh, you know, we, we have to have continued austerity, and but we're making progress in the meantime. So great, you know, nothing <laughs> we didn't really already know, Luca. All right, yeah, pull, pull that up because, um, you know what? I eat a lot of eggs. Anybody in this office notice. knows I eat a lot of <laughs> eggs, right? Um, For anybody new to the chat, guys, yeah. Sharif eats... 10, is it 10 now? It's 12. It's 12 now. It's 12, but it's white, the guys. I don't need 12 he yolks. I'm not 12 out of my mind. white eggs. Uh, yeah. Takes out... Uh, take out the yolk. I take out the yolk, and then I have and these two yellow th oh, uh, the two eggs. They got yolk in them, so I'm so getting the yolk. So you're eating like 14 eggs. I'm eating a lot of eggs. By, by, <laughs> by lunchtime, I've consumed a lot of eggs. How many days? In a day. One day. But I don't so think Sharif's yolk, going Sean. for basically 220 grams of protein yeah. a day, yeah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. So anybody who's uh, who's like into fitness and bodybuilding <laughs> and such knows how difficult it is to get even 150 grams of protein, let alone 220 grams of protein. I mean, I can tell you right now what he eats. He probably has uh, two shakes a day. Yeah. You know, 12 eggs, chicken yeah. breast for sure, if not steak. Yeah, yeah. It's all a the combination. Nuts, of, all yeah, the main yeah. things, because really, oh, there's food. not that, and that I many. I like eating that. I don't feel like I'm no, sacrificing. I, I think no, it yeah. tastes fantastic. But uh, yeah, go to uh, go to Lucas yeah, screen, go to my here, screen here because that's why so. we're talking about this whole egg and thing. You can go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, no, it's yours. Yeah, go, go ahead. Well, yeah, yeah. So this is the meme, and I think I've seen this before, okay. which was it is uh, pretty funny. So wealth in 2019 cash was cash. Yeah. You know, cash was king. If you yeah. had cash, great. In 2020, <laughs> if you had toilet paper, you were atop the game, atop the totem pole. Uh, I, even with my friends, we were actually playing poker one night with toilet paper. That's crazy. I was like, I'm all in. I pushed in like four rolls of toilet paper. Uh, there is a lot of fun there. In 2021, my, my carpentry friends were like, what? Do you remember that? I, I remember. They were calling that? me every day saying, how, the, how am I supposed to build anything? <laughs> the costs have skyrocketed. Uh, I'm just passing this down. Lumber. And developers were like, yeah, we'll pay, no problem. But uh, yeah, lumber was the trade. And in 2023... You're really rich now. <laughs> eggs. If you got eggs. If you got eggs. If you can afford eggs with the avian flu that's shot the price through the roof, anybody that buys a lot of eggs knows exactly what I'm talking about. It hasn't spared Canada. It hasn't spared the States. From my, my understanding, it's been basically North America. So yeah, you're the rich guy now if, uh, if you've got uh, the eggs. Henry uh, Labard saying, give the yolks to Luca for Carbonara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Carbonara, right. come Carbonara. on, man. That's the best pasta. That's my favorite one. I could use them over and over again, man, for sure. And, uh, oh, Fahad's not here. Okay, never mind. All right. Uh, yeah, I could definitely use those. But this is, this is pretty funny. But it's missing 2022. It is. 2022. Yeah, yeah. You know what the trade of 2022 was? What was it? What, what is it? Shorts? No, no, no. The shorts was... all printed in 2022. It has to be no, something no, but short. They were, no, 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 no. But it was something. Uh, what was it? Oil, no. Oh, oil man. was good. Because yeah. I remember this meme, but it had a 2022. Uh, we'll have to guys, think about that. Guys, in the chat, if yeah. you remember the 2022, feel free to let us know. 
Um, this is hilarious. Not Bitcoin or cards. It was something funny. I remember. Saad right. Mahmoud says, single-handedly creating inflation in the egg market is Sharif. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, literally. Sharif, how are those kidneys Google's working? Hey, they're all right, man. Stop jinxing me. Um, Ac Neil Roberts saying, Come actual on. quote from Sharif, it's 14 eggs, but only four yolks. I'm not an animal. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember saying that. I do remember saying that, yes. So I have to own up to that. I got to own up to that. Uh, what else? Scott H saying, I bet Sharif got some mad uh, egg burn bre burp breath. I actually don't burp. I'm not a burper. Um, you know. Uh, let's just leave that out of it. We're get we're getting a little bit uh, we're getting a little bit crazy. No, I don't have an OnlyFans, man. Come on. Uh, what is kind of questions are these? All right. It uh, been gas, okay. Yeah. Looks like it we're popping gas. back close to day's highs though on Meta, Luca. Um, 138.42. Now we're printing 138.26. Is Meta definitely not, you know, giving up much of the gains today? It's been in a range. Let's bring in the chart. Um, let's have a look at this here. Why, why do I always have these problems? There we go. Um, there we go. We're looking at a really tight range. I want to say out 138.40 to the high side, then 138.75, 137, excuse me, 75 to the downside, and we've been in that range. You know, we had this V-shaped recovery here, but for the majority of the day, we've been in that range ever since we popped off uh, the 134.61 bottom right after the bell. We've been in that range from like 9.45 onwards, except again for this V-shaped recovery here, which was you know market related, not meta related. So. Uh, this one continuing to print to the high side. What else is strong? I think it's definitely the strongest of the big tech players right now. Looks like Amazon pulling back. Likewise, is Apple. Microsoft was super strong earlier. Uh, it's kind of dropping off a little bit here, about a dollar off its highs. Likewise, with Google, Google now a dollar twenty-five off its highs. It was very strong earlier on. All right, GNS. We got out of this one. Uh, but look, it didn't break. I mean, I got shaken out. Let's just be, be honest with myself here. I got shaken out of this one. I got shaken out. Um, I was the weak hand that people talk about. This 366 top didn't break. In fact, we rejected off the 200 period again, just as we did this time around. That gives me a hint that this 200 period is going to be respected probably until, you know, uh, until there is a decided breakout. There was none on either occasion here. Uh, and it looks like we're headed more to the south side. Oh, geez, I have an, an order to buy here that I forgot to take off. So there we go. We did that one off. But that, again, for me, it's going to be that 320 break, that 315 break, decided to the downside, and then we'll move it to 275 after that. That's the low that we made earlier today. That's where we can get. This one's still up 60% meaning that you know, we've got more to give back. That's the way I look at it. Uh, COSM, because we were obviously on this one, just made a 465 double top. Wow, okay. I want to say 463 double top there. What's okay. up, Luca? Uh, yeah, guys, so Google long is good. We're actually moving back to the upside. So I did lighten up on the position, and by accident, I covered everything at 75s initially, so I added it back, which was the right call because now we're going higher. I'm going for 97s on the full position there. So if this can run into 97s, I'll be fully out of that Google trade. I am still short the full position on Tesla, which I kind of like. It's, uh, it's moving against me right now, but I just feel like the bounce is, is, is weak. And you know what? Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to this here. Yeah, I'm going to add some more to this Tesla short here. Sort of playing off the 131. I know it could break. It just doesn't feel like, um, you know, if we go down, the, the Tesla short could be good. So yeah, short Tesla, long Google. <laughs> Google is working for me. Tesla is, uh, you know, maybe going to break to the upside if it does. I'll quickly get out of that trade and reevaluate and then try to recycle that higher level over and over again. So we're going to see what happens here. Short Tesla, long Google, waiting for the fill. Oh, I assume baby. that I get the fill. I mean, that was a fake out if I seen one before. So, yeah, maybe the longs are better to be had here. Let me... Uh, we're pumping back up, Luca. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, yeah. I don't know what to think. All I know is this is choppy. This is Super moving around. Choppy. And people are like, Sharif is the gas man. <laughs> Sharif the gas man. <laughs> Sharif's got a chicken farm to himself. Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, Sharif, never mind OnlyFans. Take your shirt off over here oh, and just start trading. <laughs> oh, my God. Sharif has a chicken oh, farm to himself. You guys, you guys, guys crash. We've got man. Come chickens. On. That's why he's pumping eggs. Oh my God! No, I don't have chickens, but uh, <laughs> that would be nice. Funny story. My sister lived up in Wasega Beach, and for those of you that oh, aren't familiar funny. with the GTA, Wasega Beach is kind of like a beach town that we have nearby here that like all the city goers go to in the summer, and basically in the winter it's dead. So it's kind of like a. a a farm town, essentially, for all intents and purposes. But they just, they're on a nice beach. So uh, she got a couple of, uh, 
a lambs for her kids. They, they, they went to like a farm, they saw mm. the lambs, and like, mommy, mommy, we want lambs. They brought, they brought home lambs. They have a boathouse because they're on the water. They put the lambs in the boathouse. They laid down hay and they had like uh, the lambs. And then one of them got an eye infection and was meh, meh, all night, right? <laughs> complaining. The neighbors ended up uh, complaining. And then basically they showed up and uh, they're like, sir, uh, talking to my brother-in-law, of course, they're like, are there lambs in uh, the backyard? He's like, no. <laughs> like flat out lying to the guy, right? Like telling oh, him that man. he had nothing. And he's like, do you mind if I have a look? He's like, are you thinking that I'm lying? Basically, and then he got someone to get them the hell out of there, right? While the inspector was there. So that's a nice little story from uh, Boontown. Shout out to my brother-in-law. Yeah, guys, I'm uh, nursing these two positions, uh, just kind of waiting. I, I don't know if I see anything else for the time being. Google is definitely going to probably print 97s. I'm just going to take some over here and then have the final order at like 97, 96-ish area. Tesla, that was a little, not a little bit of a scare, but it was like a very fast move up. But I'm like, no, no, I don't believe this one. And uh, now maybe we finally go back down, break this bottom. I, I feel like the lows, the low of this move here is like 35. So if we break 35, I'm going to try to get that like wick into 30 for like a couple covers. And then best cover will be 129.80 on that one. So we'll see if that one wants to play itself out. Uh, Adam saying, Luca, would you not, would you not want a short Tesla when it's closed below VWAP? Um, no, nah, I mean, I'm shorted now, so we'll see what happens. Meta high day. Yeah, Meta, me, oh, Meta, I guess, I didn't even notice, high but day. I guess I was stopped out of Meta. Yeah. Oh, no, I covered everything, that's why. But 50s was where my stop is. Did I cover that? Let me cancel that stop. Thank you for that update there, or else I would have gotten long this name. But I guess if abort the short, the long can't be wrong. Making the high day here on Meta, I, uh, I'm going to put this one on ice. Because uh, I just feel like that's, I don't want to just get in just because my stop order was there to get me out of the short and then I just flip long. But maybe that is the right idea because it happened on Disney and Disney just kind of went up and that would have been the right idea. Which, by the way, heads up on Disney, it's over that 102. I, um, making a high here, yeah, I'm going to short this. I'm going to short Disney over here for a move back through the 102, trying to bid, uh, bid low 90s on that one, see if that one wants to happen um, and go from there. Yeah, Tesla, if this keeps going to the upside, then I have to probably uh, reevaluate and get out of it. So we'll see what happens on this one. Maybe I will put a stop in play just to not. 2,500 uh, likes, guys. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, if we everyone. can get to 3,000, that would be absolutely amazing. <coughs> I will not swing Disney. No, we are. So, guys, we're day traders. Somebody asking Ricardo saying, Will you swing Disney till Monday? Like, no. So, uh, we're day traders. So, we intraday uh, trade. Um, this is, hold on, let me just, uh, okay, yeah. So, no, I'm actually short Disney, and when it goes back below 102, I'm going to get out for like 10, 20 cents. So that's going to be the plan on that one. I, uh, okay, now I'm long Tesla. What is going on? Maybe I'll keep this long. So I covered the short. That was an L. And uh, I guess I'll stick with this long for now, see if I can get out a little bit higher. And, uh, yeah, if we go back below 131, I should probably just get out of that. The market's ripping, guys. This yeah. is now going to the high of day. Um, the Tesla long is probably going to be okay. So let me see if I can get out of that um, one. I just want to mention one quick thing, Luca, Google on yeah. AMD. Brendo sending a message here in uh, the group chat saying, AMD investigation, the U.S. International Trade Commission voted to institute an investigation of certain integrated circuits, wow. components thereof, and products containing the same. The products at issue in the investigation are described in the commission's notice of investigation. Uh, that was about six minutes ago. And since that time, you saw a big wick down to 200 period moving average and a kaboom back up to high of day 69.18 now. High of day on AMD. This one ha was not on my radar at all. And in fact, has, it's had a bit of a muted range. We're looking at wow, maybe a uh, bottom of uh, 6.45 and a high of 6.19. But we're continuing, we're at day's highs. And we're continuing to print day's highs. The market is now flying. Yeah, it like, just okay, made I a guess. new high of day, 39.58 is high of day. Are we going to come back to that 39.60? Arun had been talking about that 39.60 level going back weeks. Um, when we came down and broke it, we kind of didn't even really matter. We just sliced through it like a knife through hot butter, or like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was hey good. guys, it's live TV that. deal with it, right? Uh, yeah, like a hot solid. knife through no, butter and 39.60 right now. Let's see if this acts as resistance. Um, we actually had a couple of uh, other uh, resistance levels above that. 39.72, I think, was also one, if my memory serves me right. Either way, we're moving. Yeah, we're moving market, high. I don't, I don't see know. any Fed speakers. I, I don't know if there are any Disney. Fed speakers at the moment. Janet Yellen, uh, we, wait, just like we talked about, was talking as well. Um, let's see if uh, we have some sort of uh, update here. I see Brendan.
in typing. So we'll get to that. Guys, 2,500 likes. Let's get that like count up if we can um, to 3,000. Brendo saying Waller is still speaking. Likely probably has something to do with this move back up. So yeah, hey. Uh, and Zahreen Zamani saying Fed Walker is still talking. Thank you for that. Thank you for that correction. 2,500 likes, guys. Let's hit that like button. Let's hit that um, share button with uh, your family. We need uh, to get our subs, guys up to that 400,000 mark, Luca. Yeah, guys, that was like a little bit of like uh, madness over there. Like the short was good and then it ripped to the upside. So for whatever reason, I covered it for the loss. So I take the L, it flips me long, but everything's ripping. I'm like, okay, I might as well, might as well ride this a little bit. So taking a little bit of a scalp win, somebody in the chat said it best, 131.50 is the interesting level. So that's, that's kind of the real short that I want there on Tesla. If we can get up there, I'm gonna take that short again. Disney, I'm sort of averaging into the short. I'm not gonna panic with uh, it going against me with everything going up, uh, but it's not, you know, as much as I wanted it below 102, I'm gonna be patient and try to cover uh, the majority of this at break even, and then, you know, if we fail to the downside, I'll maybe make some money from that, but not really too, too worried. I mean, yeah, the market breaks the downside of the channel. First, it breaks the downside, then it goes up, then it goes back down, then it goes back up, and then breaks the upside of the channel, are we now gonna go back down? Like what is this, what kind of pattern is this? Is this like a tornado that's being created? Like if you turn it sideways, it's just getting bigger and bigger like as we kind of proceed here. Um, yeah, kind of interesting. So I don't know really what to think here. Apple running to 136.20-ish. Um, let me see, is this worth a short? Probably not, uh, not right now. Maybe, maybe this goes higher. I'm just kind of sad that I have no more longs on board, but uh, let's check Netflix to see where that is because I do have an order to take the... Alibaba's back at 120? Oh, call there. Uh, oh, Baba at 120 is, did I cancel that from before? Oh yeah, I did cancel that. Okay, I want this short here. So let me just take that short. Um, yeah, 120 didn't break. There's obviously a seller at 120. 120 is a pretty significant level. And uh, judging by the fact that I get into this trade and it goes down right away, I mean, reclaiming it instantly. But yeah, maybe the short is good here. So I am gonna risk off of just 120. Stop is not at 120.01, but just bro. above that, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, so Alibaba short, Disney short, looking for some longs. The Google long, I, should have, moving, I shouldn't have sold that one because I even said, I was like, the Google long is the banger. And I shouldn't have lightened up. That was a bad call on that one. You know, sometimes you make bad decisions and I feel like, you know, 310 fills for the day, not too bad. It's um, fantastic. But uh, yeah, you know, obviously, uh, uh, you know, understand that you only have so much mental capacity. Then you start to get tired. That's where you make bad decisions. So as a trader, if you're not feeling good, or you mm -hmm. know, if you're feeling extra tired, or you you know did a lot of trades, um, it's very easy to just lose in this game if you're not sharp. So just remind yourself of that. Um, it's Friday. If you had a good day, keep it a good day. Go into the weekend stress free. And uh, yeah, CUSM. make the money, keep the money, drink the beers. Oh my goodness. I was just wow. going to punch into this one. There it goes. I'm like, okay, here's the bull flag. Here's the breakout of the bull flag. Punch, punch, punch. You, you know what? And I didn't punch. And uh, yeah, and it went up. What was that? 35 pennies right there on a $4 stock. That's a lot. Right, I mean that's a lot for one for two one-minute candles there. Uh, didn't get it, but you know I was actually going to start looking at this one short. Obviously, it was not going to punch in short until it bro bro uh, broke VWAP to the south side. But you know you got to be looking for all sorts of plays, long and short. And uh, the obvious long was the continuation of this bull flag here. You get it. Um, now, now where do I punch? Do I punch in here? No, I'm not. I'm not going to take a, a long here. I need a retracement. So COSM. Definitely not, um, definitely not shortable yet, at least for me. I'm not gonna be shorting these pops. Obviously, I know that some people are quick enough and they're savvy enough to get these pops and they'll take them down for 20, 30 pennies. I'm not good enough to do that, so I need some sort of setup to brew before I punch in. So COSM, definitely still on board, and you know I feel like this one's gonna be going for the majority of the afternoon. Again, no catalyst on this one, but a continuation play. We saw this one move a lot in November. Uh, it had V-shaped recoveries over and over, big wicking candles. Uh, have a look at the daily chart there. Anyway, this one is in play, but be careful, guys. Um, what is, I, I looked at the spread, I looked at the, um, the uh, float on this one, and it was like one and a half million. It, it varied between one and a half to five. So obviously very small float, goes without saying. Uh, at the same time, we're holding up here on these futures at a level that we identified, that 39.59 level is where we stopped at. We talked about that 39.60 level being uh, a key you know, daily support or resistance level, depending on if you're coming from the, no the north side or the south side. Uh, right now, we're, we're kind of consolidating below it. 
We're at days high on a lot of these names. We're days high essentially on Meta, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft. We're close to days high on Tesla. We're kind of a little bit off days high, almost a dollar off Google. Google was relatively strong in the morning and it's kind of given back and been holding above VWAP for the moment. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold above VWAP for the moment. I thought you said my name. Just, oh. Yeah. So basically, the idea here is we're looking for the breakout of that 3960 level. All right, what are people uh, saying here in the chat? Tesla, Netflix. Yeah, they're all going, baby. Sorry, say it again. Microsoft day's high, 239. 239 is the day high on Microsoft. We're at 238.90. So we're essentially 11 pennies, 10 pennies off uh, the high of day. A lot of these stocks are near high of day, guys. We're like... Um, what are we, 12 pennies off high of day on Apple, we're 11 pennies off high of day on Amazon, so we're very close, and basically it's pumping to the high side. All right, COSM also staying to the high side, Luca. This one moving into that 490 area, I think 487 is uh, the high, yeah, 487 is the high, and $5 is right around the corner. I feel like we're gonna, we're gonna break through five pretty soon. Yeah, guys, that uh, that 120 level on Baba, man, that's pretty interesting there. So, yeah, I'm shorting this, and I like that. Uh, Tesla, I added to the short here. It's just kind of giving those wick off tops. I didn't get the fill that I wanted. Um, I don't even know if this is real, this pop. But, yeah, I'm short here, and I kind of added to it. I really like this uh, this idea. You know, if, I don't know what's going on with the market. I don't know if we go higher. That was the up move. Now we're channeling back at that exact area. So, uh, yeah, I like the Tesla short, so I'm going to add a little bit more to that one and see where that wants to go. Disney, I covered some at break even, oh. so now I'm sort of nursing the rest of this position for the move back through 102. I'm Sorry. finally getting the, uh, the uh, catalyst here on uh, COSM. Uh, there is um, news coming in. Cosmos Health extends and updates its agreement to acquire ZipDoc, a telehealth company from American International Holdings Corp. No financial terms disclosed. Uh, so you'll see that uh, COSM, a global healthcare group with proprietary lines and uh, Nutra, I'm not even going to try to describe that word. Basically, you guys know the idea here. It's an acquisition, and that's one of the catalysts, I want to say. When did that come in? Did that come in earlier? It just came in. It came in at 142, 140. It came in exactly 140. I don't have anything prior to 140, so that news is exactly five minutes old. Uh, but the move is not five minutes old. Somebody else had wind of this, obviously, or um, a news uh, blotter that gave them uh you know, give them, give it to them first. Anyway, a big move up on COSM, guys. 490 is the high. Um, I, oh my goodness, GNS just gave it all up, and we didn't have any of that, obviously, because we paper handed wow, the. You know what? Out of this trade, look at that short Pop down. We break 310 like it's nobody's business. We broke that level we talked about 316 like it was nobody's business. This one rocketing to the sell side. Where is the halt level on this? I don't know. I don't know where. I, don't, I haven't done the math, but a big move down here on GNS, now only up 50% on the day. Key levels here uh, the, to, to note, though, is that um, level we just broke that 316. The next level I want to say after is the one we're at. This is where I got my initial fill at, that 310. We haven't been back at this level since I was sh last short this at 1130, right at the beginning of the show. Right below 310, the area where we're at now, is this area, this trough here, I want to say two and three quarters. So that's going to be an interesting area, two and three quarters. Can we get back down there? And if we do, do we break it or do we head back up to the upside? GNS, I told everybody, I feel good. This one was a short, Luca. Yeah, guys, Tesla, uh, it gave like a little bit of a pop and quick drop. So I actually Stop added into that short. And I do want to keep adding to the short right now. I feel like as soon as we actually go run and test 131 to the downside, uh, this is going to flush as long as the market... Uh, turns back down. So I like this short. I am holding on to it, waiting for that 131 test. My average is 131.30 uh, ish. So not really too, too worried with it. But I want to, like, uh, yeah, just keep adding to that one. That one looks really good. Um, I mean, if I'm wrong, I have the defined out. That's why I like That's basically why I like it. Oh uh, Disney is not really doing what I thought it could do. So I'm going to cut the loser for break even. No problem on that one. I did short Microsoft off 239, which is starting to work for me. I'm going to see if I'm at 94s. That's my average. But I'm going to see if we can get down into the uh, the low 70s for the bid on that one. That would be a great, great cover for myself. If we fade, I just feel like 70s is down here. Runs up, a little bit of kind of like a bull flag, probably gets down, get that fill. And then whatever happens after that happens. Um, somebody, and Baba, I'm still in that short for anybody wondering, playing off the uh, 120 level. You know, maybe having the stop above 120 
is a good idea, but like I'm not really too too sure what what happens next on that one. And uh, yeah, I know Sharif covered uh, GNS there. Uh, AMD above 69. I mean, that would have been a good long through 69. I didn't have any orders out, wasn't really too worried about it, but that oh was a pretty sick long through 69 all the way up to 30s, and now kind of down, does it curl and continue to go to the upside? I guess time will tell. We'll see what happens. Uh, G Trader saying, Luke, I got, lo I got long Tesla yesterday at 125. Um, congr congratulations, man. Now you're in the money on that one. Uh, Luca is the Rambo of trading. Well, I wouldn't, Woo! I wouldn't say that, but, uh, uh, work. Bang. In, yeah. You know, work, work in progress, man. Trying to get better every single day and, uh, having a good time doing it. That is the uh, most important thing. You know, uh, choose to be happy, choose to smile. I love why you say uh, that. That is, uh, yeah, that, that's life, man. You know, life can, it can be good. It can be bad, but you got to smile through the, uh, through all of that. What is that? I don't know. Oh, what that's that a subscriber count. Oh, we guys, have the we are sub count up there. Away. Guys, hit the subscribe button. Guys, send We're here it every to single day. The Absolutely. Rocky Balboa of trading, Stuart. Now you got the right <laughs> idea there. Uh, guys, we are it. 19 away from 375,000 subs. Yeah. Uh, you know, eventually we are going to make some. Okay, this market's ripping. You can continue with that one. Yeah, guys, if you are not subscribed, if you're watching us right now, we just need 19 of you to hit that 375,000 mark. And then we're well on our way to 400,000. Uh, I don't know what the guys have planned. I know last time they hit 300,000, there, there were champagne bottles and there were all sorts of things. I don't know if it was done on a Friday or what it was. But hit that subscribe button, guys. There we go. Now we're, we're up. We're up. We keep moving, Luke. Okay, we're at we need 11 more 11 now. 11 more. Let's, Let's go, go guys. Hit, hit, that. That hit that sub hit button. That. There you go. And while you're hitting the sub button, hit the like button. We're at 2600 likes in case you missed it yesterday. Luca and I have committed to wear costumes during the show for 3 hours. We're going to trade while we're in them and they're going to be themed. I was wearing a yellow shirt one day and some people in the chat were calling me Big Bird this and that. So I committed to wearing Big Bird costume if we had 7500 likes. Luca was kind enough to tag a lot. There it is. This is what Sean is talking about. Cool. This is what we popped uh, last time when we hit 300,000 followers. Let's yeah, go. let's go guys. 92 374,993. Let's get that up to 375,000 so we can be well on our way to 400. And get like I was saying, I'm I'm committed to wearing Big Bird. He's committed to wearing the Cookie Monster. I don't know if I'm going to get Elmo. It's going to be Big Bird. Point is, we're going to be punching long and short into a position wearing costumes and uh, we, we're doing it for you guys because we got that 7,500 like count. We're at 2,700 now. We're two subscribers away. We're two subs away from 375,000. Let's go one away now, 374,999. Like one more, you right guys. Now. It's over. It's there over. It we go. did it. Woo! Thank we're you gonna, guys so gonna, much. You guys are the oh real MVP. God. If you're ever wondering, look in the mirror. We Absolutely. only do this for you guys. Um, yeah, what a, what a feeling, man. Appreciate what a feeling you guys. to be a part of this. 375, next number, 400,000. Let's get That's it up there. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, if that happens today, then that'd be actually crazy there. But uh, yeah, guys, just a heads up. I am adding to this Tesla short up here. I think eventually we failed. There was a bidder that failed, so I'm not too worried. 375,000 subscribers, 2.7K likes. I love it. Let's I go. love it. Yes, my guy. Let's go. The market making new highs, guys, breaking through that 3960 that I was talking about. Again, it broke it like nobody's business. It seems like it's not really uh, a level these days. Anyway, we'll have to relook at that maybe on the four hour chart. 39, 65 and three quarters. High of day on that. Um, so yes, guys. Yes, guys. We're moving up. We're printing days highs on a lot of these big tech uh, names. We're, we're at days highs on Meta. We're at days highs on Microsoft now. I just looked at Microsoft. It was 239 was a day high. Now it's 239.52. We're days highs on Tesla, likewise with Apple. Even Apple's moving. Apple's been a laggard all day. Likewise with Amazon now. Amazon up over two and three quarter percent. Um, yeah, wow, what a what a move. So this, uh, what's his name again? Walker Weller. What was his name? Waller. Fetcher Waller. Fetcher Waller. Christopher Waller. Uh, he he did some good stuff for the market today. He's my new favorite Fed, Luca. I'm kidding, of course, tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's funny there, mm -hmm. guys. Uh, the if Tesla makes 132 high, then uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be out of this trade, man. It's uh, you know it's too spicy. The thing that's the most interesting about this trade right now, which is basically why I'm adding to it, giving myself room to add to it, but it's running up, doing a lot of volume, size on the bid, filling the size on the bid. So I'm basically hammering into that size. If we turn back down, 
bang or short. If we continue to go to the upside, I'll take the 50 cent L on it. No big deal. This is why I always give myself room to kind of add to it. So hitting the shorts, giving myself a little bit more, the, uh, the, the kind of green arrow there is don't mind that. That was a mistake. Um, but yeah, no, if it goes over 132, then I'll be out of the trade and I'll take the L uh, and move on. If not, we go back to the downside and uh, it could be good. But yeah, the market's moving to the upside. Now kind of channeling and then giving that next leg up over there. So not really too sure what to think. I'm respecting the level of 120 on Alibaba. Still there, still looking okay. So short Tesla, short Alibaba. Market ripping to the upside. I have no longs on board. Not good, man. Not good, but uh, not bad either. So we'll see where this one goes. If we actually fail back to the downside on, uh, on Tesla, I'll be, I'll be pretty good. So definitely can't complain. I think this was a little break of the iceberg. So somebody was asking before, Luca, I don't see any size at 120. What does that mean? So there's definitely a reserve there, which just means that somebody is iceberging their orders. For anybody that doesn't yeah. know, iceberg is essentially you show like a minimum lot. So you show 100 shares that you're offering, but maybe you have like 4 million shares behind, right? So that could be happening. And essentially, if it's an algo running that, what it could be is they could just pull that order, trigger the stops, and then put the order back. And so what you're seeing right here is exactly that. Pull of the order, triggers the stops, selling into those buyers that have their stop there. This is why I said I'm not putting a stop at 01s, oh, wow. because I've seen this before. I'm like, no, no, my stop is high a day, so my stop is uh, above high a day over there. And uh, this is what happens. It breaks, then it finally flushes to the downside. So this is actually uh, now looking pretty good to the downside. Um, let me just, uh, yeah, I might as well take some cover over here. And uh, let me fix that stop as well. I'm going for set like 70s on the rest of that. If I can get 70s, that'll be great. Um, if not, no problem. Putting back the stop in for the high a day on that one. And uh, yeah, Tesla looking good, man. Making same thing. Makes the high and then finally reverses. Uh, yeah, if this gets down, my average is like 45. So like I'm not really out of the money. 10 cents out of the money. Not too too worried on this. Uh, risking 50 cents. It is what it is. It's on Tesla. Uh, going for 31s. 30, 80 ones, just kind of respecting the general region that it's in. So let me draw a couple lines for everybody to see here. This is the bottom, this is, this is the general top. This is what I wanted to see before. I wanted to see it break the high, do a lot of volume, exactly what it did. This is the A plus short. So I was waiting the whole time. I was, you know, lighter on this, I take the L, add, 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 giving myself the opportunity to continue to add if it gives me the, the move that I want to see. Now it pops above, now it's going back below. If it keeps going down, uh, this is this is the money trade for myself. So pretty happy with how it's playing out right now. Obviously, anything could happen. It still could go back to the upside and stop myself out. But I'm sort of aiming for like 21s, even dollars, 80s, and 60s, just kind of using 20 cent inc increments on the potential covers on that one. So yeah, let's see if this one wants to actually COSM, uh, do that. Man. And uh, COSM oh, is Oh my goodness, five? Luca, look at this. <laughs> it's just wow. going, man, going. Why don't I punch? 518, guys, nah. the high of day on this one. I mean, I don't have a setup here except from punching blind and hoping that it continues to run. Um, you know, I could punch and then look for five as an area of support or that 480 area, you know, but that's just not my game. Uh, that's not how I play these. So I can continue to admire it, but I can't punch in here. Up 65%. It looks fantastic. On that news, by the way, we, we heard that it's going to acquire Zip Doctor, uh, which is basically a telehealth thing. So... Um, looking to consolidate there, a lot of industry consolidation. We're seeing that a lot in crypto. We're seeing it uh, in some other industries, obviously. So, yeah, that just plays on with the theme. Market uh, pulling off a little bit high of days here, 39.65 and three quarters. We're at 39.62 and three quarters. So still basically at high of day for some of these names. Anything new coming in here? Let's have a look. I mean, everything's green on my board. It's kind of hard to d discern what's good and what's not. You kind of look for double digit increases for the standouts. All right, so let's talk about those double digit increases. In fact, let's bring down uh, the, um, let's bring down here the, the scanner so you guys can follow along. Here it is. Come on, computer. No, computer, you're doing it wrong. <sighs> okay, there we go. I'm looking at SI. So SI has been a beast all day. We've had we've seen the move on BTC. Uh, SI is up ten and a half percent. You know, kind of slowing down a little bit now. Here's the move. Uh, the move was off that kind of I want to say twelve area, and we topped off literally here at one thirty. One sorry, one thirty. Thirteen fifty three. What's that? There's three minutes to go. 
Wow, that was really I didn't even quick. notice the two time minutes I looked to go. over. I'm like, guys, we have two, two minutes, minutes to go. To go. Oh I'm like ready goodness. to go for another three hours over here. Yeah, no, today has um, been a great trading day. I mean, like, uh, the, there's been a lot of moving. Uh, the market's up, uh, Meta's up. That makes me happy, obviously. Yeah. Tra trade of the day? I don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Neil you, says it's yeah, all you. you take it. Yeah, guys, te I can uh, wrap it up here quickly. So Tesla's yeah. probably going to stop me out. It's unfortunate, taking the L on that. So I will finish down on the session because of this L. But, uh, you know, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe not, as long as you're having a good time. Absolutely. Thanks so much again for the subscribers, for the likes. I see we're at 2,800. We got a minute left. Anything's possible. If we could get that to 3K, that would be great. If not, we still love you guys. Thanks for the support always. Um, you know, uh, we will be here every single day, except for Saturdays and Sundays, of course, uh, because market's not open. I mean, if it was, then we would be here. Yeah, so Tesla taking the L on that one. Um, pain to end the show, but you know what? No problem, because there you have it. No pain, hey, no gain absolutely. in the gym, in the market, in life. But, uh, you know, always a pleasure anyways. Time flies when you're having fun. I did not even notice that no, we had one minute. No, neither did I. Um, and this, by the way, in case you're just joining us towards the end of the show, this is what they popped here when they had 300,000 subs. I'm sure we'll be popping something equally or better than this. Uh, yeah, this uh, is champagne, obviously. Um, for our 400,000 subs, guys, we just hit 375,000. Today, Luca and I got over 8,200 or 8,300 likes yesterday. Um, and as a result, we're going to wear costumes. So things happening here. We're breaking <laughs> records. And uh, we're just happy that you're a part of it, guys. So I got 30 seconds left on the show. G Trader is asking books to read. Um, personally, uh, right now I'm reading the Chartered Market Technician um, basically exam materials so if you're able to get your hands on that i think uh it's very good material but otherwise i think uh technical analysis of the financial markets by um uh, john j murphy I, I believe i think that that's the one uh it's a really good uh, easy read and it covers all like the main the main things so if you want to get on that uh, i would recommend that i read that book twice cosm Put in a bit of a topping tail candle here. I don't know if this is going to be a is reversal candle or yeah, not. Uh, Lucas saying this is the top. 553. Maybe, maybe, he says maybe. 553 there. It just made. Now it's back in the 530s. If we break below this candle, the candle's low is 510. I might be punching in short. Of course I'm not. I'm just joking. I'm not going to punch in short until it breaks view up. Luca, we are done. I'm Luca. This is You're the scout. Luca? I'm Sharif. <laughs> I'm done, bro. I'm, I'm Sharif. This is Luca, the scout demon. Uh, we're going to send you to the big kahunas to my right. But first, Brendo is at the big desk. Later, guys. Hey guys welcome into a Friday afternoon. A couple hours left before we head into the weekend, shaping up to be a pretty good day. We are ending the week, ending the day on a positive note, right back to session highs. In fact, as we speak, that is how the